All righty. Are we live? Uh, wait for it. Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, I hope you're having a wonderful day if you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen. Unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on that video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts Boat Camp and Real Estate Course. But, ladies and gentlemen... We have a very exciting day. You are waking up with a lot of pressure. One, there was a lot of drama going on with Russia. You probably heard about the Wagner Group. That had a lot of things going on there, and people are already talking about the war trades. You're even watching wheat and gas do a lot of different things. You had a little bit of updates out of China as well as their market doing even worse than before. They even had their currencies making moves. You had updates out of Japan, and then this whole idea of everything slowing down once again is still there and then we're going to get pow but overall a lot of pressure over the weekend still kind of the same narrative is it time to hedge or not where do we go last week of Joan first half of the year so what's the plan baby but <laughs> good morning we're gonna get into all of that how you doing Chattadonia what's going on Chattadonia happy Monday Oh, man. Good morning. What's up, Jay? What's up, Nathan? Tim Whitman. Good morning. Stafford, Malone, Manny G, Last One. Good morning. How was this? Laker, Jay. Oh, good morning. What's up, Yee Ying? What's up, Derek? Hey, Sos Moreno. Big Josh said it. Zeke. Oh, forever young. Good morning. Joe's Trey, Smars, Robin, So Rob, Gunna, Rudy, Tony. Oh, my gosh. Good morning. Open face, Caressa. The Clay Kings. Oh, Chattadonia. What's going on? What's up, Via Logan? Ari, Wesley O'Neill, Yosef, Risk Flair, Risk Flair, Ben Stall. Good morning. What's up, Bean? What's up, Ray Dom? Happy Monday, Nestor. Austin Jordan. Are you ready to play? Good morning. What's up, Rami? Andreas L. Campbellini, Antonio. Y'all, let's go, baby. Good morning. Happy Monday. God damn. What's up, Brexton? Robo Hand Tech Match 8012. Oddity. Pierre Slizzin. What's up, baby? Good morning. BDA Cookie Monster. Tommy Jake from Stay Farm. Oh, show it love, too, baby. Good morning. Oh, and Charlie and the train. How you living, Chattadonia? That's what I'm talking about. So, I have, I have good news and bad news. I tried to incorporate like five different streams this morning and then even throwing up on the Twitch chat. And then right when I started doing it, everything stopped working. So uh, the wire is uh, is, uh, is uh, having technical difficulties today. So you guys are going to have to wait for that. I'm trying to get them up here today. Uh, but I, I, I got a little too uh, overzealous. Got a little too overzealous. So I don't know. I don't think it'll... Is it going to work? I hope it does. We'll see. Yeah, a little. Just mad up. It's just mad delayed now. I need to, I need to fix everything. Or it just doesn't, it makes me refresh it. <laughs> so we're going to see. But Chattadonia, good morning. Uh, and actually, before we get into any of it, I hope your weekend was good. I hope you guys are feeling blessed. But let me show you what I have for you. It is called the Random Account Generator. Are you guys familiar? I hope you're familiar. I don't have the watch list up here, up here but we're getting it up there. So let's see, though. But we needed your help. I hope you guys participated. Thank you if you did. Let's see what we got here. Last week, it was a Baba play. I got to pick out the random one. So, Lord bless it. What do we got? See ya, bright and early, baby. Amen. I like bright and early. Good morning. Happy Monday. Full week ahead of us. Uh, brah, let's go, baby. Semper Fi. Amen. God bless you, Mr. Garlinger. Amen. Brah. UPS put 135 expiring June 18th. Well, actually, no right or wrong on August 1st if they go on strike. If they don't, wrong, but okay. But we doing June 18th. Dang, wait, that's expired. Is this the right video? No, I'm on the right video. How is that? That's This expires. Plays expired, sir. Maybe he meant August 18th? I don't know because that play is not. Let's see what we got. We'll get a backup just in case. APLD calls January 14th. All right, I think we could take that. Yeah, the other one was expired. That's so why I was like, wait a minute. I don't think it's June 18th right now, sir. 
Maybe July, yeah. It could be. So maybe it's a UPS. I don't know. What do you say? We take the UPS or you could go for APLD. I was kind of confusing. He said 135 put related to the strike. I like the idea. So we will see. We will see, I guess. APLD is clapped. It's expired. But Chattadonia, let us get into the news. Uh, bonds rally as economic threat hits the risk appetite. Uh, S&P futures tick lower after stock slump last week. Central banks warn of more interest rate hikes this year. Uh, global stocks and U.S. equity futures are starting this week lower as investors tread cautiously after the attempted armed uprising in Russia over the weekend as we move towards month end and quarter end where stocks are expected to come for a sale as part of a sizable rebalancing. Government bonds rallied and stocks dropped as investors hedged their risks, uh, hedged the risk that economies would flag under central banks pushing their inflation fighting zeal and rate hiking campaigns too far. European bonds slumped, as did the stock's Euro 600 index, extending the declines to a sixth day, the largest losing streak since October. Germany's 10-year benchmark yield tumbled five basis points as data showed the business outlook deteriorated to the lowest seen this year as Europe's biggest economy struggles to emerge from recession. Investors have been growing more anxious with central banks determined to extinguish inflation and keep pushing rates higher and risk-breaking fragile economies. Futures on the S&P fluctuated after the gauge suffered their worst week since March, while yield on the benchmark treasury dropped five basis points. Uh, quote, as central banks remain hawkish on the back of persistent inflationary pressure, the likelihood of a soft landing is falling, said Andrew McCaffrey, global chief investment officer at Fidelity. Uh, noted in a note on Monday, investors should be very wary of taking on too much risk at this late stage in the cycle. Uh, Tesla fell 2% after the automaker was downgraded to neutral from buy at Goldman Sachs. Uh, Hong Kong listed shares of Russian aluminum producer United Russell fell almost 9 in crypto stocks, uh, tracking a dip across Bitcoin as the digital assets slip lower after reaching their highest level in over a year. Uh, Lucid rose 9% after entering a pack with UK firm Aston Martin on electric vehicle technology. Moderna rose 34 after the vaccine maker was upgraded to buy from neutral at UBS. Uh, Brinker International declines one6 after Chile's owner was initiated with the underweight rating from Wells Fargo and Meta Platform shares edge 0.1 higher with UBS hiking their price target on the social media company saying that generative AI will provide the next leg up to shares. What? What? No. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. Is that that's real? Oh my god. Oh, it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Bradley, it's real. It's real. Bradley Frizzle of the Peach, bright and early. Let's go. Oh, no, it's real. It's real. I don't know. I saw a lot of commotion in the corner of my eye. Oh, it's real. No, that's verified. That's ver. I, I, I had to refresh the wire there because I said we were having technical difficulties today. But no, that peach is, is confirmed. That peach is real, bro. That peach is real. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. God bless you. God bless you and good morning. So the schedule for today, 7.30 a.m. Eastern, you got the Dallas Fed Manufacturing, 8.30 Eastern, uh, got three-month and six-month bond auctions, 10 a.m., two-year bond auction note, and then 10.30, you're going to have ECB Lagarde. Uh, in Europe, uh, the stock 600 dropped 0.4 on course for their uh, uh, sixth consecutive decline, while German's 10-year uh, tumbled five basis points. German IFO data showed that the business economic outlook deteriorated to the lowest level seen in years as Europe's biggest economy struggles to emerge from the recession. Banks are the worst performing sector among the stock 600 Europe's in uh, Monday. Uh, earlier in the session, Asian stocks traded subdued after Friday's losses on Wall Street owing to weak global PMIs and amid a lack of fresh catalysts to spur markets with weekend news flow dominated by a brief uprising by the Wagner Group in Russia. Uh, the Hang Seng and Shanghai were mixed with Hong Kong benchmark kept range bound while the mainline China, China underperformed on return from the Dragon Boat Festival where travel spending was below COVID levels to add to a weak domestic demand. Uh, the Australia 200 was lackluster with price action range bound and weakness in the top weighted financial sector offsetting modest gains for real estate and tech and then the Nikkei 2225 or the 225 uh, lacked decisiveness as participants digested the latest BFJ summary and opinions was most likely stuck the dovish script as they stated it's appropriate to maintain current monetary easing and premature shift to policy although a member suggested that the BFJ must consider reviewing YCC. 
Uh, China tourism uh, activity during the Dragon Boat Festival fell 32.3% year over year and came 12% higher than pre-pandemic levels. Uh, China is increasingly worried of the upcoming Taiwan election in January 24, that it could exasperate tensions between Washington and Beijing as the candidate of the incumbent party is more pro-independence than the current president, Wall Street Journal reports. Uh, Prigazin called off his march on Moscow due to a small force of just 8,000 fighters after Russian intelligence service threatened to harm the families of senior Wagner leaders and London Telegraph reported. Uh, U.S. officials said on Sunday that they have not detected any irregular activity or changes in alerts with Russia's nuclear forces, but that the failed insurrection by Wagner head Yevgeny, uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin has punctured the aura of Russian President Vladimir Putin's political invincibility, and doing so has revived decades-old concerns about who might ultimately control Russia's nuclear forces. Uh, Bunds Bank may require capital injection from German government, according to a new report about losses incurred by the ECB's massive QE program. Uh, German IFO survey for June falls short with expectations components sliding to 83.6 from 88.8 in May and below the street's 88.1 forecast. Uh, HF's net bought U.S. financials only net bought sector in the prime book last week but continued to pare back length in bank stocks. Uh, Trump led over GOP rivals and Republican nominations expanding according to the latest NBC poll. And then mega stocks powered by the S&P aggregate index year to date risk adjusted return of 1.5. Uh, the yuan weakens to seven-month low despite China's move to stem decline. Onshore yuan falls to seven-month low despite PBOS, uh, PBOC fixing. Yuan slides 0.9 uh, to seven-month low of 7.23 per dollar in Shanghai on Monday as pessimism over the economic recovery and China's policy divergence from peers continued to weigh on sentiment. The offshore yuan declined 0.3 and is also falling to the lowest level of November. The People's Bank of China had sought to curb onshore currency weakness by settling their so-called fixing at the largest premium to estimate this year. On Monday than ever, or no, no, than usual. Oof. <clears throat> Uh, Morgan Stanley's Michael Wilson says stock risks have rarely been higher. Uh, Morgan Stanley's Michael Wilson, whose outlook for the market slump in 23 has yet to materialize this, sees the S&P at risk of a near-term drawdown. He expects the benchmark index to hit this year at 3,900, about 10% lower than Friday's close before rising to 4,200 in the second quarter of next year. The headwinds of significant uh, this headwinds significantly outweigh the tailwinds, and we believe risks for a major correction have rarely been higher. Wilson said in a clo uh, note on Monday to clients, Morgan Stanley is sticking with an outlook for earnings that's below estimate consensus on the S&P to be $185 this year compared with the average estimate of 220 Wilson said deteriorating pricing and top-line disappointments will drive the earnings misses. Uh, job cuts. Goldman Sachs has started cutting managing directors across global operations as part of their cost-saving drive amid deal-making slump. They're slashing 125 positions, including some investment banking deals that fell more than 40% this year. Uh, volatility persists. Investors are conceding that the Federal Reserve is intensely focused on fighting inflation, concerned about higher rates, and breaking the U.S. economy. According to the latest survey, this implies that bond market volatility is likely to persist in a notable market shift. 80% of survey respondents predict that the U.S. yield curve will remain inverted until 2024, and 50% expect at least two more rate hikes from the Fed. Uh, gloomy markets, S&P and NASDAQ futures have swung the losses in the morning, declining 0.1 and respectively 0.2. Uh, capital is flowing into treasuries instead, driving yields lower across the curve. A measure of the dollar weakening slightly while gold price rise as investors look for havens. Oil is gaining slightly after the events of Russia over the weekend while iron ore, iron ore fell on China's economic gloom. Uh, IBM confirms $4.6 billion all-cash deal for Aptio. IBM is to scoop up privately held software company in a bid to help acquire uh, multi-international business machines court plans to acquire Aptio and a deal that values the maker of financial and operational management software at $4.6 billion, the technology giant confirmed on Monday. IBM is purchasing Apto from Vista, which took the company private in 2019. The Wall Street Journal reported Friday that IBM's deal for Aptio was a near gamut of ITT services. <laughs> And then, uh, let's see, on this day in history, on June 26, 1945, the Charter of the United Nations was signed by 50 countries in San Francisco. In 1977, in 1917, the first troops of the American Expeditionary Force deployed to France during World War I landed in St. Nazaire. Oh, this is two and one. Oh, this is two and one. I thought it was one. Oh, I, I misread that. Oh, I'll take it. UN and World War II. Were you in World War II? Nothing else on June 26th. Nothing else on June 26th, Chattadonia. Good morning.
Oh, but don't worry. We still got a couple of pre-market movers. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, this thing hasn't updated yet, bro. That's sad. So I don't know. I have to like restart my computer, but I didn't have enough time. But I got greedy. So let's see here. Uh, all right. But I still got a couple of pre-market movers for you. Uh, so let's see. Number one, Lucid. Uh, the EV maker popped 12% after they announced the partnership with Aston Martin to supply powertrain and battery systems to British luxury car maker Aston Martin. And they will give a Lucid a 3.7% stake in the company in cash payments, totaling $232 million. Uh, Alphabet, the Google parent, slid one4 after being downgraded by UBS to neutral from buy. The bank said that the tech giant faces near-term revenue headwinds from new search competition and stiffer generative AI competition. Uh, Moderna, the drug maker, gained 25 following an upgrade to UBS from neutral. The bank said that the stock's current valuation isn't pricing in potential upside for other vaccines. UBS cut its price target to 191 from 221, which still implies 61% upside from Friday's close. Uh, Tesla shares dropped 1.9 after Goldman Sachs became the latest Wall Street bank to downgrade the EV maker to neutral from buy. Goldman cited the difficult pricing environment for EVs as well as the stock's recent run-up for the call. Uh, Pfizer slipped 2.4% after the drug maker announced it was discontinuing the clinical development of their experimental obesity and diabetes drug. Uh, Locked Lepron studies show elevated liver enzymes, although no participants reported any other side effects. PacWest, the regional bank, jumped nearly 6% following the announcement that Aries Management acquired $3.5 billion specialty finance portfolio. From PacWest, the portfolio consists of high-quality senior secured asset-backed loans. And I think that's it. And then did you guys get that Pfizer news? They literally backing out of the Ozempic, bro. How they going to do us like that? That's it. No more Pfizer Ozempic. They said we had a really good trial, but then we're not going to do it, actually, because that means Novo probably paid us a shit ton of money. I don't know why we backed out of that. What? They did. No, they backed out of the Ozempic. That's why the thing is clapped right now. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Yeah. Hold on. Let me see if this comes up. But yeah, Chad, we got clapped. Hold on. Yeah, I don't know. I hope it works, Chad. I hope it works. Uh, but I need to go to the bathroom. So give me a second. I will be right back. But I hope you guys are ready for the day. We've gone over some plays. We've actually gone over a lot here. Again, China, Europe, Germany. Another day of bad German data. People are buying the bonds. It kind of sold off a little bit here. And now we're waiting. Uh, do we deal with any of the global tensions? That has been big on today. That has been very, very big. So I'm going to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I will be right back. For much longer than people previously expected. Yeah, I would agree with a lot of what Stephanie just said, right? It's the strength of the consumer, the health of the balance sheets, obviously coming out of a hopefully a once in a hundred year pandemic, which resulted in massive amounts of fiscal stimulus, most most of which went directly to consumers' uh, balance sheets and consumers weren't spending during that time. Now they're coming out, they're spending more, interest rates have moved higher, and there is this lagged effect. You know, some people say it's six months, some 12, some 18 months, but I do think you've seen sort of these weird knock-on effects that no one sort of expected coming out of a higher interest rate environment. Home builders, for example, doing extraordinarily well because existing home homeowners don't want to sell because they've got a three or three and a half or a four percent 30 year mortgage that they're just not going to they're not going to want to trade you know I don't know how to say it up to a five or six or seven percent mortgage for a new house they'll stay in their homes for longer so that takes supply out of the market and so there's all these knock-on effects that I just don't think people um, fully understood or fully appreciated but I think to some degree have allowed the economy to be stronger than expected obviously the labor market as well which Stephanie already covered. Michelle Bowman was talking uh, over the weekend about stress tests and the need for greater supervision, not necessarily more capital held by the biggest banks. From your vantage point, John, do you think this has been the main sort of holdback for the Fed for why they're not taking rates even higher right now? They want to get a better handle on the financial system and where some of the vulnerabilities might be. Uh, 
perhaps. I think it's potentially a little bit of that, but I think it's also, and look, that mattered a lot more three months ago when you had the potential for a sort of cascading effect amongst the banking system, which we haven't seen, thank God, because of some of the uh, measures that the Fed put in place. But I think it's also just the lagged effect of hiking 500 basis points in you know a little over a year and seeing what the impact is on markets. And I, again, going back to agreeing with Stephanie here, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter whether they hike another 25 bips, 50 bips. It sounds so official when it has that, like, phone audio in the back. Mm-hmm. But Chattadonia, we've gone over all of it. We got a couple minutes remaining. I did not get you the post again. And again, we got some technical issues. I'm hoping this resolves itself. But right now, your wire is playing with you, Chad. Your wire is playing with you. So we're going to see. But Chattadonia... What's your first play of the day? I got a couple for you. You got to hear some people on TV. Again, we are back the final week of Jonah. What is your first play of the day? What do you got for me, baby? What do you got for me? Poster play in the chat. We shall see. AMD. AI calls. Ulta. Good morning, Chad. Adonia. TLT 104 calls. Scalp. Spy 27 puts. Micron calls. Myrna. CCL. SQQ. Meta puts. Tech going down all day. Tech issues. Buy more Tesla. RTX calls. Aston Martin. Carvana. Spy puts. Lucid calls. Law CP. WM. Sidelines. Farmer stocks. GG. Nike puts. Spy calls. CCL puts. CCL puts. Apple calls. Meta calls. 300. Spy calls. Nike puts. Palantir puts. TQQ. AMD calls. Tesla calls. Qualcomm calls. Sound calls. Tesla puts. WBA calls. Intel calls. NVO calls. Meta puts. D Lawn. Tesla call. AMD. Snapchat. Week calls, sound calls, DFTI, Apple puts, oil short, Tesla puts, SHYP puts, calendar pre spread, uh, Walgreens earnings tomorrow, 300 UVXY weeklies, Miami, spy calls, APLD, $10 calls, Starbucks, APLD, Semex Lawn, Tesla puts, I farted, I did earlier actually, GS calls, ES Day Trade, TuneShare, Semex, uh, 3M, BitConnect, Tesla calls, Bitcoin Long, APLD, Bill Shares, Tesla calls, CCL, Uber puts, uh, Uber calls, uh, AI puts, log on S Jim, log on the peach, Tesla puts, Tesla calls, the dip was a good one, KRE long, remember Wednesday with j Powell. watch it upside on tech, Tesla, uh, log on Father Edgar, I'm gonna call you, TRGP puts, 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 AMD long, Airbnb, root play is dying, get to the chopper, Josh calls, good luck to all, Apple puts, and the final play, bada up. Bop, bop, bop. Good morning. UNG calls. We'll take it. We'll take it, Chattadonia. So I actually got a couple good plays here, too. Uh, one, I'll say don't forget about earnings, so I'm glad a lot of you put it up there. Micron, Nike, Walgreens, all earnings this week. So you might be able to get some good uh, pre-market movers, so watch out for that. Uh, Tesla and Lucid. Tesla, downgrade Lucid. They're doing their thing. The Pfizer news. They had a lot. They had one drug approved, and then they said they're getting out of the one version of the Ozempic ones. LMT and any of the defense stocks, I would definitely keep an eye out there. Again, even wheat is coming up here in the discussion. Then 3M, going to be watching that one just for the, the lawsuit play as well as the $100 price point. And then XLU, XLV, and regional banks. We'll see if we get any of those rotational elements or not today and how it plays out. So we will see. We will see. Where is it? But let me send those out. But Chattadonia, that's all we have. That's it. So I'll see you guys at the bell. Does that sound good? And then I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys at the bell, and then we'll uh, we'll get we'll just. And then I'll see you guys on the watch list. No. Yes. No. Uh, is that twelve? That sound good. Anyways, Chad, we got about a minute and a half. Any? I'm, I was kidding. I'm not leaving. Don't worry. I love you. Good morning. What do we got? Any any pressing questions? I think today. It seems a little bit calmer than last week, but I feel like we're moving a little bit bigger pre-market, and we actually have a full week ahead. Again, uh, not too much data here. Bond auction, you're going to hear from ECB. Tomorrow, you're going to get a little bit more of the Fed speakers than Wednesday, Thursday. A lot more of Powell. Anybody else? Anybody else pressing questions? You got one minute. One minute till we begin. Uh, j Powell. I mean, I'm slowly starting to expect nothing from jpal but you know we'll, we'll see how uh the remaining six months plays out but for the most part i'm kind of expecting him to do the same thing and uh 
give it time to, to go there. Uh, time to hedge. Why? Because that's what everyone keeps saying. Again, that was uh, the narrative last week with the uh, relaxation, even over the weekend, even with the Russia stuff, even now the China and even more bad German data. It's just everybody's asking this question now. This was the best first half of the year ever. Does it continue with the momentum like history has shown? Or do we start to hedge and unwind all of this? But it's a big question. A lot of importance behind it. But Chattadonia here at the Colt, before we do anything, before we try to chase a dollar, before we try to enrich ourselves, we must pay homage to a very special group of people that has sacrificed more than most of us ever have and ever will. And I am talking about the veterans of the United States of America. So on behalf of the cult, the people here, the people not here, we want to give a huge special shout out. All the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country for real. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Even big shout out to the families. They made their sacrifice too. We love and appreciate you and I encourage all of you to show love and appreciation to all of your vets day in and day out and veterans thank you for your service baby shout out to all of you and big shout out to anybody else out there helping out their local communities all the doctors nurses teachers firefighters police officers the nonprofits, the janitors the coaches anybody giving back man I hope you know you're doing good too and we appreciate you as well too baby but ladies and gentlemen please rise place your right hand over your heart Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby! Set it dance! Oh, it's game time, baby! Or nah, let's go! Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I didn't get it off the screen. I'm sorry. I was, I was having to ban some of y'all. I'm giving some of y'all, not really bans, but quiet timeouts. Y'all woke up aggressive. I'm still in a good mood, you know, so I just quietly just tased you a little bit. So that's why I left it on. My bad. And I got to get the fucking wire working up here, man. So... It's a good morning either way, but good morning. The Jets have been sent. Uh, we have gone over all of the plays, and let's see what we got here. Tesla's already – dang, Tesla already came back down? That's crazy. That's crazy. I say pump it up. So, Chad, uh, we got about a minute, 42 seconds. Uh, if you have any questions, you let me know, and let's get it. Again, I'd keep an eye on any of those earnings plays. Those ones are going to be good. I'm missing a lot, though. That's it. I, this thing's not working. So you guys are going to have to, we're going to have to find a backup for him. It sucks. I literally, so what I was going to do this morning, I had five different of the like, like different like filters on the wire. And I had one for like mergers and acquisitions and breaking news. And then I messed something up <laughs> and, or I think it might even just be my uh, computer, but we'll see. Hmm. Let's see how much time we got 55 seconds on Tesla. Uh, we'll see. I mean, again, like literally in the last like what four days, I think they've gotten like seven downgrades or something like that. It's actually kind of something ridiculous. Oh, watch out for that. But besides that, I think it's good. Hmm. Thoughts on Disney. We just bought it on uh, the long term not too long ago. I like it. I think it's going to have a lot of volatility. And remember, uh, Friday, we were talking a little bit about leaps. So there's a couple of plays there just depending on what happens. But a lot of big plays, thankfully. I mean, earnings is right around the corner. So we are about to see what's going to happen. But Chattadonia, get ready for the bell. Five seconds. Like that video. I got to get the random play. Round one. Fight. So what are we going to do with the random play? Should we just get the July UPS put form? I think we'll do that one. It expired, but I think he meant July. Lucid, pre-market runner. Yeah, they had the deal with Aston Martin. 
See how that plays out. It was August 18th. Uh, let's see. Uh, something just popped in the in the random account. Okay. I'm still in route. They're getting murdered. Uh, but I plan to hold that until we get an update on the deal. So I, I expect it to flood. You should watch the buyout video. Uh, but yeah, that thing is first day down or second day down since the first day since we bought it. Third day down in general. Yeah, August 18th. All right. I think I got it. Lucid smoked plaid and Bugatti. Did it fill? Why the UPS won't fill? Bro, that's really with the UPS contract will not fill. Very weird. I'm trying to buy it, but Airbnb, Micron again. Micron has earnings. Their CC, yeah, the random play. I put in an order, but it's not filling. It's usually never taking this long. Uh, one point five percent on Micron again. That's an earnings play. Keep that one in mind. Uh, right now the Nasdaq's red. Uh, actually Dow just flipped red. It's actually everything's barely moving here so far. It doesn't look too crazy. Healthcare's down. Utilities are in the green. Uh, energy's even up there too. Watch any of the wheat and uh, defensive plays. I was actually surprised LMT's down right now. And then where's Tesla? They were down one point five. Again, they were closer to going green in the morning. Uber, Qualcomm. Uh, Uber's at 44. My goodness, actually. That's actually insane. Uh, Uber or Airbnb is actually down. That's a big one. CCL down 10 on the earnings. <laughs> Amazon's still holding up. Wynn is going up there. Where's the China place? So China plays are actually even holding up uh, despite everything going on. Again, China was just like a mixed bag over the weekend. JP Morgan down 0.3 or up 0.3. XLF is up by 0.14. Regionals are up 1.6. That's actually a great sign. Let me throw up IEF instead of uh and then levels are as we're at 4345. Not bad. Not bad. Still again, remember 4331 and then like 4328 and then 4300 flat. Google down 1.5. Yeah, they got downgraded. Uh, Tesla's going up, finally. Uh, Lucid's still holding up 10%. It was up more. Uh, RCL. And then a couple of the other cruise lines, they're moving. CCL's down. Amazon's still going up. You said Chewy News. Wheat lifted. Wheat lifted following Russian turmoil. And then Meds paused due to volatility. AVTX is halted as well, too. Coin, I own Q. Uh, Coinbase is up there. I forgot we flipped that one on Friday. Remember they had Supreme Court news or whatever? So they're going up off of that. Yeah, Coinbase is still going. DraftKings, uh, where are the rest of the earnings? Walgreens is uh, down by a quarter. Nike is up 1.3, and then Micron is up 1.3 as well, too. Pump it up. Nikolai, AMD just got to pump it up. Uber is still going. NVIDIA, 425, and the SPY now, too. And bonds are barely up, too, which is crazy. Again, uh, bonds are up a lot more pre-market, so... This is already kind of a big drop there for the 10-year, just speaking generally. Coinbase, 62.75, and in the TLT, yeah, Uber is great. Uber at 44 is a big deal. There's Tesla now down only uh, 0.7. Mm -hmm. IBM all cash. 
That was early. That was old. Wheat still up at 730. HD on the green. McDonald's red. SoFi's going. Boeing's coming down, but they're still in the green. SoFi is running, uh, running right there. And then China names. Alibaba is starting to wake up. BNTC FDA. TerraSend announces upsize offering. 20 million closes 16 million tranche. BNTC FDA. Mm -mm. It sucks. I have, what's it called? I have this thing. My wire's starting to work again, but I don't want to click on anything. <laughs> Let's see. What is it called? BNTC? Yeah, FDA clearance of IND BB301. What is it? IND for the treatment of oculofarnergeal muscular dystrophy. Yeah, so they did. They got FDA approval. That one, it's a 20 cent stock. It's another MS stock. So this is just like Sarepta or uh, Tritium. And Tritium's clapped. Again, we still have the, what's it called, too? The root, but that one came back up actually a little bit. But yeah, BNTC, that is FDA. FDA approval, MS drug. I don't know if you want to play a quarter stock. Grain traders question the effectiveness of uh, weekend rainfall. That's just a headline, not breaking news. Mm -hmm. Regionals pumping. Yeah, they're doing very, very good. So BNTC is going. It's up 20%, literally. But that's confirmed if you guys are into that. It's a biotech. Uh, if I didn't have two of the MS plays, I probably would go for it. Because I still have the Catalan too. Baba 1.9, Disney still has a long way to go. Again, it's going to be like PayPal. Speaking of, where is PayPal? Square's even up. And the video dump. Spying to the long term, I like it. If you really, I mean, again, it's it's a little bit different of a timeline. But if you, you know, if you want to make your life easier, uh, I think bare minimum, you should be saving 10% and at least buying the spy if you don't want to think about creating your own portfolio. TLT is red. I mean, bonds are about to go red here, too. Honestly, it's a very big unwind. Yeah, TLT is red. That's very weird, considering how it woke up, but that's kind of word to the bond volatility once again. Invitation price, invitation homes price target raised to 36.5 from 35 at Morgan Stanley. Apple Pop, Regional Banks. NVIDIA just had a big drop. And Pop, we still have BNTC up here. Mm. SMCI's on the high Unity High ticker's actually running Even Netflix is up there Netflix just had three, four big candles right there uh, Boeing's still chilling at the bottom UAL's on the high They're actually killing it And then again, Uber is still at $44 Coinbase is even running now And then Apple too so you're getting supported by a decent amount of tech. NASDAQ's the leader on the day, uh, but the Russell is the best on the day, probably because of uh, the, the regionals right now. Uh, Mara, more crypto names are running up here too. Again, Coinbase, uh, just straight greens here to start the morning. Uh, JD's on the high now too. Tesla is still negative. Again, I think uh, Netflix went green. Meta's red. Amazon's in the green. Apple's in the green. And then Microsoft's still red. Roblo going. Palantir, yep. Uh, Roblo just went green. Palantir is kind of rocketing. Uh, Root came up, but still down from the low. Tritium, and then what was the other one? 
BNTC. That's more MS. Adobe on the high. Keep them in mind. Remember, they're coming off earnings for Adobe. Mm -mm. Offer was accepted on my second home. I ended up with a 321 permanent buy down paid for by the lender and builder. Thanks for the confidence to ask for more. Let's go, baby. That's good. And it's permanent, man. Congratulations. That sounds like all good news. It is a great day, baby. God bless you. Amen. B H I L. That's like Bill. 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 W W E C F. Now Microsoft. Coinbase still running again. Straight ramp from the open right now. Lumen price target uh, maintained at two and a half by Morgan Stanley. Uh, Excel fin halted due to pending news. X fin. What's this? Ten dollar stock. It's a SPAC. XOM. Uh, energy is killing it, actually. Energy, I think, is the best on the day. CXAI is on the high now, too. Netflix again and Qualcomm. Uh, even Airbnb went green. IonQ. Uh, yeah, we sold out a little bit higher, but it's still holding that above 10. Coinbase keeps going up here, too. And now JP Morgan's in the green as well. PayPal on the high now. And a UNG has just been, it's been both the weather and then everything else going on here. Uh, it started, it was like both weather as well as like the, uh, there was a big uh, European field shutdown. And then just literally some of this war headlines. I mean, if you guys haven't noticed, you know, like over the weekend, it was all about the Wagner group. But at the same time, it's like ever since we made that wheat play a couple weeks ago, uh, ever since the dam was exploded, it just like the the tensions have kind of been coming back up here in a in a very awkward way. Let's see the long term. He's a good guy, you know. Bro, Uber's crazy. It sucks. We sold the covered calls, but like we're almost there on the covered calls, so we might need to roll those over. But they're actually not down that much. U car on the low. JP Morgan still going up. By a title, you fell into the trap with everyone else that there's going to be a pullback. You got extorted and you spread that bad message. Oh, okay. But yeah, that's not what I was trying to do. But if you watch the other videos, I, I hope it makes sense. Amen. Good morning. So it's a great Monday. So uh, <laughs> for waking up on Monday here, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's uh, I've seen a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting comments in the morning. Capital One. If Uber covers, yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna sell more. So we're at like 47s, but I mean, I would just roll them over, and then sell out for another year. I'm down. But Uber is like actually crazy. woke and said buy everything nah we were down <laughs> we're still down right now like to in a weird way i mean we're now green on the market but to give you an idea i mean you're you're lower than any other point even from friday but there isn't much on the schedule today so if it wants to hold up we'll see but these next couple days we got a couple more things happening loading nike i'd watch any of those earnings plays uh, Nike's like really going actually 1.7 already uh, Micron's coming down Coinbase still going up VNQ is running You said, bro, the title is literally a question. <laughs> I never really thought about it like that, because technically, if you're asking a question, I mean, I don't know if it assumes that you have an opinion towards the subject, but that's crazy.
Mm-mm. UPS running. We got I get the play filled, I think, for the random. Bro, coin is going up, spy, everything, cash open right now. It's lifting it, but it I mean, there is still a little bit of red here on the day, but if you didn't notice what happened, we were getting murdered pre-market, bonds were catching a bid, cash open, sell the bonds, buy up the stocks. So if anything, I'd wait till the bond market starts making a real move. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of like Friday. I think the same thing happened on Friday, no? Wasn't it on Friday we did the exact same thing? So even then, Friday we gapped down, but then the bonds were up, and then they just all sold off. So give or take, where were the bonds that day? Maybe if the bonds stay in this range, maybe SPY stays in between here. I don't know. We're going to have to see, though. Bonds have been tricky beast. But SPY's still going up off of that. That's something to notice. Mm. Yeah. Tesla's going up now. Everything is still kind of chilling. Wait till Euro close too. Remember there was the German data, but I think we're, we're kind of more so responding to bonds more than anything. RH. Team on the high. Uh, where's the uh, CCJs on the high, but then CCL's low. Actually, I didn't think about it. Are the fertilizer plays up too? Because CCJ is up. I think uranium fertilizer plays. Actually, uranium's starting to run right now. UUUU, uh, U, 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 U. that's getting two big candles of volume right now. Uh, PNC just got a price target, and then Raytheon maintained overweight at Morgan Stanley. Uh, Redfin's going up here to Lucid again. Yeah, Lucid popping above six now. Actually, Lucid's like kind of running big. And then Uber, another 52 week high. Damn. That's, uh, again, Uber's crazy. Lucid popper. There's Roblo 1.8 now, too. IBM, they were buying Aptivo for like 4 billion, even Snap now. All right, a lot of smaller cap techs all got candles in the last couple of minutes. Spy was kind of wicking into the high, but see what happens here. Mm. Dan DNN. SDRL on the high. C drill. Again, I feel like a lot of these co anything commodity related is like it's it's catching part of that war bid today. It feels like that was the stock market still going up. Well, get ready. I mean, I said it on the watch list yesterday, uh, but uh, just even if the market like goes down, like <laughs> we're we have up until like you could go down to four eleven. Or even go up to another 100 points and nothing would change in the sense that we would be at the same exact point we've already been at. So that could be both good and bad. But what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, the reason why we're up, we have a lot of support here from the central banks. And obviously things are going to change and we have a whole nother half of the year remaining. But just considering how fast we've already moved lately, just don't forget that like you know, there's a lot of cushion on both ends of this. So before you like make up your opinion on it's coming down or up, just we could do a lot of days in this range without much changing, which is a wild concept to think about. You should see the bank loans I take care of, Josh. You'd shriek. I see a couple. I mean, that's what Lending Tips always text me anytime he gets a crazy one too, but it's a... Uh, it's a fascinating world we live in, especially when perception is good. There's Tesla about to go green. The post on the top search Google stuff? No, I didn't. What was it? Well, let me see. I can probably find it. Oh, did you post it on YouTube? 
I don't see it on your Twitch comments. <clears throat> the consensus was TLT bonds and high yields will get sold off due to new issuances. The exact happened. How come? Uh, because the full amount isn't there yet. So what was it? The Treasury... The daily statement. So I've been watching this too. I've been giving you guys like baby updates on it. But just don't forget. You you could look at it all. So this is as of like June 22nd. But they have 380 million. So they've only done right now about like a third. So remember last time I showed you it was at 180 million. So it's doubled up. So the, an the answer to your question is that it's not done yet. So we like even right now. The fact that it's staying pin is very interesting considering all that's going on, but it's it's just not done. So the full like one trillion re like refunding, technically speaking, you've you've only got to see a portion of it. So it's little by little factored in with everything else. But we will. I mean, again, in some people, uh, what was it like? Say's law, like like uh, Hugh brought up. Everybody has their own thing, but in my opinion, I think it's just kind of both government and fed are are strategically operating and moving the puck very slow to give them that stability who's selling coin watch square it's been popping i think paypal is starting to go up again lucid even the spy just a lot of even smaller names a couple of big travel ones too uh, again uh, like ual I think they were coming back up there. Then Uber is literally hitting 52-week highs. Nikolai? Uh, NVIDIA is on the high now. So NVIDIA woke up. They're at 0.8 now. Selling coin? I'm not selling. Wait, what? I sold off my coin flip shares already. But I don't know. I, feel a lot of, I, just, I just saw a lot of questions on Coinbase. BRTX pause due to uh, volatility. Mm. Ah. Microsoft. Microsoft's going. Two big candles there. Even Apple now. Again, there's NVIDIA, Amazon. Uh, even Root woke back up now. So you got You need to spam in the chat that the Root play is now going up like you do when it goes down. You know what I'm saying? So I need that, please. Thank you. But that's up now. XLV on the low. Tesla, too. If Tesla goes green right here, that'll be big. AMD pop. Everything up second. It's weird because it's small, though. I mean, the point, I, I, I hope you guys were trained from last week. Just remember, last week was gap down, kind of deal with the news, and like we were, we're low key like making small moves. Well, that was low key savage. Well, wasn't meant to be. It's just kind of like a little chuckle. Because for real, like, I uh, watch the buyout video. Like, I have a stra strategy with something that we're going to swing trade. But, you know, if you're going to call out every time it flushes, you better call out when it runs up. Or don't look at it for a couple weeks, and, and then we'll see where it's at. But this is a buyout play. I did not buy 3M for the fl I got to wait. Bro, I wanted Lucid 2 to average down. I should have took that one. But 3M's like the only available play I can make right now. But then it's kind of up a little bit. So if I wanted to do any swing this week, I, I am going to look for that.
But yeah, it just looks big because we're there. Honestly, I think I don't think this is anything. I think it's nice, but until we like get out of this like five day range, I think that's why I was just showing here with the bonds. It just I think we could have a lot of movement without without it ever communicating anything or meaning too much. Were you shorting the video? I did. Every time I short it, you would tell me to cover it, but I I did cover it. But we were actually like. I'm not going to say it because I'm not going to jinx it, but God is good. Finger to the sky. We're good with NVIDIA. I will reshort at like 440 uh, is probably when I'm going to do it. Mm -mm. I did. I chose Root on Friday over the Lucid Reload. We'll see. Uh, maybe. You know, for now it looks like that, but we'll find out by tomorrow and then the end of the week. And then Root, just Root and Lucid are two different plays. So Lucid, that one, I'm not, we don't have a buy target to it uh, at all. The yield curve is effed up, but I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> but the yield curve is still pretty deep right now. I mean, I think it's like uh, it's just under or just over 1%. Yeah. So it's, this is like one of the worst inversions ever. I mean, it's comparing to what we saw, uh, you know, following SVB. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people think it will stay inverted. I'm still just same signal as always. Uh, if that uninverts, we got a problem. I own Q. Yeah, it's climbing up. Virgin Galactic, no. I mean, you saw what they did, right? Like, they literally, bro, they got your news because you were running it up, bro. Pickle, you were like, buy Virgin Galactic. It's going to have big news. Buy Virgin Galactic. It's going to have big news. You were right. You were 100% correct. And then what did they do to you the next day, two days? They just dumped 400 million on shareholders. So, unfortunately, it's there. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to fund a, a rich guy's rocket. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of here. Like, bro, get me a house or something. I don't know. I got, I'd have way more shit to do before giving Richard Branson or any of these. No. Did you not see what happened to the Titanic too? The little, the fuck, we're, we're done with this shit, okay? We're done with this space travel, ocean travel stuff. Okay, that's a joke. That's a joke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sub coat to chatter Josh. Happy Monday. Stop about to say what's up. So baby, good morning. So Desla just holding right at like trying to go break even or not, but then so is the spy. And we're chilling here. 658. Only been 30 minutes, man. Only been 30 minutes. Mm. Happy Monday. Amazon deer deer's going up. Uh, deer's up a lot actually, and caterpillar. I don't know. Is this part of the the industrial trades that run up with uh, any of the war the wheat stuff? Take two. Uber's about to hit forty five. Take two's up one point five. Uh, Boeing's down. SPR they're up three. Remember they had drama last week. Even Roblo's up, Zillow's up. I want to play Micron, but it's hard. It's kind of already moved a little bit, so we'll be patient. China name still holding up again. Spies trying to wick into another high restoration. Uh, that's been going up here, so we've had a lot of big climbers. Why Goldman? Down? I don't know. I mean, but I don't know why they did today. But then it's like, dude, the trend on Tesla has been six downgrades in a row uh, ever since it like kind of recovered that loss. So just kind of analysts been been going in heavy. Lucid, Coca-Cola bleeding. Walgreens just flipped. Good call out on that. Kava's on the high. Uh, Lucid is going for round two right now. Sound just joined Russell 2000. Really? Good for them. DoorDash, eBay's on the high. Was that GGT or CGT? PayPal's kind of coming down. Visa and MasterCard, like, barely break even. Vacasa. What is it? That vacay? 
I thought it was Vaca. XLV's down. Ooh. So, healthcare is getting murdered, actually. It's no good, Habibi. Oops. Uber at 45, ACLS. Oh, what was I going to check? Yeah, Uber, we're going to, so we're going to have to roll over those covered calls. It's kind of funny, but not really, but it is, but it's not. I'm surprised because now the calls are down 100%, but we have 47 and a half and the stock's at 45 or something. And then SPY, NVIDIA is going up, even ACN, remember from earnings, NXPI, and then a lot of names that we're already running just keep going up here now. Let's see. They're worth four. We need to get 480 back if we rolled over today. So we still have, again, you still have time on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so look, we can roll over easy. Nice. We can roll over and give ourselves another, like, $20 or so. Just keep holding those. You'll be good. Disney's on the high. Lucid's up because they they literally they did a deal with Aston Martin, and then they took a 2.3% stake or 2.7% stake in Aston Martin. Lucid, it's going again where we should have took that average down. That would have been a lot better. But even both of them are up now almost. Or like we're still down 10, 20 cents on Lucid. But then Root is up there. I think Tritium is the only one getting murdered. But then all of healthcare is getting destroyed right now. Weed stocks up. Any news? I haven't seen. I could look though. IWM still dumping. Well, regionals are coming down, but uh, I think IWM was up because of regionals. Uh, IWM is the best on the day. Russell's up three quarters. Dow's barely green. Spies up a quarter, and then Nasdaq's uh, 0.49. Mm. Why don't we bring up the contrarian view? Isn't it ominous we keep buying up and then selling off later in the day? I, I honestly at this point six months into the market you know I've had a I've had a lot of realizations I think we've brought up almost every aspect of of what's going on here so right now to get the answer to everybody's question it will take time so I'm patiently waiting for all of it do I see a lot of ominous stuff yes do I see a lot of bullish stuff yes uh, but at the end of the day um, just I'm slowing down everything I'm turning the gears down trying to find answers to some of these questions now that we've kind of been trying to answer and then you see it answered today and then it's a new answer next week. It leads to confusion. So I think slow it down and uh, you'll you'll see what's ominous or not in the market. And it just really comes down to interest rates, whether or not the economy keeps going, whether or not people have profits, and then how does that reflect on the consumer and how long does that take for the data to show up? But that will never be answered in, in 140 characters. You know what I'm saying? So it's really going to be long-term and just get ready for data-dependent mode is what I'm saying is put the sales up, and I think we're going to get a lot of wind, but just because the wind is going to blow left and right, I, I don't think it's going to change uh, the course of where the boat is supposed to be heading right now is we're we're trying to make sure we either get this soft landing or not. So, you know, only a couple things can happen, and that's what I'd be focused on. Does that make sense? Is like we could talk about everything that's happening on the on the ride over, but it's very simple. There's only a couple things that are going to happen. You are either going to have a soft landing or not. You know, it's like it's like watching a plane come down right now, 
and it's there's only a couple scenarios that will occur. It's either you do get that soft landing, you do land it, everybody claps, uh, or everybody gets clapped. So be patient, you know, my friend, be patient. But at the same time, though, too, uh, any assertions of like what I'm covering or not covering uh, or whatever my title is or isn't, I just I have everything documented in the sense that I think I have evidence that I've discussed and covered most of it. But if you don't understand that at that point, it's not it is not my job uh, to to you know what I'm saying at the end of the day, just keep in mind everything we do is independent, uh, <laughs> you know, and th that's it. But. Vibe. Get ready for data dependent land. Tesla calls. Catalan starting to pop. Oh, that's good. Mm. Patience is key. I, I really I really think it is, and I, I just I said it a couple times already today, and we do this a lot, but it's just like try to answer some of these questions all the time is just going to make you confuse yourself. Uh, and that's why it's like, we know you don't like data dependent, but that's what it is. And we are data dependent, but we just, we have to give it enough time. And if you, if you really want, if you, if the in between is confusing you, just figure out what the possible scenarios are. Cause like I'm saying, there's not much, but if you don't want to deal with the in the, the minutia in between, you got to find out where the destination is. And then sadly, to, even if you know the destination, you still got to wait for it. Intel again. Spy about to go. It's holding up great. I mean, again, cash open just straight up here. It's kind of what we saw the other day uh the last couple days but if it could hold that'd be nice uh pfizer they said they're getting rid of like one one part of their ozempic diabetes drug competitor thing airbnb again 130 though he's i'm i'm more like again you saw what happened when uber broke above like 40 so it's like you need airbnb above that 130 for it to start doing that there's Tessie now. So now Tesla's in the green. Good for you, Tessie. Good for you. That was the answer nobody wanted to hear. Yeah, I know. Nobody does like to. That's why I get it, though. Like, And that's why I'm saying, you know, it's like I get people, they want to answer. They're like, Josh, you're not doing this. And like, you know, some Epictetus type beat. I am doing that. I know, I know exactly what I've done already. So, and it's just like, at the same time, you don't want, I don't want to hear it. I hate the answer. It's data dependent. I sound like a bitch. I sound just like Powell. It's the same thing that frustrates us, but that's just what it is. Uh, Powell wants the bonds in the dollar in a range. If he keeps it in there, he wins. Once the external busts it out, that's it. We have a couple of scenarios. We either wait for, you either try to force your hand and answer it now and you take the risk if you don't want to wait or you fucking wait. <laughs> and then but you have to wait if you if you really want the easy play can you sit for six months while watching all of this shit go back it may be less maybe more but the point is you already had six months of it so it's just kind of like unfortunately nobody wants to hear it but it's like we are playing this data dependent this game and that's that's unfortunately what what it, what is going to be required so just get ready for it and don't confuse yourself in the meantime and just set up the sales, uh, sales, and let's coast. Yeah, I had a great, I had a great weekend. Uh, that's why I was a very, uh, a very uh, hippie weekend. I was just chilling. I was just, vi I was just vibing, bro. I was just vibing. I got to hang out with my nephew. I, I got, I got, I got hurt again because I, uh, <laughs> we went to Chuck E. Cheese, and then uh, like one of the games glitched, and it just kept letting us play like unlimited. And then, like, I just kept throwing balls at the little clown. And then now my, like, rotator cuff is clapped because I'm old. <laughs> it was eating something strange. Oh, no, that was, you like that? Go look at my Snapchat. I was, uh, I ate mushrooms on my Snapchat if you didn't see it. Yeah, you guys were tripping out. Mm-hmm. 
They're like, you did a mush? What? It was a dessert. It was like a white chocolate shaped as a mushroom. It was a food, mother effer. Food. <laughs> 3M spy with the little little Raul there. Again, Tesla even just went green the first time, but I think everything that was running up just took a candle. Two-year bench. Oh, is it 10? Yeah. You just had the 10-year bond auction like 5, 10 minutes ago. And then back to VWAP, AAOI, PayPal. A couple names are taken apart. Some aren't. We've been getting that over the last couple of days. So just approach with Pisces. Tridium. What's coin? I think it could, if it's, if it didn't, I remember I sold out at 62. If it don't go to 62, I think here is the next spot, 66, and then 73, give or take, and then 69. No news on route. I think it's just moving up. Again, like there hasn't been new, uh, news on it since the first day. That's what sucks about it. Was today the 22nd? No. Yeah, last update was the 22nd. Just literally the rumor of the buyout, and then nobody has confirmed or denied it any further than the stock moved, and then that was it. And now we're here. Charles Schwab price target cut to 60 from 62 by Wolf Research. And then Meta raised to 335 from 300 at UBS. Goldman leaps? Oof. Maybe. They do decent. And it can move a lot. If you want leaps, though, I would go with something that that looks like PayPal or that looks like the meta one. And PayPal, I, I could get behind where you want lots of dollars. You want it to be able to move 100 percent on a leap. If you could get a leap and that stock has the real life potential to move 100 percent. I think that's a good one. Oh, Visa is getting murdered. Yo, Visa. Check any of these other ones. I know the spy was dropping, too. I don't see anything on Visa right now. Like Amazon, I think Amazon might be able to still go up 100. But I think that's what you need. FNGR. Finger motion up 14%. Again, Visa is kind of dying there. I don't know if they all look like that. I don't think they do, actually. MasterCard does now. Square and PayPal a little bit. Something's going on with those names. Yeah, AXP's holding up, but uh, Visa and MasterCard are both whacked. Uh, XLF. Para, Par, Roku. Walgreens still low. Um, and Micron hasn't moved since the first candles. Again, they have earnings. Disney might be able to go 100%. I think PayPal is the one that can... Uh, that's the only one that can move up like 100 two That can move up 200%, no problem. But then again, you, you just need it to move. <laughs> I'm not talking about it will go up 200. I'm just saying a $60 stock that was at $300, you know what I'm... It can move up higher it can move up 100% way easier than not. Mm. I think Square 2, they had a similar premium. Any of those names. Just look at what happened. Remember, Meta was the... It just moved up, a, what, $150 in that time frame. So if you could get in the money on a leap like there, we had that whole leap discussion on Friday.
See Weber on the low. Disney's popping up there. Bonds are taking a low, and then Spies is going straight up here. Tesla's still holding into the green, so we might get round two here now uh, in terms of upside. 43.60, so this is all holding the level here, too. You flush below 43.58. We're now above it. It's kind of near the high of Friday, believe it or not. So we went up as high as 43.66 on Friday before selling off. I didn't pick up more Lucid. No, we should have got it on Friday. Remember, I took the, the route instead. Uh, but at least we're we're almost back up on Lucid, and then we have some green on route. Ball green's turned. Sound again, sound got added to the indexes, I think, today. Yeah, sounds pop in 405. Rally bio maintained price target cut at JMP. Uh, JP Morgan flipped. Damn, I thought banks are up. Uh, banks are actually in the red right now. Uh, Disney's actually going up here. What are they at? 88.74. NVIDIA, Intel starting to pop off, Pfizer at the low, Intel uh, 2.7 getting candles here. Where's Meta? Meta's is like barely green. Target's on the high? I feel like I haven't seen Target on the high in a while. Zoom is up uh, 1.79. Yeah, sound on the high ticker again too. So sound of 413. Was it higher? Yeah, I think it had high as 449. Dollar general. Uh, I'd have to check where they're at price wise, but could be good. As long as they don't have too much premium. Hmm. Yeah, we're up 0.5 on the NASDAQ, 0.29 on the SPY, three quarters on the Russell. Yeah, Micron's on Thursday. And then there's sound. Again, Disney's on the high, DoorDash, Uber chilled out, Airbnb still up. PayPal pressed down. Now, PayPal's doing better. Again, just look at MasterCard and Visa. PayPal and Square could be down a lot more right now, and they're not. Uh, Walgreens is starting to wake up right here. Nike is just killing it for earnings, which is surprising because, remember, I think Nike still had a bad, uh, uh, what's it called, bad inventory at the last one. I don't know what the Intel news is, but Intel is popping right now. Apple to the moon, Palo Alto again, Walgreens catching some, Paul A, Apple to the moon, Root, Tesla, Tesla's holding decent, Bond's catching a bit here though, what time is it, oh it's, it's been less than an hour, oh Chad and Donia, how do you feel? How do you feel? Raul, reload time. The volume is nice. It does seem like it was chill. Yeah, 9 million. Oh, it's actually a little lower, believe it or not. I mean, at a higher price. We haven't really had much fluctuation just straight up, but we will see. And then even Euro closed, too, because there was negative uh, European data. Said Nike should be good now. Vietnam factories are back online. Yeah, that that was the... I think they still... Even though last earnings, they did good, but that, that, I believe they had $8 billion of inventory still remaining. 
Netflix, uh, and Mo's on the high again. Spy, a couple of cheek lays here. Uh, this is all at the level, too. So remember, I was just showing you, we're dancing right now between uh, the 43.58 level. You've dropped below it, went above it. Now two big candles below it once again. You're going down a little harder here, too. And then bonds are catching a big. Oh, scammers. Which company would you choose for air taxis? That's it's gonna be all you, dog. Tesla. Uber still holding. Sounds going up again there. MP Dubs. Yeah, sounds running. I forgot about MP Dubs. UWMC's down. It's because sound has been here every day. So like the last five days, that's why the premiums, it's just like it's hit four and then comes down, hits four, goes crazy, comes down, hits four again, comes down, goes above four. So that's that's why it's been like a whole week of hitting four and we're still kind of there. That's on the month. So worst on the best stock sector on the month so far has been discretionary at 9%, tech at 8 industrials at 3 communications at 2 materials 2 healthcare 07 banks moved up half a percent, and then staples, utility, real estate, and energy all did bad this month. Energy is the worst year to date. Discretionaries. Uh, or tech is the best. Not bad. I like Ford, but I'd want it at a lower price. That's just the thing. It's stays kind of at these. Actually, damn, it's, yeah, it's at 14. I feel like that's kind of high for them, but it doesn't really move. I like their dividend, so I'm not like in love with the play, but I like them. Uh, Lucid's coming down. It makes me want to look at the other car makers. Complete opposite from last year. Yeah, I mean the things that were up uh, last year, they're they're down now. Some of them are still green. So some of the things that have lost a lot so far, they're still holding up. Like real estate on the one year is down, and utilities are down. Jewel City Locksmith, baby, welcome. Good morning. Dallas Fed in five minutes. Uh, yeah. Actually, 1030. Mm. You want to buy JP Morgan for the long term? Uh, you could, but just be prepared to average down. I mean, 138 is like high. Like, we're up like 12% or something on this shit. So I would, if you want to buy now, be prepared to buy more. I mean, I bought my first JP Morgan position at like 130-ish, 136, I believe. And then I averaged down into it. That got me a really good price. So I like JP Morgan a lot, but uh, I do think 138 is kind of high. So it just depends on how you want to scale in or not, your patience. Again, take a look at when they pay their dividend too, if that fuels some of your decision. But uh, I would, I, I think it's a decent price. Meaning, I think it could definitely go lower, uh, but that's about it. I like water plays, but they have a lot of premium. So one that I have is AWK. I've held that one for uh, like well over a decade, if not longer, in my long term. Uh, but that's a good water stock. Um, but other than that, I don't really know too many other water plays besides that. But I would take water plays over a flying taxi. Nine out of ten, uh, you know, timelines. I would take that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Mm 
Mm. Yeah, AWK is the water one. I worked at AWK for 10. Amen. I've held your stock for more than 10 years. Amen. Actually, has it been? Almost. I don't think it, no, it hasn't been 10 years. Close, though. Catalan still up. And then Spy still at VWAP, kind of going a little lower here. Sound. I like Pfizer. I mean, I wanted the Ozempic drug, bro. I'm kind of pissed. I think they're still doing it, but still. Mm hmm. You won't. Uh, sound is this. I think the high on sound was 40 40 or 40 50. Yeah, Goldman, they got clapped and they got a big downgrade. But they still hold up. Dow's red now, too. That's the first time on the day, except for the morning. Regionals are coming down. Uber's trying to work its way up. Lucid still holding. Tesla's came down now. Tesla's negative 1%. Tesla's moving a lot. Actually, kind of wild. And 27. Canada's Suncor says that they're responding to cybersecurity incident. The SU. They're up. They're not reacting to that. And then bonds are trying to work their way up, but nothing's ever promised to mod a day. Uh, Tesla dropped a decent amount from the just from being green, not as bad as earlier. Sound keeps going. My goodness. I think the next great war is coming. Russian resources is about to get hot. Well, regardless of uh, whether that's going to happen or not. The fact of the matter is that the last couple of weeks, though, especially over the last weekend, the Russia headlines are coming back. So we don't know if it's something you're going to ride off of moving forward. But I mean, again, this is part of the question time to hedge. This is what people are bringing up now. They're saying, well, shit, we've factored in everything, right? And we're, we've talked inflation and soft landing and this and that. But then they're saying, what about the potential for global tensions. Just don't forget that was a dominating theme last year, uh, and we really haven't seen it now up until kind of recently. It started with the dam. A couple weeks later, commodities kept going, and now we have this. So we'll see, uh, but who knows? Like We don't know the answer to that, but it's just clearly the the global tensions, that play, will it, it exists, but it just it's making its, re its comeback right now all of a sudden. So well, we're going to find out over this. That's kind of part of the next six months. Do global tensions come back to this story or do we ignore them again? You know, that's that's what we're really going to see. Oil will move big if there's, you know, equal and opposite reactions. You know what I'm saying? If, uh, you know, wheat finally moved up, but it's like you get the right, you know, th situation going on, then yes. Yeah, Sam, that's the high for them right here. But it's been going nuts. Apple, Microsoft, then Spy still holding VWAP. This is right at the level. Yeah, Pfizer stock, stock tumbles on big setback in obesity treatment versus Novo. Uh, Dallas Fed, where is it? It should be coming out right now. Hold on, my shit's loading. Whoa. Oh, I don't think the Dallas Fed's out yet. It's supposed to be out. Does anybody have it? Mm -hmm. EU Foreign Affairs head Borrell speaks after minister meeting. 
Yeah, because sometimes they come in a little late. This one just is not loading up here. I don't know if everybody got it. Oh, Tesla price target raise. This one could be old. That's the first one I've seen. Deutsche Bank, 230 from 200. And then Tesla's maintained at a buy at Deutsche Bank with the price target raised. It's one minute late. Yeah, there it is. Negative 23.2. Estimate was negative 26.5. So it came in a little bit better, it, just as bad as April, or a little bit better than April, but then better than last month. So I don't know. Watch the bonds if they move off of it. I think it's kind of a dud, but service is down. I mean, it's not like it's hot economic data. So bonds should get a little bit off of it. We'll see. China bans finance writer on Weibo for false info on stock. Uh oh, hot dog. So we're going down a little bit here from the data. Again, slight decline. Uh, it's still kind of, I think it is contractionary. It's still all bad, but it was just better than last month, but still kind of lower. But bonds should catch a bit off of it. So I don't really care what equities do, but data tells me bullish bonds. Let's see. If it contracts, if people buy it, we'll we'll get an idea from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, loose is holding up. Sound came down. And even the SPY now, you're starting to break some of these earlier levels that you worked up to in the morning. So now we're down to where we spent most of Friday. 43.51, 43.50. Uh, you've you've hung out at this level a lot. So there's the bonds catching a bid. Biogen preliminary results indicate holders elected Susan Langer. Biogen. BIOC's on the low. Meta. Uh, Meta's actually flushing right now. Starbucks is on the high. Meta is taking two big candles into the low right now. Hmm. Where's the bonds? Oh, wow. NVIDIA, dude, Tesla, dude, everything just took fat red candles. Bro, go look at your favorite stock right now. It probably has three or four red candles here at the market. So, again, data just came out. Bonds got a little bid. Equities have moved way more, but that could just be the knee-jerk reaction. Uh, BNTC has woken back up. That's the multiple sclerosis drug. It's a penny stock, but they got FDA approval today. Micron coming down. Ups is holding up. I guess it was at, it's like CB something. Whichever one we just had, but BNTC. That's multiple sclerosis. That's related to Catalent 2 and Sarepta and TRDA. Those are the plays from last week. But those are all clapped. I don't know why Snap is holding up. Uh, dollars still down again bonds dude that's this has been the fourth day in a row where i've been green on my bonds pre-market and then after the first 30 minutes they just go red they just stayed at the same exact price uh lucid still hold i don't know if lucid candles are tweaking out bntc is breaking out here that one's about to go in yeah dallas fed came in The data wasn't too bad. It was just contractionary. Again, service data was declining pretty big. It was better than last month and just as bad as the month before that. So markets coming down, I would, I would expect the bonds would catch a bigger bid with it. But as of now, it's still kind of holding. But so far, we did get a little bit of a three point or three minutes of selling off right as the data has been released. Yeah, the USDC and why it's about to hit. 
It's about to hit 725. Mm -hmm. So remember, I was telling you guys, I said, that's the danger zone. That's it. I said, once we get past 725, and then you just start holding down the, uh, what's it called? Everything else. 725, the Naira, all of that. We're kind of in check. It's kind of weird, though. Lucid climb in. You picked up another 100 shares of LXRX. So you were there was something in San Diego on the weekend. There was like a diabetes conference, but I kept, I don't know. So I think Lexicon was going to present at it. But, dude, I kept seeing everywhere, bro, in downtown this weekend. All you saw everywhere was just biotech bros everywhere. Isn't a deflated USD CNY bullish? Depends on who you ask, Habibi. Depends on who you ask. So it's good for some, worse for others. But really, in this in this sense, the question is, why does China need such a such a low currency right now Tesla's coming down Microsoft bro a lot of the big tech that was even holding up it's a very very big flip and then sound just keeps going And the video keeps going down. The data was the Dallas Fed manufacturing. Uh, even Boeing back down to 204. But wasn't Boeing just at 230? That thing actually moves crazy. Again, Tesla keeps getting knocked here. Uh, and the video, bro, that's like six candles just wiped out. 1% on all of it. Is that pod or pin duo duo? I think it's pod. China plays are still holding, kind of. Not too bad. Future is halted. Uber is still staying up. Sound. Yeah, sound. I mean, if they are added to the indexes, I think it's just forced purchases, but hopefully it holds up. We've held that one for a while. The entire world is bad, man. I mean, borderline, yeah. Kind of. I mean, ours isn't as bad, but other countries too. And again, even the consumer confidence data we got out of Germany this morning was the, the business confidence index. It was not good. BNTC at five or 50 cents. Oh. The MMM breaking down. Cash open, yeah, it did fade really hard because everything went down with it. It was not like usually when we run up like that and then come down, it's like maybe one or two industries will give it back up and then the big guys hold, but you really just watched everything kind of come down. Apple a little better, but all of your tech names just took a candle down with it. And then especially te Tesla's moving 3 4% every 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bitcoin's down. Santa on the high. We played that one before. And then Spy's about to come down to the low of the day now. So that's it. It's not even Euro close. We're still, uh, what? Still an hour shy of Euro close. So you started at 4344, four, gap down, filled the gap, ran back up to the highs of Friday. You did this all in 30 minutes, 20 minutes. And then now we have sold back off the other 30 minutes to take you right back down to where we opened up this morning. Two thousand eight, was there anything that shocked the market down or did it just start one day and not stop? It was kinda like what we have now, but then it just eventually all the bankruptcies hit, uh, and then that's it. Just you know, <laughs> the reality hit and that was the event that caused everything to go down, and then it pretty much went down up until they came up with quantitative easing and the stimulus, and then it would go down for a little bit, have a couple of pops here and there, and that was it. I mean, it kind of feels like today it's not that crazy but it was you know you really saw things drop though once there was a reason to go down like legitimately you watched all of those things die mm 
Mm. All right, Microsoft, Nvidia, everything just flipped right there. That's it again. I wait. That was it. AMD. Oof. Or no, Nvidia. Nvidia is still some. Somebody was just in the green. I just had it up there. That's crazy. Yeah, Apple's still up or Amazon. Those are the two that are green. Let's see. Walgreens holding up break even. Micron's even coming down. If that goes red, you might be able to play it. No news on any of this. No. Mm. Virgin Galactic goes to space this week. Uh, China bans finance writer. Mortgage back sausages might be the best thing I've heard. It's a good one. Goldman market rally. Uh, watch the banks. All of them. There is a bank stress test this week, too. Surprisingly, I haven't heard people talk about it too much. MMM under 100. And NVIDIA now. And then SPY. This is the, the moment of truth. Because even then here, too, take notice. You know, As we started to drop, what happened? The bonds finally caught kind of their first bit of the day when we were chilling out. So I'd, I'd watch for that. And then we are reacting to the data a little bit. No news related to this sell-off for now. If, if anything, the data, that's all that happened here is just like what, right at 10 o'clock or 1030, uh, we had the uh, Dallas manufacturing data and that came in slightly lower. Bonds went up a little bit since it's went up there, but then equities moved down a lot harder. That would be the only thing that happened. UK having its 08 moment. If they, if their data actually fails, we're going to find out. But that's that, That's what happened last week. So last week, remember every day in the morning, I was telling you guys, I was like, yo, man, like this is, you know, you got to watch out for it because it's like you're watching this Europe. These Europe headlines are starting to hit. So what happened in Europe last week, their inflation broke out and then their manufacturing recovery all just declined. So it could be, but that that was kind of the main narrative of last week. Mm -mm -mm. It came in twenty six then higher. Yeah, so like like I was I said, it did a little bit better, it did a little bit better than last month. Uh, but then it was just as bad than the month before. So you could be a stickler about it, but just pay attention, dickhead. I love you. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I need. I need to. I need to just ban the people in the morning with with little attitude checks. You know, you. I came in with the, this child is incorrect attitude here. Where I'm just like, y'all gotta listen, man, on certain things. Otherwise, God bless you. We have March. Thank you. That's good though. You guys like the laughs. Mm -hmm. No, NVIDIA is crazy. NVIDIA is right here, bottom right, down 0.5, but it was up by 0.8. That's like a 2% move in a while. Mm. That's why I don't speak. You, you retracted it. No, nah, it's just simple. It's like kind of uh, like there's people who correct me on certain things and other stuff, but it's also like the vibe where people are like, you're, you're wrong, or you're there. It's like, I'm not trying to argue with you. If you want me to answer a question on why the market won't go down, I would love to. Uh, but if you're trying to like ask questions to like set up a trap, like you're like the people with Jesus back in the day, <laughs> you Pharisee. But it's just like, you know, be positive. You'll be good. If you uh, want to argue, you have Wall Street bets and other websites. I'm, I have to go back to, uh, uh, what's it called? It's just, 
a more fati. You got a vibe. We have we have we have a lot of patience. So we're gonna that's that's why a lot of they'd be like, well, we'll see. Yes, it's called loaded questions. Mm. All right, if Micron keeps going, it's still 1%, though. But that's one to keep watch. You're bouncing up a little bit. We're here for all. Hey, man, right? We get the good, the bad, the ugly, the up, the down, the quick, the patient, all of it. So, hey, amen. Hey, amen. I feel. that's See, that's vibes. That's vibes. Memento Mori, my friend. Yeah, but right now, data was the only thing that got us moving. But the bonds, that's all I'm looking for. It's just like, I, I think this is what I've been saying now for the whole last week, too. Ever since even Powell, we've been waiting for the 06 or 01. And you guys noticed nothing moved, right? <laughs> that's the craziest thing about all of it, is that we've been talking about this, waiting for that signal since Powell paused. But the bonds have not gotten out of this range. I think the dollar might be closest to it it's kind of moved up but as you're seeing we have not gotten out of this so it's quite fascinating sound yeah for it's still holding up with all the congress selling paypal shares because of the upcoming fed are you concerned about having it in your long term? So to answer that question, it would uh, it would have to assume the first part of everything you said was true. And I, I just don't know. I know a lot of people have brought it up, but if people in Congress sold their shares, they, they could have. I, I don't care about that, if that makes sense. So if you didn't tell me that and I didn't hear that narrative of Congress selling shares out because of Fed now, I would have had no clue. So... I'm not concerned about it. Uh, if Congress does stuff, are they good at buying things in the last two years? Yes. Um, but other than that, I'm not really, uh, you know, I'm buying it for a completely different reason. Whatever, you know, let me give you the best example. Uh, even though it's not government, uh, and, and this is what, I think somebody asked me this the other day on a, a, another, I think it might have been you actually. I think you asked me something s similar for another company about so-and-so did this. Does that change what you believe about your company? And I, again, no. Uh, and it reminds me of Netflix. So remember, the day after we bought Netflix, what happened? Does anybody know? We bought Netflix, somebody sold out. Does anybody remember? Mm. Bill Ackman. Exactly. He sold out at a $800 million loss. So, and then again, I forgot who it was. It was somebody, I, I think you asked me the, the same question literally a week ago on another stock. And it was like, it was something very similar. So, uh, yeah, I just don't, uh, I don't, I don't look at what other people do in that sense. So I like PayPal for a different reason. Uh, it's bargain bin, but we'll see what happens. Mm. LT means LT like not concerned with short term yeah <laughs> 100% 100% so the opinion yeah so good luck with it but for me I'm just in my own little world I hold and chill Moral of the story, buy every dip. <laughs> it's funny because, like, that's where people are, are getting excited about it. But we we saw it. Just the buy the dip came in periods. And it was buy every single dip. 
and then it was a year of every dip not working, and then now everyone's like, buy the dip again. So, shout out the long term. Tune? I have not heard of Tune. Disney's going up there a little bit. There's PayPal. Did Visa and MasterCard, those didn't rebound. Tune is new. Cartoon Studio. I've never heard of this. Is it IPO? Hmm. Probably a SPAC or something. Interesting. Oh, Genius changed to Tune. Oh, I've heard of that one. Hey, oh, got a price target raise. Uh, is this active? Prigazin, we regret that we had to hit Russian aviation. Says the aim of the march was to avoid destruction of Wagner. We wanted to hold accountable those who made mistakes during special military operation. Prigazin says we turned around to avoid spilling blood of Russian soldiers. Arr. Yeah, spy back up to VWAP. Couple things moving more than others. Some that held up there, but like NVIDIA and Tesla, still negative. Apple and Amazon were the ones that did the best. I, just got, I need to go to the bathroom. Let's see. I hope it doesn't go to commercial. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I'm going to go right. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. God bless you and good morning and amen. The growth is a very good palliative for many of the problems we are seeing. If you if you see higher growth, you will see a better sales in firms, and therefore you see, you will see better paying conditions. Also, aggregate supply, uh, if it increases more, many goods and services will have adequate supply, and that would imply less inflation. So, therefore, I think it's very important for the for China to fully recover as soon as possible. Augustine, it's been great to catch up. It's always such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much indeed for your time today. Augustine Carstens, uh, Bank for International Settlements, General Manager, and of course the former Governor of Mexico's Central Bank. And I'd like to add my thanks as well to Bloomberg Daybreak Asia, co-anchor Sherry Ann. Sherry, great to see you. Thank you very much indeed. This is Bloomberg. Deepfake videos are everywhere. Damn, bro, they got you. I'm gonna just take y'all to the bathroom with me now. Y'all remember this? Y'all hear me still? I'm yelling. Do you hear? I'm Janet. I'm Janet yelling. What? I'm not Janet yelling. Go, Janet. Go, Deepa. We got Deepa. She got Deepa. She got Deepa. I don't know what it sounds like to y'all. I just hope you're with me here. I just have to really go pee. I couldn't leave you behind. You know, this is how we used to do it back in the day. Where my elevator music at, actually? Okay, we good. I'll flush it. They like, Josh, did you flush? They said, Josh, you wash your hand? Yeah, bro, relax. Relax, bro, relax. It's okay. She got leap off. She got Good. It's good, man. I'm making sure, yeah, real life, dog. It's real life. That's that's what I'm saying. Real life. So Y'all come at me with the audacity too. You're like Josh. You work for the. I'm sitting in my room. They're all in studios. Stop it. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. Good morning. <laughs> uh, we had an ad, and I was going to the bathroom, so we just pivoted to to Josh live bathroom break instead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's real life, mother. Well, good morning. Good morning. Carnival stock drops as cruise shares retreat. All I've seen is price target upgrades and people getting maintained. UA this week, Qualcomm 120 calls. Mm. Anytime is push-up time. Hmm. <laughs> 
30 minutes, 30 minutes. Let's get it. We'll get it, and then we'll even get our Euro close. And let's see where this leaves us. I'm just happy to be here, man. Amen. And we have six more months, so I want six more months of extreme patience until we uh, just, just stay stu suited up, ready to go. But we have six more months of this. <clears throat> and again, it's already been historical. It's already been historical. I know you didn't wash your hands. I didn't hear the faucet. Nah, man, I live in California. That's it. I got one of them government-mandated low-pressure sinks. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. But it just, it's just, I was, I washed my hands. You know, you're not going to hear it, bro. I got low pressure. I got low water pressure mandated by the government, bro. You know what I'm saying? They put, they mandated. They said, hell, how dare you have high-pressure faucets in your household? I said, what? Dang, that's crazy. So, I get, that's why my hands are so soft and gentle, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know the vibes, Nick. You know the vibes. They don't know about that life. Are we really out here? NVIDIA is going lower here. Again, Tesla kind of holding, uh, but bonds gave up now. So, makes sense. Bonds chilled out. You bounced a little harder, but now they're back below the data set. And watch, because right when they hit here and bounced up, though, this was kind of where we started changing the shape of today. So, let's just see. Carnival. How are we looking industry wise? Uh, tech. You got a couple of green in tech. Tech is actually mostly green. Discretionaries too. Communications are bad. Healthcare is awful. Financials awful for the most part. Can staples are killed. Energy's green, utilities red, and then real estate's green. I did not reshort uh, Nvidia. No. Hmm. Chigley puff stuck in your head. Don't worry, we'll get yelling soon. I think AMD, NVIDIA on the low. Was it Intel just running? So even Intel came down. Wheat futures just sold off. Roblo. Ooh. They're actually still going up. China stocks. It's weird because China was just like mediocre. If anything, China had bad news like the China stocks. But then... uh. And they ended up like chilling out. So it's just at least on the American shares, it just was kind of even. And then China names uh, currencies really weak. It's hitting that level that we wanted. And then uh, it's also like the I think the CSI 300 is like at the like, multi-year support level or something like that. Meta getting smoked. So is Google again. Communication just aren't hot today. So Google's even down one percent. Meta is now down one point three. Again, I think Amazon and Apple are the only ones green. And they're doing actually very good. Microsoft's even in the red. Redfin, yeah. He woke up. Again, Redfin is a very volatile stock. It's literally was just at 11, sold off to 9. Now it's back up to 1080. And then Bonds are trying to catch a bid here too. Wow, Colorado Ranch where dinosaur bones were found is sold for $14 million. You guys remember that? I think that was a two years ago. We saw the we saw that clip. Uh, they sold the property for fourteen million dollars. Uh, would you bother staging an apartment for sale? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Bro, you know that that's like my. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I learned it from lending tips. I stole it from lending tips because at first I never understood it because like I'm like cheap. I'm cheap and ghetto about it. So I like to save money. Uh, but oh, no, dude. Staging a property is the best way to sell a house. Telling you stage the shit out of it. Go hire the best stager you can. They're even going to charge you like one, two, three thousand uh, dollars. And then that's it. Mm 
Mm. Yeah, no, like real staging, not virtual staging. Hundred, no, yeah, that AI stage, like no, you like people don't, people don't get it. There's no, I'm telling you, when when that house is, it has what houses crave, bro. When people walk in to a staged house, it's a game changer. They don't know how to react. Because you know why? Ain't none of you have a house that is that perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like when you walk in, you never walk into a house. You're like, wow, why is this furniture laid out so perfectly with perfect furniture? It just feels you're like, wow, I want to sit in this house and hang out and take pictures in this house. You're like, wait a minute. It's, nobody has a house like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it like I it idealize. It's an ideal version of how you should live, and then people like they're just really able to like imagine the house how it should be. So do not do like you could stage with photography, and that's one element. But just make like you want a real staging there. It's the best investment you can make to sell your house. That's it. Your your real house is like that. Good for you, man. That's that's it. That means you be living good. You better be inviting girls back to your crib. I mean, that's all I'm telling you because they would love you. They'd be like, wow, you have a garden plant and you have good feng shui. Oh, my goodness. Stage homes only 300K. Well, no, 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 no. That just wouldn't say it. Kyle, you've been half of your comments been jokes. I've been timing you out half of the day today. So I hope you get in and get involved in the conversation seriously. Um, but it doesn't matter what amount it is. It, it just amounts how much it costs for you to stage the home. So some people will charge you the stagers. They'll either charge you based on the month, how big the property is, how much it requires. But if you could get it for like $200, $500, uh, I don't I don't think the value of the property, uh, you know, matters more or less. So just it's it's very good to to increase demand when selling your property. You would you would be surprised. So do it. That was somebody asked if they should do it. I would. Yeah, they should. They bring all the furniture, too. It could be cheaper. It should cost like one thousand to two thousand dollars. But then again, there are scammers and it depends on your area. So like literally the San Francisco flip. That one was a very good flip. Again, we did like what? It was like one point something million in a month profit wise. You should have saw the video. But I did another flip right before that. And that was a very good flip too. But the first flip to stage the property cost me $2,000. Right? This, the San Francisco flip to stage it cost me 13000 So, and it just because of the area and what I had access to. So just be there is a very wide gap in terms of quotes <clears throat> so some of it could cost three grand sometimes it could cost uh, upwards of almost twenty thousand dollars it just depends on what they provide and then that's that's it and then how long you need it for vr staging it just it doesn't it would work for pictures but it does not work for like when they go there for the open house or when people go to see it I spend 20k. It's probably your area. That's what I'm telling you. I the big ones I have to spend that much too. But then there's some that like I've I've gotten very cheap on like normal houses. But it was still kind of expensive like housewise. What about extremely small houses? So, it's the same thing. It just you got to go and get a quote. So, like you got to ask yourself logically. If the house is extremely small, is it going to require a lot of stuff? No. So they'll probably charge you less. So you got to think about it. If you have a 800 square foot property to stage versus a 1800 square foot property, there's going to be a lot less. I, I stage my homes every single time. Now, I don't care what it is just because I've seen the results and it's it's the best thing in the world. And if you guys see what's happening right here. So look at bonds are tweaking out. The bonds double bottomed here, or triple bottomed. They did that little low as we bounced and now the bonds are going straight up. 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, I think two-year auction. Is that it? You got grain numbers? Hold on, let me see. Texas manufacturing shrinks the most in three years. Mm. 
Fidelity D&D Bank Corp rejoins Russell 3000. Bonds going up, making things come down to a degree. It just it's been very hard to tell because even then, like this morning, we were down. Bonds were again bonds up, yields down. I'm not going to explain that that scenario, but hopefully you'll see what I'm saying is that this morning we were down when the when TLT IEF was up, and then it sells off. So in theory, yes, but the last couple of days you'll get them up, and then the market will like kind of do this little flip flop. So unfortunately, it's not. It sh I don't think the market will could go up without bond yields coming lower, TLT going higher, but every time it's gone higher, the market's tweaked out, but then the next day, everything just comes back to the same price. So if anything, I think stocks have moved more, equities have moved more than uh, bonds in the last couple of days. Sound couldn't break 460. Tesla's at the low. Bonds are going up, and then SPY might flush here. Yeah, Sound is already dropping from 4. Dude, bonds are going crazy now. So that's it. Like I told you, I was up on the bonds in the morning. It unwound all of them, but now all of a sudden, it's starting to come back up here. Rip on bonds. There's Tessie. What's VCIG? Bro, NVIDIA is getting knocked. Bro, NVIDIA is down to 413. VCIG up 21%. NVIDIA, we don't have any news on that. No news on this. The only other news you had was the data, again, about an hour ago now. And I think that was it. We had one more thing, actually. Mm-hmm. -mm. It looks like Bud Light is doubling down on what? And then Palo Alto price target raised by JP Morgan. Arc holding through. Shout out the pause. And then Bond just hit a high intraday. They were up a lot more pre market. Let's see what the market does, whether they continue or not. Good morning. What's up? Smacked. How you living? Bouncing 20. Uh, we have Euro close there. A new support if this holds. I wouldn't read too much into it. We just we have a lot of ranges to go. I mean, you could drop a whole another hundred points, and you're still gonna be at what forty two, forty two forty, which would still put you at like higher than anything. <laughs> That's it. Hundred points down. We're like we're back to February or uh, August highs. Yeah, you could drop a, another two hundred points almost, and you'll be right back up to the highs of the year. So that's why I'm saying anything that we deal with. I just I don't think it means a lot unless the actual news is meaningful, unless the bank stress test messes up, unless Powell somehow converts into a hawk. You know, other than that, though, it's like we have we went up to 300 points so fast that we have 200 points of cushion before we're still even at at the previous high or, or the other high we just set. Supreme Court to hear case that could block Democrat plan to tax the rich. All right, I hope it works, guys. It's been work. My other one's been working. I don't want to jinx it. But I hope it does. Uh, Two-year government bond auction, I think. They're getting updates. Yeah, man. Uh, Amadis agrees to United takeover approach. That's old. 
Am Amadisis Amed for 101. That is old. Yeah. Pay more likes. No, I messed it up today. I was trying to, because, like, I did I what I was going to tell you guys. I said I wanted to do, like, the uh, the uh, three, three or four different wires, and I wanted to, like, have it up there streaming. And then uh, it just it didn't work. <laughs> I have it working, but anytime I, uh, anytime I put it up on the stream, it stops like automatically refreshing. So that's it. Like if I want it not refresh, if I want it automatic, it works without, but right when that's why I just tried it right now and it wouldn't work. Mm. Yeah, now I just fucked up my other one now too. Okay, that should be good. Uh, Meta and Google got clapped and Tesla. I think it was all downgrades. I think even Meta and Google both got two big downgrades too. And then grain inspection headlines. All right, see if we come down here. Kind of the moment of truth. The Qs are on the high. Tesla, NVIDIA, both on the down. NVIDIA. I covered the NVIDIA short already, so if you're still in that, then you should be getting your $30 a share. <laughs> and no news for the sell-off. I mean, if anything changed on the day, it was the Dallas data. That's kind of what started upsetting the bonds, and we got the biggest move. But since, like, 10.30... Uh, there hasn't really been new uh, any new news updates. I didn't see the cyber truck. I think last thing I saw this actually I think somebody posted something. But you know, Elon needs to uh you know get it out. No rush the only Russia one you see got there's quotes from what's his name again? The guy who uh was doing the little mutiny per Pergazin or whatever. But it didn't really affect anything. That we might have to wait till overnight, see if you hear any more headlines. But it seems like the situation's resolved. But just everything over the weekend with what you that was crazy. Like you just literally, you have the tinfoil is people thinking that Putin was setting this up. Other people saying that Russia is not as strong. Like it's a very weird. It's very weird. It's weird as hell. Yeah, you know that actually. He used to cook for Putin. So the guy Prigozhin or Pri Prigozhin. My brother Prigozhin, what are you talking about? I came from Russia. I used to be a cook. So Putin took the guy off the street, hired him to do like food services for the Kremlin. And then he eventually got a government contract to provide food for the Kremlin. And then in like 2014, 2015, he created uh, the Wagner Group and then started working from there. It's pretty crazy. So, but then here's the thing. Uh, I don't know how Paul. I don't know how political you want to get. Are you ready? So, actually, how many likes do we have? I I don't know if I could talk to political tin to you without a thousand likes. It's just it's not worth it, you know, because that's it. Right when we start selling political thin, political thin, political tin, everybody starts coming out the woodworks. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta be careful. We got we gotta make sure the right risk to reward is there.
Oh, no, we didn't. There you go. We got it. All right, you ready? So here's the tin. The tin is that all of it's fake because Pergazin is uh, Putin's lapdog. So they're saying this is all part of Putin's re-election campaign to make it look like he has a real-life support, that there's somebody who actually opposes him, and that they're going to show how Putin could bring everybody together. And then now this is uh, their way of saying, look, the Russian people want Putin even after all of this. So the tinfoil is that per that Wagner is Putin's best friend and that it's yeah, it's all a ruse rather than looking as if something actually happened. The other tinfoil is that now Putin really is about to just that's it. Putin's done, because if that is true, then it just it's finally the the first, you know, everybody's been asking when the war is going to end, when realistically everybody should be asking who's going to replace Putin. And that's what this event brings back up nowadays. If it is legit, it's Pregoshan. There you go. Thank you. Pregoshan. Pregoshan. Perjuin. I'm going to just call him Wagner. That makes no sense. Putin fled Moscow. Well, I'll encourage you for fake political coup, uh, coups, coup attempts. I would refer back to 2018 in Turkey. Thank you. That one was even crazier. That The question from 2018 in Turkey and Erdogan was why didn't the jet shoot down his jet? So you should look at, honestly, it's kind of wild. You should, there's, there's a lot of things, a lot of different things, but uh, you say prego. <laughs> he prego. Uh, Evelyn Health Price Star. Right, we're back up. We're back up. Hmm. Apple dying. So is Tessie. I have two of these. Everything's dying right now. In a very awkward, small way with the Russell still holding. So there's Tessie now after the pump fake. And then regionals are surprisingly holding up. That one's actually kind of surprising. Any long-term plays? No long-term plays today. We've talked a little bit. Uh, Disney came up. Uh, I think we were just talking. We were even talking leaps on PayPal. I do like Walgreens, but I'd wait for Ernie. We already bought Walgreens a little bit below. So there's some value. CVS on the high and Cigna and healthcare. And is that square? No, that's SO. But a couple of healthcare names popping up there and CVS, but we're going lower. Tesla's flushing. NVIDIA's flushing. AMD is about to. Yeah, they're going on the low now. Even Apple's giving up some. Mm -hmm. Carnival down nearly 11%. Worst performer on the S&P. Mm -mm. MPW. Yeah, Microsoft's still selling off. Uh, Nordstrom surprisingly up. Google got a fat downgrade. They got, I forgot who it was, but they said that AI, their AI search is going to have a bunch of problems. So they got a downgrade and Meta, and then Meta had to do with like also bad uh, European news. Snop, snap. And snap's like, I'll go to 11. Again, Tesla and NVIDIA, I think those are your biggest movers. And then if Apple and Microsoft, Apple goes negative here, then there you go. NASDAQ down 0.3, SPY 0.15, Dow 0.1, and Russell is up by 0.43. Mm. Yeah, Tesla, it's already big. 240 to 260. <clears throat> XLK. Uh, probably the couple names that are actually up. So again, like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, they're barely... Like Amazon's half a percent, and then Apple's in the green. But then again, Microsoft's down one now. 
Netflix is down one, Tesla's down three, Nvidia is down two. And then energy is still holding up. Yeah, Disney's doing good, surprisingly. It seems like anything that sold off the other day is holding up and then vice versa. If it held up, then they're kind of getting a red today. Coinbase gave up some. And then Spy's right here at the low right here, right now. Uber holding well. <clears throat> is it 8.30 yet? Nine minutes? We just hit a new low, 43.40. That is your low of the day. No way. That's even lower than the last couple of days. No shit. Okay. So that's it, 43.38. And then uh, 43, 21, I think, or 22. So 43, 38, 43, 21. Next levels to the downside. Those will be either support or a bounce. MDB gave up everything. It, feel, it does feel like a bloodbath on the spy, but it's surprisingly not that bad. That's the irony, especially with how we opened up too. Remember, we were really down... And then we we bought it right back up, and then take a look at the bonds too. They just gave it all back up. It's a it's quite the interesting move, considering. I mean, you're now just barely lower than where the first candle opened up, like again, like 1 a.m. for the futures. So hitting a new low now, 43.38. That's the next level. 43.39. So that's it. This is gonna fill that gap uh, from a couple of days ago. So the gap from uh, June 12th, so about halfway through this month, that was the last time. Because once you hit here, I guess you did close the gap right there that one day for like a minute, and then you bounced right back up from there. And then again, if we break 43.38, 43.21, or 25. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's see. The bonds are still kind of being chill, though. Mm. Uh, Catalan's still holding up. I'm going to get rid of him. He ain't done anything. So good luck with that. It's a good price. Four, four, four. I sold the Catalint plays. I only got like $20 profit on it. Though we have any of the other MS plays haven't hit yet. TL team. Well, we have a. Uh, we have to see if Powell is actually going to follow through. So I think the price on TLT, that's easy. The question is when does TLT go above 105 before 2024 or after? And that answering that is the question of when do you think the Fed will cut? There wasn't news. Is Dallas Fed manufacturing that was the worst on the day. Or that was the only thing, and that came out at like 10.30. LQD, TLT going up. Even the two-year as well, and the 10-year, but everything's still kind of trailing behind. No euro close pop. We got five more minutes, and we're selling off into euro, so we'll see if it all switches. And then part of this morning was negative data. Uh, yeah, you have Lagarde, I think, in five minutes. Wasn't she at 11.30? And then Lucid Stock soars off low, an EV deal with British Luxury. Investors Daily is reiterating the news. Uh, Lucid came down, though. Mm -mm. We won't cut for years is a pretty bold state. It is very bold, right? Then MSTR. Let me get my Tessie up here. Where's the other one? There's four GM Rivian. I think they're all down. 
And then Staples are trying to work their way up. Oh, not no. I that was a tax loss sale. I've not gotten back into that one. So there's a lot of plays from last year. If it was a loss and I cut out of it at the end of the year, even if it's a play I wanted, I I just never was able to buy back in because of this rally. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see how we end this year with whether or not we do any uh tax sales or not. But I was scarred after last year. Nvidia. Myrna is still in the green. So is Intel too. Peter Schiff saying, I don't know. I've not heard from Peter Schiff. Neo, China stocks in general. A little bit. They're holding up, but China was even like mediocre. I'm surprised their names are doing a little better. The Fed, where is the Fed futures? Let's see, four weeks, two days, and two hours till the next Fed meeting. December, still holding in the rates. But we're still pricing in a rate hike for next meeting. That's the funny part. So the rate hike is still solidified for next in four weeks. And then you're still pricing in, though, no rate cuts by the end of the year. Uh, damn, Catalan keeps running. Said Ethereum Classic is up. Two-year hold-in. They just had a bond auction. Mm -mm, 11 13 No, 11-28. All right, see if that's the first little bounce. Two minutes till Euro close. So we'll see. Again, bad data in German Germany this morning. So there was part of it. Euro close, one minute, one minute. MP dubs. I like how this is staying up. And then you have Micron earnings. Micron's only up half a percent. Nike's holding 2%. They have earnings. Who's the other ones? Walgreens. And then there's uh, General Mills, too. I forgot about that one. A reel on the high. A reel and then root. A reel, root. Tritium. No, and Trotta got murdered, bro. 18%? This is hideous. Oh, they just murdered me. Mm. Root short? No, I'm long on root for the buyout deal. Oh, was that June 23rd? Yeah, CFO sold a fat stack a couple days ago on the 23rd. Asshole. Yeah, this was CFO selling off. That was part of it. And then I have one more update on it. Where'd it go? Mm -mm -mm. 
Oh, yeah, just insider transactions. Yeah, CFO sold on Entrada not too long ago, literally two days ago. Is MPW safe? I thought hospitals are being less used. Uh, it's as safe as a. Uh, it's as safe as it as a thirteen percent yielding stock could be, in the sense that there's definitely value in there, but there's a reason why it's trading so low. But I do have it in my long term. But yeah, and Trada, that was the CFO selling. That one's murdered, bro. That one's crazy. That's like a 20, 30% drop since we bought it. That's related to Sarepta. You think Root going to complete buyout? I think they might. I just, I think the people who want him, I think they're going to try to make another offer. And I think they really want him because that's a fat bid. It's a high bid. And they've been talking about it since July. So that's kind of where I believe with it. But it's been quiet. We haven't heard much, uh, much about it. I did not get Lucid already popped, and then 3M, that was the one I was waiting. That's the only play I have pretty much on deck now, but I'm waiting to take it. Uh, the Club Q Shooter pleads guilty. Yeah, three-month bid to cover 2.99, 5.18, at the high. Tesla 250 off the bottom. Nvidia is still holding the bank stress test. It could. I mean, Yellen was saying some weird comments on Friday, but if the bank stress test, depending on what they say, if it's bad, it could surprise things. But other than that, I don't know if people will react uh, because uh, the thing about the uh, stress test, in a weird way, they they might have lost some of their uh, effectiveness. In the sense that we, you know, people will respond to it and they're going to look at it. But quite frankly, I'm pretty sure there was a stress test right before SVB. <laughs> so it's just like the stress test doesn't even uh, it's do it doesn't even show you like what happens if there is a bank run or if deposits drop. They have a lot of scenarios, but uh, we'll we'll see how the market takes it. But if it doesn't kind of cover some of the recent things we've seen in the banking sector the market may not really react too much but what we're really looking for is a black swan on the stress test that's all it does yell you know yellen said a lot of stuff on friday talking about more mergers you have bank regulations coming in that's what they're all bringing up so does this stress test highlight something where people freak out in banks otherwise if it doesn't and it kind of pr produces like an all clear yeah, you will have people who are kind of going to doubt it and be like, well, the stress test couldn't even find SVB. So what's what's the point of reacting to it now? But we'll see what their scenario is, because usually if you're not familiar with the stress test, the Fed makes they make up like five different scenarios. They're like if unemployment went to nine percent, if real estate, if commercial real estate dropped 70 percent, what would happen if the stock market went down 40 percent? They like go over these weird scenarios to see how the banks would, would have respond in those instances. Uh, so we'll see. But definitely things have changed uh, ever since SVB. It's made public. Yeah, yeah, they go. Their Fed releases the document. It explains what the scenarios are, and they, they give just their analysis on what would happen and who they think is well capitalized, who's looking better, and if somebody would need, you know, if you pretty much if you fail the stress test, uh, this is where the bad news comes from because if you fail the stress test or they're worried about you, they may put requirements on you, capital requirements, uh, so that you can actually be able to meet their standard.
Mm. ACI Albertsons. Do you look at Hugh Hendry's tweet about the UK banks? The fact that every open the UK banks have sold off means something is coming. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the theme of uh, of last week. Now, I personally, I don't, I don't blame just the European bank stocks. ENFN, what's this? EN Vision. Whoa, 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 whoa! Check that ENFN. I think it's halted. That looks like a buyout, but I don't see anything. Let me see. Review for week. Pause due to volatility. Oh, they... Somebody uh, sold a stake in them this morning. FTV affiliate reports stake in Infusion. And then now pause due to volatility. Yeah, that's all I see there for now. So they, some, there's some headline on them. Somebody... uh reported a sale of the stake in infusion and then now they just got popped up and halted no news but pause due to volatility I'm reading proverbs finally and you're right about it all I should have done this it's a it's a great book on business my friend it's a great book on business they have takeover interest we'll keep a uh, keep an eye on that I'm gonna have that one up Dude, this is so dumb. I'm mad, bro. I had such a cool setup for you guys this morning. It just I need to I need to figure this out because I wanted to keep this up because I had another screen and I was I had it on the Twitch. I was gonna so pretty much I could even throw up companies and I could keep the live news feed for you so you could see what happens there if we're like kind of stalking a company. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it. But either way, watch out for that one. No news, no drop. Or just watch for the bonds too. Again, I think we're supposed to get ECB Lagarde. Is it Biden live in 10 minutes? A-R-E-S, Aris. Amazon's been holding all day. Again, SPY bounce into the first low of the day and kind of where we opened up at. D.O. Powell. Powell's on Wednesday. Again, nothing on infusion yet. The U.S. plans to announce as soon as Thursday Ukraine military package worth $500 million, including ground vehicles. Hmm. Raul Reload, we'll see. Calm, Calm Main Food. Remember we saw a lot of the food names sell off last week? There was that FDA stuff. Yeah, those are at the bottom. RDA. Spot on the high or spot on the low, excuse me. Yeah, Spotify is kind of dumping here. Okay, uh, watch ENFN. I'm going away from that one on the news. Uh, spy, price target maintained, nothing on Spotify. Yeah, Spotify selling off. Home Depot's climbing up. NEE. NTR, MOS. Is it Euro close yet? 
Oh, we already missed it. Ten minutes. It was right here, huh? Yeah, that, so that pop was Euro close. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. But Chattadonia! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've been here for two and a half hours. You got four and a half hours left to go. Sitting is the new smoking. I need you to get beside your desk and do 10 push ups. Can't do 10, you do 5. Can't do 5, you do 4. Can't do 4, you do 2. Can't do 2, you do 1. Can't do 1. Get her knees to a push up, plank the worm, anything. But get the body moving. Then optometrist recommendations. Stare at an object 10, 20, 30 feet away. Blink a few times. Go blink, 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 and chest to the sun, flex the core, tuck the hips in, legs in front of you, not wrapped behind your computer chair. You are not riding a dolphin. Come on, baby. Let's go. It's your fourth day of no smoking weed. Let's go. That's it. Fourth day of push-ups, I hope, too. Let's go. Legs in front of you, though. Come on. There it is. Infusion draws takeover interest from private equity firm. There it is. Oh. E-N-F-N. Envision, Envision. Mm -hmm. Oh, they've resumed trading too. So I don't know if we have any. Uh, I don't have any details on the prices right now. I'm waiting for that, but I don't see it. You got to be moving around here too. It's already up 17 percent. So remember all of the other buyout plays. There's a chance to flip it right now, but without any of the data, we need. Uh, we need. We need it actually. Like we actually need the data. So that's what I'm trying to look for here. So keep a lookout if any of the updates come by. What we're looking for is buyout price and how serious it is. Mm. Yeah, there's nothing on price yet. ENVN, I don't have anything, or ENFN. Again, takeover interest sources coming from Reuters, but we don't have anything on price, price or even who it is. Uh, watch for any sympathies, too, if there's anything related to ENFN. And then Raul's coming back. Spy's trying to catch a bid, but Spy, or Bond's trying to catch a bid. Spy's already coming back lower, 43.41. Previous low was 43.40 or 43.39. We technically... uh. I haven't even filled that gap yet either. Majority stake, not buyout. I don't have any update on it. So I'm waiting. I have it up here. We, again, right when it got unhalted, we heard that it's a rumor uh, that they want to sell something. But either way, we there's no other information uh, on it. So it's up 18% without knowing any of that. Advanced Micro Devices on track for its longest losing streak since September 2022. Really? And then Boston Properties is up over 7% for largest percent increase since November 2020. Visa is still dumping. There's MOS. Again, SPY still near the lows. It's trying to do the dance here. Yeah, Visa's down. Even PayPal's down. Square's coming down. MasterCard was killed off of it. Uber surprisingly held up. That's funny. Yeah, AMD. Ultra is climbing up here. That's funny. XLE, Energy, and XOM. And then CVS is on the high again. This could help lift up this SPY, though, if uh, Energy starts moving from here. But also watch the bonds, too. Yeah, Euro close was interesting. We did not really react too much. Is this continue? No, not really. The last two days we were doing that back and forth rotation. Today was kind of, I feel like everything's a mixed bag. You're not really watching the same like obvious 
rotational sectors right now. All right. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I love you. God bless you. Good morning. And I'll be right back. Your problems when First Republic, when Silicon Valley Bank, we know that First uh, PacWest was under some serious pressure in the market at that time, and they got a credit line at that time from an entity that had an affiliation with Apollo, that Atlas SP business that used to be part of Credit Suisse. So for them to be able to tap the private markets multiple times here, remember they sold another yeah. uh, pool of loans a little bit earlier as well. It shows that the capital markets are opening up in a more robust way, and private capital is here for loan packages of this size. You had an Aries executive tell Bloomberg, also, you have to do this by the billions. This cannot be done mm. in small scale. Uh, the question is, is how many of these deals are available in the market and at what price? Shinali, have they now done enough? You know, the question, Guy, is it depends on how long the strains on the banking system persists for. The good thing about this is that PacWest has said $2 billion of cash proceeds uh, had been generated from this deal alone. So it's a significant amount of cash. But with that said, beyond just PacWest, you have to think about kind of these prolonged strains on the banking system, this historically inverted yield curve for this long and what that means for the way banks make money in the future, any future deposit strain with interest rates at this level. So if you think about kind of the pressures on the banking system, we're looking at a really long road ahead. And it doesn't mean that all of these banks, particularly PacWest, it's not that it's in kind of crisis mode by mm -hmm. any means. But there are longer term strains that we need to keep looking out for. Yeah, and we've been talking to a, to a lot of guys in the private equity market guy who were like, yes, we're going to be looking through some of these assets yep. that the banks have to offload. That's where you're going to see uh, the good stuff, whether it's not necessarily distressed debt, but they, can, they need to offload it to free up cash. And we're going to be those guys. Yep, and it's going to be a big opportunity for us. And as Shinali says, the system is functioning. This is how the system right. is meant to function. Shinali, I've got a different question for you. Does David Solomon need more friends? <laughs> well, he's got a new one, doesn't he? So this is a pretty amazing scoop by my colleagues Sri Natarajan and Catherine Doherty, this idea that Tom Montag will be joining the board of Goldman Sachs. Remember, when Tom left Bank of America, there were a lot of questions about his leadership at Bank of America at that time, but he also did build Bank of America into this large, trading behemoth. He helped diversify Bank of America in a huge way. And so him joining the board of Goldman Sachs really is another vote of confidence in David Solomon at a time where there have been a lot of questions, a lot of press around how fractured is Goldman Sachs really with all of these kinds of press leaks and kind of a grumble. How fractured? How fractured are they really? Mm-mm-mm. Uh, do you guys want the, I have it, I have the Tesla analyst thing. Mm -mm -mm. I have the Tesla downgrade from this morning. I don't know if you guys want it. It's from Goldman Sachs. This is what they look like too. You want me to run it? How many likes you got? 1,100? That's not bad. Honestly, that's not bad. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not bad. Uh, honestly, I, I I don't know why I was expecting less. I'll take it. That's beautiful. Wow. God bless you. I would offer you a, a news wire, but it's it's a little ghetto today. So this is what they look like. If you guys ever wondered what they look like, we've showed them here before. So I'm not supposed to show you these, but now that I'm not tied to anybody and I was able to access it without it, I can show you. Uh, <laughs> so Tesla down to neutral with stocks now better reflecting our positive long-term view. So he said, we're downgrading Tesla to neutral from buy as we believe this stock now better reflects our positive long-term view of the company's growth potential and competitive positioning of the substantial move higher up 108% year-to-date versus the S&P up 13% in the last month. While the primary reason for the change in our view is that we think the market is now giving the stock more credit for the difficult uh, credit for the longer term. We are also cognizant, cognizant of the difficult pricing environment for new vehicles, and we think it will continue to weigh on Tesla's automotive non-gap gross margins this year. We attribute the recent move higher in Tesla shares, which significantly exceeded our expectation for the combination of factors of one, relatively solid uh, monthly sales in April and May, less price declines discounting from Tesla in second quarter than investors and we had expected, and then incremental IRA credits from the real wheel drive Model 3, and several companies now planning to use Tesla's charging network in North America we think will help Tesla build a small business 
a small but growing new charging business, drive awareness of Tesla products, and help Tesla NACS connectors to be a large part of the market, all else equal. And then they have their new vehicle pricing trend should positively impact to the intermediate near-term earnings. And then, yeah, they give all these breakdowns. I'm not going to read it all. Mm. And then little bounce here. Bonds are still high. I guess the market was here last time they were there too. My rental property just flooded with sewage water. Any steps to move forward? Oh, yeah, it's going to be awful. Uh, it'll be annoying. Start documenting things. Contact uh, even uh, insurance or maybe even wait a little bit once you see the full scope of everything. Uh, get people out there, but you just, just get to clean up documentation. I mean, problems happen, but uh, you should be insured, hopefully. Uh, and then even then, go get insurance now if you don't. <laughs> so you have to talk. You could talk to maybe your advisor for your home insurance plan. Uh, but like I've talked about, a lot of people don't know this, but you can buy home insurance even after an event happens. So they let you kind of do that. So just make sure you have insurance. If you don't, go and get it. Go get flood insurance if it's not already on there or whatever. Sometimes it might not even be des described as a flood, actually. Uh, you could thank MPW for that, believe it or not. There's like a huge uh, uh, court case. Uh, it was filed by MPW because MPW sued one of their insurance property uh, providers a while ago because how you define a flood, uh, there's there's many definitions to it, whether it's water that's standing or water that, that actually floods from like a bank or something like that. So either way, just document it. Make sure you're properly insured. Uh, and if not, make sure, see if you could backdate your insurance. Again, legally, they should allow you to, uh, but look into that. Well, yeah, some places they won't, like Florida, like with weather events, they won't like for, they won't let you backdate that. You see what I'm saying? So like a hurricane, a fire, a earthquake, natural disasters, you can't backdate your home insurance. You know what I'm saying? You can't be like, oh, my house burned down. Let me get fire insurance. Oh, my house flooded. Let me let me get flood insurance after the giant hurricane. No. But like let's say let's say you burned your own house down not due to a, a, a thing. Some insurance providers may let you let, let you add the coverage. So it just kind of kind of depends in that sense or like we're saying you had damage to the property that would be covered by insurance that's not a natural disaster, you would be able to add your you should be able to add your insurance po policy, but like I say just double check. Amazon Web Services plans to invest 7.8 billion in Ohio. Mm. Not with car insurance. Car insurance you can't do that. Car insurance you get in an accident you're screwed. Home insurance, that's why I always bring it up to people because it's, it's kind of surprising. You'd be like, oh, I didn't know it worked like that. Mm, new U.S. security package worth up to $500 million. Amazon's still down. So is Google. Tesla's at the bottom. Uber, yeah. We already looked over uh, for the covered calls. So even if we, uh, even if Uber goes past our covered calls, we have a lot of time on them and all of the other Uber options are worth more. So like our, right now these contracts are worth $4 a pop. We sold them for two forty. but if we want to keep the play alive with the same amount of money, we just got to get back four fifty a contract for higher than $47. And sure enough, we could we could get six dollars for fifty fives. So we could get more premium and unlock another uh what, like ten dollars off of our play just by rolling over. So I'd wait. I'd just wait, but don't even trip on it. target pop what if you get exercised uh then it's fine but you shouldn't usually like the stock doesn't pay a dividend and there's like half a year of time so if you remember the snap covered call i was like 30 dollars in the money on the covered call, meaning I was down on it. 
uh, but I never got exercised. And then I rolled over, and then we eventually got all that money back. NVIDIA is flushing. Literally, NVIDIA is dominating the low ticker right now. EL, Estee Lauder on the high. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, EO's popping. That one's a weird one. NVIDIA's selling off. Ulta, Walgreens, Home Depot. A lot of consumer names uh, are actually running up right now. Yeah, NVIDIA's dying. Like, low-key, it just had a... That was like $2. And then it's about to go below 400 That's crazy. Fox News names Jesse Waters to succeed Tucker Carlson. Vertex price target raised 379. Dude, a lot of analyst activity today. A CEO talking for Nvidia. I'm not too sure. We were we got the thing last week. Remember the event, but I did not know if there was anything scheduled for now. Crisp on the high. Uh Disney is. Disney's trying to get up to $89. MO's going. Go green on pace for largest percent decrease since June 2020. You think Disney will keep going woke? Uh, to a degree, I just, I think all of these legacy companies, I think they will pivot in whichever direction society will allow them to, if that makes sense. But I, I do believe in Disney's dominance and I do think they will probably pivot with whatever is popular. Abbott ready to go. Yeah, they're actually up a lot. CVX and oil again. And then Spy is a little bit higher. Bonds are now... A little lower from earlier. So last time the bonds did drop. I mean, that's what allowed you to get that other VWAP run up. The one besides the one in the morning. Uh, Russian troubles could still impact energy markets. Update. Where is oil? And then 4347. Uh, oil still below 70. That's actually crazy. Honestly, that's shocking, though. You guys don't think that's crazy, that oil, even with all of those headlines over the weekend, you're trading sub-70, like, it's it's at the lows. That's wild. Oil is still kind of beaten. It's been beaten with a stick, and then Estee Lauder keeps coming up. Energy is still running. UK launching universal basic income. No, I'll see. I I want to say I've I've heard a lot of things out of Europe, but I don't think I've gotten that one. Qualcomm on the high. Mm -hmm. There's Nivda. Being low makes sense with demand destruction, but it hasn't really been destroyed. And then kind of even looking ahead. That's kind of been that's been the paradox with oil prices. And then uh, your number one favorite question: If oil's cheap, why is my gas so high? Bruh. Aston Martin will hit two billion revenue, five hundred million EBITDA targets. Chairman, this good. This good for Lucid, huh? Lucid now owns some, no? Okay. You tag me on the UK tweet. Let's see what we got. Mm. I don't see it. I don't see your Twitter tag of it. But yeah, I'll look into it. I would, I'd, be, I'd be more concerned with Europe, though, just if their inflation goes higher and if economic data turns down.
Boil meds coming down. Uh, oil keeps coming up. XOM. And then Walgreens now, too. So Walgreens is waking up again. They have earnings tomorrow, I believe. Oxy. They're all, all, all energy. High ticker. Duke Energy. XOM. Oxy. CVE. It's just a lot of energy on the high ticker right there. Even that gas is up. Uh, banks are trying to go into video with another sell. Walgreens with another high. And SPY right below VWAP. Banks are surprisingly coming up. Uh, Procter Gamble, another one of those consumer stocks. They're coming back up. Sound below. Remember, sound does that every single time it gets above four. That's why we were saying even the premiums are kind of like whack. And then Spy is back to break even here. Dow Jones is barely green, and then NASDAQ is down a quarter. Mm -hmm. We did do our push-ups. Yeah, actually, we did. We were ready to go. We had a lot of even something happened at push-up time, too. Tesla is it it's Tesla and Nvidia are going hand in hand yeah that's it now Tesla's dying bro Tesla's like 20 bucks I feel like from the morning yeah 250 odd ten dollars not bad not bad and then bonds are actually coming down though so in a weird in a weird way this is kind of good we're gonna see but so far, I mean, even NASDAQ is outperforming the bonds to the opposite side. NVIDIA and Tesla both flushing right now. Again, those have been affecting the the NASDAQ more than anything, I feel like. I'd wait till Apple and Amazon. Those are your final two green names. And then energy is going to pull up while those two big tech names pull down. And then we see... Rahul... Fight for it. BT, BT. Oh, and what was that other one today? What was that biotech? The multiple sclerosis one? Again, I got out of Catalan. That one's holding. It was like CBTX or something. And then ENFN, that buyout rumor thing was holding still. BNTC, thank you. Uh, that one's still chilling. We saw it at like 70%. Still holding though. Kramer says no on Snapchat. Is that why it's up? I think you guys brought that up. It's actually above earnings now, which is crazy. Meta, UI. Man, Roblo still. It's so weird what's holding up here today though. I don't know if someone said Biden was going to be live, but I don't think we were like waiting for it. Uh, uh, uh. Kamala and Biden deliver internet for all. Oh, they turn it up. Yeah, so should be getting started. Spy dump a little bit. It's still just kind of all no new lows on the bonds, no new highs. Same thing with the spy. Equities do look a little bit more sensitive than bonds today, but still. Mm. 
All right, you're starting to go down a little harder now. Be on the lookout. You're only down point one on the S and P. That's the crazy. Is this like now what? Is this like our sixth down day in a row after hitting seven up days in a row or whatever it was? Mm. Nvidia keeps flushing. Tesla not as bad, but Nvidia is pretty bad. And now Microsoft is starting to play along. They're down one point four. Google's down two. Amazon is now in the red. They were one of the only ones that were green. I think Apple has to be red now too. Yeah. So that's it. Every single big tech has now gone red there in the candle. And Biden is now approaching. Oh, this audio sounds awful. Indeed. Indeed. They're loving this. Good morning, everyone. Please have a seat. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so I am going to start by saying that um, we are so thankful to all of the leaders who are here for the work that has occurred and will continue to be done to do what is right on behalf of the American people and working people in our country. I want to thank our President Joe Biden, a true champion it, for the working people and families Amazon flushing now. And Qualcomm a too, spy. <laughs> Everything died. For affordable and accessible high-speed internet. Not just for some, but for all. I want to thank the members of the cabinet who are here and members of Congress, as well as the advocates and community leaders who have fought for years to connect every corner of America with high-speed internet. It is good to be here with all of you. So I will begin with a brief story. Last year, I visited a small town in Louisiana. New low now. Sunset, Mitch. A rural community of about 3,000 people outside of Lafayette. 4337, you've already the closed the gap. 432025 now, 4325. Sunset is like or four, three, two, many one. small towns in America. It has a main street with a bank, a church, and a donut shop. <laughs> with a bank that we bailed out. And Sunset is similar to many Microsoft, NVIDIA, dude, that's it. They're all reason. dying. Almost 40% of uh, LMT is not on the high. Some consumer stocks still hold in. Internet. In large part, because the fiber optic lines that connect most Americans to the internet just never made it to Sunset. But here's what that means. In Sunset, I met with parents who cannot apply for remote work jobs because they do not have a high-speed internet connection at home. In Sunset, I met with entrepreneurs who struggle to start or grow a small business because they cannot get online. And I met with students who, when public buildings were closed during the pandemic, had to sit in the parking lot of a local library just to submit their homework over Wi-Fi. And these stories are not uncommon. Today, 24 million people yeah, and in four, our three, country two, two, five. Do not have access to down, even since the Aston Martin, Martin uh, either guidance. Either because they cannot afford the monthly cost of a plan, or because they live in communities that have not yet been fully connected to fiber optic networks. But let us agree. Hey, eyes on the in low, the flushing. In the 21st century in America, high-speed internet is not a luxury. It is a necessity. Every person in our nation, no matter where they live, should be able to access and afford high-speed internet. And that is why our administration invested $65 billion to give millions of families a $30 discount on their monthly internet bills and to lay thousands of miles of new fiber optic lines, including in Sunset, where with the support of local leaders and elected officials, we are connecting 22,000 families with high-speed internet. Today, we are here to continue our work together to connect every person in America with high-speed internet. And now, it is my honor to introduce a leader who understands firsthand the urgency and the impact of this work. An incredible leader, an incredible dad to his three daughters, Jeff Say.
Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm Jeff Say. I work at UVA Health Culpeper Medical Center. I'm married to Sarah, a kindergarten teacher, and we have three children. I, like millions of other Americans, face an all too common issue, lack of reliable high-speed internet. Two years ago, my family and I purchased our home in Boston, Virginia, in Culpeper County, just an hour and a half southwest of Washington, DC. The house had everything we wanted, enough space for our three girls to run and play, beautiful views, and wonderful neighbors. We were told we would have Yo, meta in the video internet. now. But the day we moved in, our ordeal began. As service providers told us we would have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to run a line. No, meta is getting house. murdered. Their service. That's kind of new right there. Down the road. That's literally five bucks on what Meta in five up minutes. With was a hot spot that's spotty at best, and an ongoing struggle to work our schedule around the lack of connectivity. We have to drive our children into my work, to my wife's school, or to our county library to finish projects or homework assignments. Every aspect of our daily life has been So watch now out, you're trying to balance them here. Bonds ain't doing anything, but access, it's a lot education, of pressure there. Disney's health, still going up. Commerce and entertainment. We are not alone. We and energy's still while Culver rocking County, up here. There are 4,300 unserved homes when it comes to high-speed internet access. Yeah, Lucy just Factually, gave up like 10%. Our county has started a or broadband 6%. initiative to serve the underserved. No NVIDIA, but AMD's having a bad day too. But I know it's on the way thanks to folks here today. The reality is that reliable, affordable, high-speed internet is a utility, <laughs> not a luxury. So we're, today we're over I'm here, like worried here about interest rates. My story. You're like, yeah, the, inter the internet. You need you. You don't want to be in a McDonald's parking lot. And into Does anybody the want bets? First century. How much? Are we going to hear about McDonald's parking lot Wi-Fi? Welcome a person who anybody has over under a priority. I'm down to take bets. Prove the down to take of bets. Life of all of our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, the president look at of the United States <laughs> of America, Joe Biden. Yeah, come on, clap louder. What's up? It's your fucking boy. What's up? What's going on? What's up? Ask about me. Build back better, bitch. <laughs> Let's go. We're going we're, we're to do some big things here. Amen. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please. Thank you. Although I like the fact Joe Manchin's standing all this time. <laughs> He's a friend. Hi, Jojo. How are you, pal? <laughs> Before I begin, uh, <laughs> let me say a few words about the events in Russia. I'm just laughing for my own laugh. This analogy. Is, that's an uncle joke. <clears throat> the, uh, the situation began to develop as it did. I directed my national security team to monitor closely and report to me hour by hour. I instructed them to prepare for a range of scenarios. I also convened our key allies on a, on a Zoom call to make sure we're all on the same page. It's critical that- Again, big tech is selling off, but some of the value plays are still holding. So XLV, we agree, XLF we not dying. Make sure we gave Putin this is no all just excuse. tech dropping. And then energies, until no energy excuse. drops, I think we're good, but notice the market here, but your NATO. big names are still selling. We made clear that we yeah. were not involved. We had nothing to do with it. This was part of a struggle within the Russian system. I also talked at length with President Zelensky of Ukraine. I'll be keeping in contact with him. I may be peeking him later today, early tomorrow morning, to make sure we continue to remain on the same page. I told him that no matter what happened in Russia, let me say it again, no matter what happened in Russia, we, the United States, would continue to support Ukraine's defense and its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. He and I agreed to follow up and stay in constant contact. I'm also in constant contact with our allies to maintain our coordination. I'll be speaking with the head of state right after this meeting today and uh, making sure we're on the same page. I didn't get a chance to speak with one head. He's of addressing state. the Russia stuff because it's big what happened. Because this, this is clearly, yeah, it's clearly, clearly not Ukraine about internet. Russia and Ukraine. But it's still too early to reach a definitive conclusion about where this is going. The ultimate outcome of all this remains to be seen. But no matter what comes next, 
I will keep making sure that our allies and our partners are closely aligned in how we are reading and responding to the situation. It's important we stay completely coordinated. And now I'd like to turn to today's announcement, begin by asking a question. Did you lay all that cable? <laughs> She's a wonder woman. I was watching in the other room, but I didn't realize, I didn't bring along all the cable, I, you know, and empty spools. <laughs> You're incredible, thank you. Look, um, I want to thank you, Jeff, for uh, taking the time, and thank you for the introduction. There you are. And I want to thank Kamala, who's there for every single important thing we do, and I'm not sure how we do it without her. Two years ago, I asked her to lead an effort on high-speed internet, and she's been doing an incredible job since then. So is Gina, Gina Raimondo, our Commerce Secretary. And Shalanda Young, who's a jack-of-all-trades sitting here at our Office of Management Budgets, played a major role, along with Mitch, Ron Mitch Landrieu, and our, on our, our infrastructure coordinator. And I want to thank, and I mean it sincerely, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who's here with us today as well. And thank you to the leaders of state and local governments, labor unions, tribal organizations, and telecom companies. Folks, we're, uh, we're talking today about a major investment that we're making in affordable, high-speed internet all across the country. As we started down, I turned to Jeff, I said, you know, this may be, I wonder if President Roosevelt felt a little like this as he talked about the electrification mm -hmm. of our farmlands. I mean, think about it. It's, this, it's almost similar. The, uh, but to put in context, so you're bouncing you there, bonds ain't moving. Where we were two and a half years ago. I wonder if he's going to say anything the related to raging, something new. The economy was reeling, and the problems we're facing started a lot earlier than that. For decades, for decades, and the middle class was hollowed out. Too many good paying manufacturing jobs moved overseas. Public investment was slashed. Core sources Again, this, I, I'm, I'm arguing this is all health care and uh, energy right now. That's it. Or you're just not getting any death out of the tech. Of economic policy of so that last 20 minutes there was a lot of that NVIDIA Tesla sell-off well. and Apple and Amazon and all that. that. We should give tax cuts to the very wealthy and big corporations and expect it to trickle down to everyone else, benefit across the board. I ran for president with a fundamentally different vision, to build the economy from the middle out and the bottom up instead of the top down, to grow the economy by educating and empowering workers by promoting competition to support small businesses and investing in ourselves again for the first time in a long time. And that's what today's announcement is all about. You know, uh, what we're doing is, as I said, not unlike what Franklin Delano Roosevelt Yeah, China's is, closed. They're decent. We're going to see. But China names here are doing decent. Today, Kamala and I, I are think making it's still an green. historic investment to connect everyone in America, everyone in America to high-speed internet by an affordable high-speed internet by 2030. It's the biggest investment in high-speed internet ever. Because for today's economy to work for everyone, internet access is just as important as electricity was, or water, or other basic services. Think of the parents and students sitting outside of McDonald's or outside your office be able to get on the internet in a parking lot just so the child can go online and do their homework. Hmm. Just heard from Jeff, who there it is. has uh, drive his kids all over town. There it is. <laughs> connection. See, if you took the under, you lost. Of if you took the over, you've been, you know your politics. We're not able to reach more customers. We're seniors unable to talk to their doctor through telemedicine. For around 24 million Americans across this country, there's no high-speed internet. Hey, I still, 3.9, even the market's coming down. Watch energy and healthcare, and then watch NVIDIA Tesla. Anymore. It's become an absolute necessity. That's why we acted as soon as we did, as soon as we came to office with the American Rescue Plan. It included $25 billion, $25 billion for high-speed internet in places where it was out of reach for schools and libraries to help students connect to the internet if they couldn't do it at home. After that, we signed the bipartisan infrastructure law, a once-in-a-generation investment to rebuild roads, bridges, ports, airports, and deliver water and high-speed internet to every American. And again, Joe, thank you for your help on that. Yeah, bro, this Today, is just tech going down. Projects That's it. Tech is the thing drawing it down. You, there's at least four or five industries even running into highs right here. This includes hundreds of high-speed internet projects in rural and tribal communities. But... But, 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 it's not enough but. to have access. You need affordability in addition to access. 
That's why we worked with the internet service providers to bring down prices for Americans. Even utilities now in the green? With internet payments. It's called the Affordable Connectivity Program. It's helping 19 million families save around $30 a month on their internet bills, and some save a lot more. These savings matter in homes like the one I grew up in. That's money you can go for groceries, for the electric bill, for other things, other necessities. Kamala has traveled across the country working with state and local officials to make sure people know about this program. And several groups and companies here today have helped millions of Americans sign up through the Online for All campaign. Online for All campaign. Now we're working with Congress to extend the bipart this bipartisan program. For folks looking for an affordable internet ban plan, just go to getinternet.gov. Getinternet.gov. And today, we take another big step toward Internet for All. We're announcing over $40 billion to be distributed to 50 states, Washington, D.C., and territories to deliver high-speed Internet in places where there's neither service or it's too slow. And folks, and it includes rural communities like Appalachia, towns that Joe represents. It includes tribal lands from Alaska to the Dakotas, coastal towns from Hawaii to the Pacific Northwest. It also includes suburban communities, even cities, neighborhoods, and uh, where there's a lot of feeding you think is automatic. For some still have to use dial-up connections to get online. The funding for each state and territory is based on their specific needs. Tight, dude. More XLP is on the high now. So XLP access, went red to green. Staples are starting to lead here. Access. Again, XLV, XLP, XLF, and then uh, to XLE Energy. To reliable, high-speed internet by 2030. I promise to be a president for all Americans, whether or not they mean vote for me or whether or not they voted for these laws. These investments will help all Americans. We're not going to leave anyone behind. Don't just take it from me. I've got letters and emails from across the country from people who are thrilled that after so many years of waiting, they're finally going to get high-speed internet. A woman named Beth wrote me from Iowa. She lives in a valley that's a dead zone to cell, to cell reception. She's also gotten internet by a satellite, which goes out when the rain or snows. She can't get emergency alerts. Even good weather is spotty. Then last year, a local telecom company with just 13 employees sent Beth the postcard. They had received funding from the American Rescue Plan. Now they were installing fiber optic cable for homes like hers in the valley. And here's what she wrote to me, and I quote, you can imagine my joy she called them right away, and the next day they sent someone out to survey her yard. As Beth wrote, this is the best thing that's happened to rural America since the Rural Electrification Act brought electricity to farms in the 30s and 40s. End of quote. Folks, well, Beth clearly ain't get Amazon. I know you need the internet for Amazon, Beth, but Beth, have you tried Apple? Plus, this investment means something Beth. else as well. Good paying jobs. Good paying I jobs. I guess. Yeah. Just ask the folks at the IBW, or the communication workers, or the laborers union. They're putting thousands of people to work laying fiber optic cable across America. And the cable will be made in America. Let me say that again. The cable is going to be made in America. Also Google's on the low. Manufacturing job. Again, you're getting these little like drop in Folks, pops. It's either tech is still line. dying, in America, all the other industries are, are trying to lift. More than 13 UPS million high. jobs created since I took office, nearly 800,000 manufacturing jobs. As a lot of folks have tired of hearing me saying, where in God's name is it written that we can't be the leading manufacturer in the world again? Where is that written? You know, since I've been in office, we've attracted $490 billion. $490 billion in private investment in new manufacturing, like semiconductors, electric vehicles, batteries, fiber optic cable, and we're talking that we're talking about here today. More people are starting small business than ever, and everyone who applies for ball, small business lines is a sign of hope. Dude, more All energy told, still. This is a strong Again, CSX is now really running. Anywhere in the world. In the world. Jobs are back.
manufacturing back. In many places that have been left behind, pride is coming back as well. You know, a lot of us lived in communities where they had thriving manufacturing bases. And that's seeking cheaper jobs and moved overseas. Not only did you lose the jobs, but guess what happened? You lost pride in that neighborhood. That neighborhood that you came from. Everybody knew they worked at the steel mill. They worked there. They worked whatever it was. In my case, it was coal mines and then, then steel. And folks, let me close with this. Connecting everyone to America, in America, to affordable, reliable, high-speed internet. It's a bold goal, but we're a great nation, especially one as vast and geographically diverse as ours. It's even bolder. You know, we are all well on our way. We're just going to have to keep it going. And as, as was mentioned earlier, just remember, it's never been a good idea to bet against America. And let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America. There's nothing beyond our capacity. God bless you all. And may God protect our truth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come Wait, what? What did he say at the end? <laughs> what? Hold on, what did he end it with? Goal, but we're a great nation. Especially on our way. God bless you all. And may God protect our truth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Coming. What what is it? Come on, coming. God bless you all. Okay. And may God protect our truth. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Tommy. Tommy, yeah. Who the fuck is Tommy? <laughs> all right, so, so I mean the caption said Tommy. They said Tommy, I heard Cummins, like the engine. Uh oh, thank you for coming. Ah, uh, maybe that's what it is. Thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah. Or he's saying like we're coming. <laughs> I don't know how dude I don't know what it was I was I was like wait wait it sounded like he was he sounded like little Wayne like throwing up an ad lib that's why I was like wait what did you just say he said Tommy Tommy or something something I don't know I just heard it. that was great that's great internet for all Eagle Eye said he just got approved so you could do was it some was it internet access for all dot dot gov dot org so that was a no no specific company announces anything Mm -mm -mm. Oh, here it is. Big Mike, baby. Well, life came full circle, Josh. He hopped into real estate with UWMC IPO. Tomorrow, UWM's flying me out first class to Michigan. Michigan, Michigan. Let's go, baby. Real estate changed my life. Maybe it will change someone else's in here. We've been telling them, baby. Oh, no. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's hype, baby. What's up? What's up? We going we gonna to have preferred lender? Big Mike with UWM. Uh-huh. Is that what we got, baby? I know Big Mike been killing it out there, Kansas City. And you know Kansas City is, I believe, two out of the ten top places where millennials are going for affordable houses. Two places in at least Oklahoma, I guess, or Kansas City. They have been up on there. But KCMO is going crazy right now for real estate as well, too. Especially on this second half comeback. KCMO. Meta. Yeah, Meta got murdered there on that second half. Again, I was saying it during the Biden speech. If you haven't noticed, like, legitimately, XLK technology is just dumping. Meanwhile, energy, healthcare, financials, and a couple of others are either holding up or like climbing up. So realistically, this is just a lot of pressure on tech. It could be a lot worse. The Dow's actually green, but then uh, you see the tech weakness reflected on the NASDAQ 0.8. But the last couple of days, we've had bigger days. I mean, I, I want to say, uh, what, a couple days ago, the like maybe middle of like last Wednesday, we were down like 1.5% on the NASDAQ and it didn't feel the same way. And yeah, you will be getting a, a very good comment there, rebalancing, because it is, it's the end of the month. This is the final week and then it's the it's also the end of the next six months too. Mm -mm -mm. Real estate will cause 
of the next Civil War, too much gap creation. Uh, I see what you're getting at, but no. Uh, over 64% of Americans own property. So looking at the home ownership rate, it's not like it's even a... Uh, it's not even 50-50. So even if you wanted a civil war, right? Like a majority of Americans own property, believe it or not. And then that's not to mention anything else beyond that. But I think in other ways, uh, I mean, wealth gaps are not are not good. But I don't think real estate is going to be uh, as politically active as some other things. I'd, I'd probably blame like Russia or other stuff <laughs> that would cause a war or civil war. Mm -mm. You were in Bentonville, Arkansas. That's an upcoming hipster hiker spot. And get an Airbnb. That's it. Follow the hipsters and buy Airbnbs, bro. It's game changing. We're not really rotating into value today because we do see the value names are up, but it's different than what we saw uh, the other day. So it's like you still you don't have the same. It's not like like utilities and industrials are going up, but then like industrials are I guess they're they're kind of holding up. It just feels more it feels more like you've taken hits on other stuff, too. So pretty much it is a rotation, but some names that could have been or industries that could have been rotated into they didn't they kind of sold off a little today, too. Fill the 430 gap uh, to the low. Yeah, I think, dude, I think we could move 200 points up or down without like anything happening. Like maybe you can move 100, you can move 150 points, 170 points higher. And we'll, we will just feel just as bullish as we were last week, two weeks ago. And then if we go down 200 points, uh, we would feel just as bullish or bearish as we did again or you'd still even be kind of bullish in a weird way but you'd still be at the highs you would still be at a highly elevated level even compared to last year so yeah i think i think anything can happen and 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 then it doesn't really hold that much weight which i which i think is good you know what i'm saying i really really think it is mm. Supreme Court rebuffs Apple and billion dollar Caltech patent case. Oh, that's old. That's related to the Broadcom thing. Disney down. Hop about the bay, turn my swag up. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Amen. All right. What time is it? 9.30? So 30 minutes till 10 o'clock? Oh, man. Chat, we still got a long, long time ahead. You spent the first half of the day going down, but... Ladies and gentlemen, as we go lower, I hope you know we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open, okay? So drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed, but we've been here for three hours. We have three and a half hours left to go. Sitting is the new smoking. I need you to get beside your desk and do 10 push-ups. If you can't do 10, you do 5. Can't do 5, you do 4. Can't do 4, you do 2. Can't do 2, you do 1. Can't do 1. Get her knees. Do a push-up, plank the worm, anything. But get the body moving. Then optometrist recommendation, stare at an object 10, 20, 30 feet away. Blink a few times. Go blink, 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 blink Bling 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 Oh just like that. Just like that. Wow. Relax the eyeballs, chest to the sun, flex the core, tuck the hips in and boom, baby, you look good. You look better than the S P. Is it time to hedge? I don't know. That's a question. Calm down, you psycho. It's a question. Calm down. Shh. All I'm saying is you look good. You look better than the market. You look bad. Look at you with your posture. Looking all tall and sh Look at you, man. Look at you. I don't need a coffee. When I'm, I mean, I'm looking at you with your chest to the sun. You don't look good, but the other people with their chest to the sun. I'm just saying chest to the sun. It looked beautiful right there. Wow, you look... Oof. I'm sorry. I don't want to make it weird. Anyways, 
uh, legs in front of you, not right behind your computer chair. You were not riding a dolphin, okay? And then relax, they jog. <laughs> Breathe in really deep, go. Breathe out with your tongue out, do the dragon breath, go. Ah, oh, feels good. That feels good. You feel relaxed? There you go. It's time to hedge. Well, is it? It's a question. It's the that is the question that's driving the next potential narrative. It's either going to be history, history or hedges, is the simple way to put it. But we'll find out. Hmm. You clap with me? Amen. Amen. Got to bring the vibes. Got to bring the vibes. more Fati. Mm -mm. Oh, no. We already got that. Dirt Dale buys 275 a Banquel. Nothing. Was I in Vix calls and FOMO is strong? What should I do? Um, wait until Powell or maybe wait until a couple of the earnings here. I don't know. I just think it's going to be, uh, I, I don't, I think we can move a lot, but I don't think the big move like changes the whole course of everything. But I, you know what? I hope I'm wrong because last time I really thought the market wasn't going to like move. We went up like 300 points. So maybe I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> but the way I'm looking at it right now is I just, I don't think this is a make or break week unless there is like a decisive shift coming into the next half of the year, whether it's like an actual shift for the next half of the year or a change in Powell's policy or a big, big shift from the, the stress test. We have opportunities to, we have opportunities and data events that could really move us this week. But overall, I'm, I'm just not really thinking I think we were going to go up or down a couple hundred points maybe, but I, I just don't think it will change the course or momentum of anything. And no, I did not sell the supercar yet. I've kind of been liking it. I hated it at first, and I'm like slowly liking it. The uh, The car market's heating up. I got I to gotta offer. My offers have gone up for the car like $20,000 now. So it's crazy. I told you, like, dude, three weeks ago, I would have sold it to the Chads for like the same price I paid for it. I said, just give me like even like 10K and go flip it. And then now the cheapest offer I got is like 30, 40,000 higher than what I paid. So, cause I, I was saying, I thought the Chads could flip it for that much. I was like, or if anybody wanted, I, I wanted to try to do a quick flip off of it, but now it's starting to hit. The car market's heating up again. Shout out to everyone being psycho. I'm interning at CarMax. Oh, that sounds pretty fun. That sounds. I want to. I want to see how that works. You're gonna learn the tricks of the trade. <clears throat> my motorcycle held value. Trying to get rid of it while the market's hot. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Motorcycles are scary, dog. I like motorcycles a lot. I think they're really cool, and I love it. But then, like. I just, they're so dangerous. Just so be careful out there. Mm -hmm. The car, I haven't talked about it yet. Yeah, I still, you guys keep asking. I haven't, I haven't posted an Instagram picture. I haven't told you, you know, the moral of the story is just Josh is getting old. You know, I buy supercars now and I, I don't even put them on the internet. That's how you know I've just, I've reached that point in my life, man, where I'm a boomer. So, you know. I wish I'm sorry. Maybe I'll send you guys like a postcard or something. That's what old people do. But that's that's it. We're just, I'm old. Sorry, guys. Trying to forgive student loans. The millennial boomer. 
wife puts motorcyclists back together after they crash. I'm not allowed to own one. Jeez. Yeah, man. Cues are on the high right now. Apple dumping. Microsoft is all tech. Your everything else is still holding. Again, anything that was catching the balance. Actually, financials and healthcare kind of slipping now. So that's where the we really get pressure. I feel like you're mocking the real boomers. Well, I think it's just me saying that I'm definitely feeling older and my behavior is changing. Uh, and that's kind of just word to the younger people who think I'm extremely old and call me a boomer because of some other of my life decisions. So I don't know if I'm a real boomer. I would like to be, but uh, I guess it's just, you know, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm on my way. Google, Tesla, XLC. What was that? Is that consumers? Yeah, commun or no, communications getting murdered. Google and Meta. All right. Did you hit? I think you wicked into the low two times or like two minutes. No, is that candle 4334? Again, 4325 is the next level. And then Google again getting murdered. Microsoft now. Is Tesla still dead? They stopped dying as much, but now the other stuff's going. Again, Apple is just hitting a low too. I'm a real boomer. I do not take Josh's boomer commentary offensive. In fact, he makes sense. Honestly, I love you. God bless you. I feel like I have a boomer card. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like the boomers accept me. That's it. Yeah, yeah you're a young kid. You you sound you like dividends, Josh. I like this guy. Yeah, no, he's a good, he's a smart kid. He got a good guy. He has a good head on his shoulders. Yeah, no, let him. We'll let him in our group. Yeah, that's fine. We'll let him. Let him. Let him be. He, he pays attention. I like. I like him. Yeah, his parents beat him too. I like. He, he knows. He knows about. It. He can take a punch. I like this kid. Yeah. So I feel like I got the seal of approval from from the boomers, which is cool. I'm down with it. Apple, again, is starting to dump here a little harder. Spy just wicked into another low. Bonds are moving up once again. So 4332, you're like six points away from it now. NEM high. See what happens. This is either this is either going to turn into a dancing queen flush, or we get one of those quick pops again. But like we said, bonds bonds are making some lack of movement, and then Apple is now really starting to pick up, and then so is TSM. TSN is on the high. Overstock, they're on the low. Coinbase even came down a little bit, and then Microsoft was flushing. Alongside everything else, XL use up. NVIDIA is about to go below 400. Tesla stopped dying, but see if they end up going too. Theo mm. Vaughn in Vegas Friday night. Wait, isn't that when uh, Elon and them are supposed to fight too? I'm down. I don't know. I want to try something. And my and my girl said she's down with it. I want to try. I want to try to go to Vegas at nighttime. And then I want to just fly home in the morning. So I just want to go. So if it, if it is on Friday, like, so if, I don't know. Like, my I want to see if I can pull it off where literally I just land at, like, nighttime and then by like 7 a.m. I just go back home. Yeah, because I can't Vegas. I just I can't stand it that long. That's what I'm doing. Oh, you dirty dog. That's genius. Still, even driving's not bad. If you fly, though, it just it makes it. But even then, the airport takes you like a damn hour and a half. Elon's mom called it off. Boo. Nah, then I can't go. I said I'd, I was down to go to Vegas. If Elon and them were fighting, I would have totally pulled up. 
All right, again, some some action here off the bottom. Again, watch for the dancing dancing queen or the quick rip. But like honestly, still kind of early. You know, it's like fifteen minutes till we get to uh, uh, like what's it called? Fifteen minutes till we even get till ten. Still a lot of time. It's on, but you don't put something like that together in a week. I feel like if they wanted to. Lagarde in 45 minutes. What sector is doing good? Industrials, energy, materials, real estate. Uh, financials kind of in a weird way, actually. They're red. Half are up, half are down. Uh, then tech is bad. Communications are awful. And then even discretionaries, like it's green, but Tesla and Amazon are bringing down discretionaries. That's what I mean by that. So it's like you don't see it. So like if you look like consumer discretionary, it looks more mixed than it really like that looks that should be more rotational. But Tesla and Amazon are hurting the discretionaries more than anything. And then again, communications are mostly green, but then Google, Google Meta and then Netflix are bringing it all down. So it's kind of like. You're getting those rotations, but you don't really see it as much. And then even in sectors that are rotating, some of those sectors have big drivers leading out, even though there's a lot of other ones going in. Well, the banks are interesting. Because like I'm saying, the banks are still like they're break even. So it's like 50-50, but it, it, overall, I would say it's green. But then again... They've all just been holding pinned here too, even the regionals. You got to find a venue. Oh, I thought they already had it. So I thought there was a UFC already next Friday in Vegas, and I thought they were just going to uh, throw Elon and, and Zuckerberg into the card. So I thought they already had it up. Mm -mm. IBM, they bought somebody today. I'm surprised they didn't go down. Philip Morris on the high? No way. That's what I... Th I thought that was the whole thing. I thought there was already a fight set up, and then they were just going to throw Elon and Zuckerberg on the card. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I said, that sounds beautiful. That's it. Just have Elon and Zuckerberg as the opening fight. That'd be beautiful. But I guess not. I guess dreams don't come true. It's good, though. Elon would have got his ass whooped. NVIDIA, no. I think just the chips in general. I mean, let me see. Do I have anything on semiconductors? Please hold, my friend. Technology and telecom? He wants to do it. He's saying the biggest fight of all time. Oh, shit. So he wants to... No, I say make him an opener. Let's have this shit tomorrow. Be sick. Have all CEOs fight each other. You guys realize this is exactly how idiocracy starts, right? We're fucked. <laughs> the year was 2023. As they first had their first CEO fight... They then began to sh they then began to say, "Let's fight them all." <laughs> say what? That's litter. That'd be crazy. And then, like twenty years later, analysts just determine upgrades and downgrades based on the the, the main fight between the CEOs. They're like, "We're downgrading uh, Amazon stock today on account that the CEO Jossie lost his main event fight." Unfortunately, we think with a little bit more training uh, and a better jab, uh, he'll have a better shot at running Amazon. Thank you. And then the stock goes down 15%. And then Amazon defaults for the 180th time. But investors keep buying it up because it gets squeezed every time. Again, we're speaking of the future, if you don't know.
Mm. Let's see. Amazon still. Tesla's starting to tick down. More energy on the high. Devin Energy now. DVN. I would settle for Celebrity Deathmatch to come back. Right? That was such a good show. I don't know why they got rid of it. My weekend was good, man. My weekend was chill. Good to be back. I mean, it's it feels kind of slow today. I don't know. In like a weird way, it's like it's already almost 10 o'clock. But then I'm like, it's only 10 o'clock. We still like borderline have half of the day left. AMD's on the low ticker. Um, so it's kind of getting off slow here. I know we have a... I'm not expecting much for the week, but we have a lot of events that can move things. And then uh, we're even going to get like a baby start to earnings season as, as well. So we will see. But weekend's good. Market seems chill. Kind of calm here a little bit, even though we're getting another down day after everything going down. So we will see. I'm looking to buy my first home to live in. I'm not looking to flip. Looking for some in Tucson. Well, yeah, if you want to live there, I mean, that's it's always great to start. I mean, the problem right now is this is what I'll tell you. If you want to buy your first home right now and you want to live in your first home, well, yes, you should do an FHA loan. Those are great. But here's the problem. Right now, it is decidedly, like, decidedly cheaper to rent a property. I will just tell you now. So if you are the type of person who needs marble countertops and you need the nice bathroom and, you, and you're a millennial and you want the fucking LED lights, just I'm letting you know, you're not going to get that buying. It is, it's a lot cheaper to rent right now. And uh, my people, they said I'm talking like Obama. But if you rent a property, it will be cheaper. Now, that doesn't mean that you cannot purchase. However, I will tell you, that property will be expensive, and it will be shit, and you will need to remodel it. So, to my American people, for those shopping for a home, I hope you know a lot of work is ahead. No, but seriously. So, like, super cheap to rent right now compared to buying. You're not going to get the high-quality living the area may be a little bit worse if you're going to buy because it's going to cost you more to get less. And then, like I said in the video the other day, if you want to save money on a property right now, your as, as your first home to live in, your best bet, like your best bet right now is to find a property that needs a lot of work. So I told that to my homie. He was trying to buy a house. He sent me one and it was very expensive. And I told him, I just said, I said, would you be open? I was like, I'll find you a wholesale property. I'm going to get you a flip. And I said, well, you should just buy a, somebody, a flip property, go put in $100,000 into it and then just live in it and just call it a day. So it may require different loans, different cash, all of that stuff. But I said, that's your best way to like get that house without spending millions of dollars uh, or, or spending something way above really kind of what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? Because like you're looking in some areas, if it's like it's probably like a half a million dollar home, I bet you that home was 200 grand a couple years ago. So it's like you could still get that home for 300,000. It's just going to require 100 grand to work. So now you're going to have 400 instead of 500, but hopefully it'll be nicer and then you're, you kind of balance it out. Then you get the ownership as well too. We can talk tax liens and tax deeds. It's it's it, it varies by uh, city and state, but it's definitely uh, it, there's opportunity as well as scummery, as well as it requires a lot of capital at the same time to accomplish. And then it just depends on the competition, because if there's a lot of bidders, it's not really going to be that good for you. So like any type of auction property, whether it's tax lien, foreclosure or anything, just be mindful that it's an auction. It's all cash. You have to pay cash. So there's no financing unless you go to a hard money guy. But in the process of all of them is like a lot of people bid on them. So before, uh, like before the market was even hot, like 2019, 2018, like at all of the auctions, all of the auctions, every property, the bid would get bid up to the value that it was worth. So, like, I'm telling you, people would see sight unseen homes 
and they would just bid them up to the to the Redfin estimate or to the estimate of the recent comp or just slightly below it. So sometimes if there's too much competition and people keep bidding on them, it's not even like you're you might you might be paying top dollar all cash for a house you've never seen nor inspected like you could find way better deals without it so sometimes few and far between there's like a couple of gems in the auctions if you could get them but really realistically you, you need a low competition auction otherwise if the price is near market value there you go Never told you my dad supplies JB Homes with all their lumber. That's useful. You let me know. Yeah, you should build your own property then out there. Uh, but yeah, lumber is, is always a good hookup. I've never paid anyone's taxes and kicked them out. No. You're not really allowed to. I mean, you could pay someone's taxes and try to do an adverse claim on the property, but it's not. That's 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 not an easy task of what you said, nor does it seem like my aisle. I'm like, hey, like, let me pay these guys taxes and fuck him up. It's better to rent in Cali and buy cheap in Indiana than buy one here. Well, it depends. If you care about where you live in the sense like you want a nice house in a nice location, you want a good walk score, you know, you want to be in the mix of it, then yeah. But you can't. Nothing nothing like buying some of these overpriced homes, and it may be expensive today, but it's like you live in that property for a year or two. Now all of your rent payments just turn into straight, like big equity. Now, granted, if you did go and uh, uh, what's it called? If you did go and rent in Indiana, you should be able to make money. But then again, the appreciation in the Cali is great. So it's there. it's good to own a property. I mean, I'm telling you, there's one thing... Like, I love it, man. Like, I love, there's nothing better than owning property, especially if you live in it and get to use it. And then after however long you sell it and then just make money. There's no, I'm telling you, best feeling in the world. Like you get, like, even if, you know, you may not like the property for, again, I bought properties. I lived in them for a little bit. I hated it. I sold it. I got paid. But it's like, it's remember, because when you rent, you do walk away with nothing. You will. And that's why if you do buy properties in like Indiana and rent, it's a lot better. That's, that's definitely something we've talked about, but just keep in mind though. It's like you just, you just have to figure out what is going to be of your best interest. Like what, what is your number one priority? What are you willing to get? What are you willing to give up? And that will help you find the balance between either rent or buy or rent domestically and then buy out of state or whatever domestically, same thing. But yeah, So at least Spice trying to come back up. Rutus, Rutimus. You need ter ter Teradimius to go up. I bought and moved in my first owned house in February. Game changer, instant 500x quality of life. No regrets, even if I'm half broke now. Yeah, it gets rid of all of your cash. And then you got to buy like furniture and like pots and pans and shit. But it is good. And then that's the thing. Even if you never like it, like you love it now, you got the honeymoon period. But like four or five years from now, even if you don't like it and sell it, the ideally the house will be paid down and the equity should be up or paid down a little bit more. And at least uh, you got some benefit off of those payments. But like I'm telling you, it's like right now though, there's no way around it. It is so cheap to rent compared to buying. It's I I don't know if cheap is the right word, but it's just like it's so it's cheaper. Like the gap is like we're talking thirty percent, bro. It's stupid. Like it's stupid, bro. Mm -mm -mm. The gap, it should it should really be like a couple percent, maybe like 10% gap. Uh, but it, And again, it should be where rent is cheaper, but 
right now though it's like it's it's kind of wild like uh, especially when you get into like higher amounts dude only people buying properties on there is going to be cash because the comparative to rent is wild i mean here's the deal like pretty much you can rent if you wanted to buy a 10 million dollar house right now the mortgage would cost as much as a, a rental on a 40 million dollar house <laughs> to give you an idea so again even some of you guys might notice that too it probably will cost you double to buy a house than where you would rent it at so if you're like i want to live in downtown san diego if you wanted to buy it and pay that you would probably be paying double than the than the typical rent right so remember i showed you that video with how to get free rent i showed you a two-bedroom downtown in san diego for for twenty eight hundred, three thousand, thirty five hundred dollars a month, the mortgage on that would be like seven thousand, especially after HOA and all of that. So that's the problem right now is just taxes, insurance, all of it is just it's it's up there. Yeah, when mortgage rates are seven, this idea shouldn't surprise people. Yeah, it shouldn't, uh, but it's like you have to um there's like a big gap in terms of utility. Uh, is what I mean. So it's like you may like see it, but like in terms of like what you're getting for your dollar, there is a big difference. It's one thing that it's cheaper, but it's like you're legitimately just getting way more property, way better location, way better quality to rent right now than to purchase uh, with the interest rate. So it's it's one thing to be like, oh, well, I get to own it and this and that. But it's like, no, you're going to get probably a third of what you would buy uh, renting if if you're buying right now. But you get the benefits of buying, but you're not getting the utility. You're not getting the the bedrooms, the yard. You're, you're not getting anything, really. Mortgages will come to four and a half, five, probably when you see Powell cut the first time. So, um, now nah, we still got an oxy play, but we've been calling out oil all day. That's the number one. Uh, long term, it's on the YouTube channel section, the member thing. When mortgages come down, how much do you think the home prices will? I don't, it's fucked already because that's it. Mortgage rates are still up and the house prices are already coming back up. So, by the time the mortgages come down, with if they cut it, We'll see, but then we're under. I'm operating under the notion, though, that by the time the mortgage rates come down, it will be because the Fed is cutting, and at that point, the economy should be bad. So at that point, I don't know how you know. Although you're like demand effect of of lower rates, what will be demand effect of job loss? High rents and high prices destroy the middle class. They do, but there is a, it's a weird balance right now. So that's what I'm saying. If you wanted to be middle class in purchase, it's difficult. But if you wanted to be middle class in rent, you're getting everything you wanted. Uh, at, at, at least that's what I'm seeing with property. Again, I'm just noticing anywhere I wanted to buy a property, when I look at the rents to see what I'd cash flow, or even if I wanted it to keep it myself, I was just like, why wouldn't I rent? Or I was like, it did, one, it either cash flowed too little, or I was like, damn, the rent is so much cheaper for what you're actually spending. So it could be just a Cali thing. You may have to, I don't know if the gap is that big elsewhere, but at least in Southern California, uh, it's, it's, it's noticeable. Hmm. Why are we going down? I mean, to keep it on theme with last week, we did have bad German data. There was a lot of tensions uh, over the weekend with the Wagner group. And then we are just get, getting ready and anticipating a week of both rebalancing, end of the month, end of the first half of the year, Jerome Powell, and whether or not this momentum sticks or not. Should we sell the first crib and transfer it to another one or keep it and let it appreciate for 10 years? YouTube wouldn't let you ask. I don't know. It's weird. 
it's up to you. I mean, ideally, I, I would try to get and keep as many properties as you can. So usually that first crib, if you if you can keep it, you know, go from there, right? You're going to get your first crib. So we don't know. That's why, like, you know, certain, like, scenario questions, just your real estate career is never going to, like, play out that easier or that easy, and you'll see it. it'll get more complex than that. Uh, Disney's a major sponsor of the 2023 Essence Festival culture. They're celebrating power of the joy. I don't know, the New Orleans. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you never know how it's going to play out in that situation. Give it time. But when you get to that prop, that, that point in, in the time, ideally you'd want to hold the property. But you see, you know, it's like if you find a good deal on another property to buy and it makes sense to sell that property and roll it over, you should. But then ideally, if you could go and get your second property and then go get the first one rented out and have somebody pay for it, that's how you're going to be able to win. And then you're going to have another property to live in. Then you're going to have your first rental being paid for by the renter. And then you still have all that equity. And then just little by little, just hopefully you keep doing that and stacking into all of it. You could, yeah, the duplex, living in it, renting out the other. That's the best way to utilize the FHA loan. It's good. You guys have like today and tomorrow to answer, ask any of these questions. Uh, because after Wednesday, I'm going to tell you to be on call real estate. Amen. Hmm. What if your rental doesn't cover the full mortgage, but you could afford the difference? It just depends on what your plan is. Like if you're going to go buy another property and you need to, you know, do the other one, but like you could rent it out and it's like you lose a hundred bucks a month. Sometimes that makes sense. So like, especially in this market, depending on how you finance your deal, who knows, but in, I'm, I'm, I could be okay with it though. So like, if you mean to tell like my mortgage is a thousand bucks a month, and I rent it out for 900 bucks a month and I lose $1,200 a year, but they pay the rest of it and I get to keep the equity and then it let, allows me to get into other stuff. I'm fine with that, believe it or not, because the idea is holding the property and equity and eventually just getting it paid down, lowering the cost and letting it do its thing. So do condos make sense to live in and rent out or get a single? Well, single family always wins just from dust. So it's either or condos, townhouses are harder to sell, but then you get a little bit better locations and more bang for your buck. And then obviously there's the HOA. Mm. Got any of the thousand dollars? Yeah, no, no thousand dollar a month in LA. <laughs> but then, but, but the rent that's the thing. It's like rent is so much chiller now than buying. So even in LA, I'm sure I could find a, a noticeable difference. I'll find it until we hit a new low. Well, like, let's see, bro. Like, where are we gonna go? Let's say Hollywood. You got the Hollywood Hills. 2,000 square feet, $10,000 a month. 2,000 square feet, 7,000 a month, 15, 7, so it's like seven, 8,000 a month, right? A couple of them for like 2,000 square feet. Okay, let's go for a sale. Yeah, all those houses are going to cost like two mil for 2,100 square feet. Your estimated mortgage payment would be 15,000 a month. So anything above two mil, 15K a month. Even the 1.3 million property which is an auction yeah even then that would have that would have been like nine thousand a month 1.6 yeah ten thousand ten five then they're all yeah they got these days they did good so it's cheap to rent comparatively it's half off if you wanted to buy <laughs> if you wanted to buy you wanted to live in la like you wanted to buy this house in la you're getting at 2800 for a one bedroom still pretty fucking awful so yeah but 
the idea is relatively comparing. Mm. Look at Columbus. Yeah, I have a property in Ohio that rents out super cheap. See, but that's the weird part, though, is that uh, even though it's been like the you're saying it's beyond L.A., though, it's like it's kind of been like this for several months now. So it's kind of wild to think how it's all like people have still been operating in this environment. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not as if this just happened today. <laughs> this was like this has been going on. The crazy part is that house prices are going up now. It, after all of this and then now we're like wait a minute it's like who is buying this and that's why we said a lot i want to say like 30 percent of the houses bought were like cash or something like that or more so there is a lot of cash buyers that would be the only people who aren't getting affected in the same way but other than that it's crazy hmm would house buying limits help with prices? No. So that's the common fallacy is just go look anywhere in the world. Historically, once you institute price controls on real estate, it has the effect of making sure that that, that real estate always stays expensive. So believe it or not, L.A., has a shit ton of real estate price controls or rent controls. And that is what has made it now just a very wild place. Because you could have one building still controlled by rent control, and then the minute a piece of land opens up that's not, and then they, they build it according to the new laws, and then it goes there, it just it goes crazy. It just it pretty much sets the, the floor for everybody once you put a price control in place. No, nah, nothing wild today. Just the bad news in the morning. Uh, the the manufacturing data, Dallas manufacturing was pretty bad. Uh, it came in, I think, a little better uh, or a little worse than last time. I need to double check. Don't want to. I said it earlier and y'all got sensitive with it. But I know it was still contractionary or borderline three months in a row, but I'm pretty sure it just didn't get worse. Yeah, it came in a little bit better and then just as much as uh, last month or the month before that, slightly around the same. But still been like this since all of last year, I believe. I know so many people on the sidelines waiting for home prices to come down, market timing, fall oh, dude, it's... Bro, it's been like two years now. <laughs> like it's fully been two years and like of both people saying real estate crash all the way down to I know they prayed on my downfall. So it's just that's the crazy part with time is like, dude, it's been two years just since that. It's almost been four years since COVID now, three and a half. Oh, I didn't see your car question. My friend, sorry. Mm. Where did time go? It was here. It was every day. We spent it here to get you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, we, we were here. We did it little by little. You saw things. You saw how the world changed, how what got people reacting to stuff all the developments but i mean we were here that's why throughout all of it hopefully you own something with it and then it, hopefully you're just cognizant of, of what happened to prepare you will real estate ever crash if demand it will when the jobs come down that's it like i, I really thought when we first saw uh last year with the prices coming down even though it, like it came down from the peak it didn't like crash crash but like i thought okay Real estate's down now. It's finally not being the only thing up. So I was thinking it was going to get to the point now where, boom, the data jobs start showing up, and then you were able to see it. But it, 
that that's not happening. So realistically, if you really want real estate to come down, or if you really want to see that effect, and it's not, it is going to be real, and it's not going to be something that gets bought up or turns into a, a some stupid baseline effects. It's jobs. That's it. Until the jobs market just absolutely gets demolished, then there's no way real estate. Even with, I, I thought real estate would have got hurt more with a seven percent interest, but no, because again, it's been two years. I'm not saying it didn't have no effect, but the the idea is is just like just just look around with it. It's like the if anybody is really gonna, if something's really gonna get crushed in that area, you you can't have the consumer in a in a just a, one of the most employed nations in the world right now. That's that's but that's when the real estate will really come down is when jobs finally reflect a, a downturn as well. Mm. Will that be regardless of where? Yeah, probably, but I'm talking more America, but then again, some of America's real estate trends have spread to other places like Canada and even like Switzerland at this point uh, and other places. But um, I would say just apply that, applying that to domestic real estate, United States. They really saved the economy when they gave everyone's money back on the bank failures. Yeah, the confidence. Uh-huh, they did. That's, that's what, that's like the theory. That's the whole, that's why Powell has been dovish. And that was part of it. Just like the, the central bank signal that was given after SVB was phenomenal. Again, I told you, it's it's even for me, three months later, I found out I could have lost a shit ton of money without even knowing it because of SVB, just because I invested with somebody who had a fucking credit line with them. Uh, so again, it's just like, but that the confidence they restored and by showing how quickly they would be there, I, I do think the market thoroughly enjoyed that. Reverse repo falls to the lowest since May 2022. This big Kathy Wood stock is outperforming even Tesla. UI, wait, which one? DraftKings is ARK's top performer, holding up 119% on the year as of June 23. Tesla is close behind at 118. Exact Sciences 87 and Shop 83. Those are test. That's Kathy's bigger biggest movers for this year. Say, where's Tessie still? Even the market kind of pin here. It is what ten twenty. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Chad. It's like low key mad early. They mean it when they say sound and resilient. I think they are sound and resilient. That's it. They 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 establish confidence. <coughs> in a very strong and resilient manner. But that, that'll be it. But even then, even with the real estate stuff, if you guys want, uh, there's options. Whether you're looking for your first home or not, I think there's ways to go about it. You got to be smart. And if you really want real estate to come down or you really want to know when real estate's going to come down, it's going to be when jobs actually start to go down. So, you know, that the time when... When you start seeing non-farm payrolls and unemployment start running up and then everyone's like, oh, buy the dip in real estate, don't listen to them. But till you see the jobs, then it's just going to be this weird environment now of big gap between the two, higher interest rates and, and finding in that balance. Pray my mother, she's in critical care. Oh man, okay, Sonny. Prayer warriors, pray for Sonny's mom. There you go. You already showing up. Let's go, baby. Amen. Amen, man. Keep your head up. 
Think positive thoughts. No matter what, Amor Fati. Sherwin Williams on the high. Apple still at the low. Microsoft. You had a little bit of a rally here, but then then again, Bond just kept catching this bid and holding. They're holding all day, and they're out definitely outperforming now. See, that's the weird part. Bonds are up less than a quarter, and now NASDAQ's down 1%. But then you have the Russell up. E O S E. What was that stock again? The biotech, the MS stock. They got a dude. They have a five dollar price target from J P Morgan. But was this like C B X T? C B T X. Why for it? B N T C. That's the one. Yeah, you know they have a four dollar price target by J P Morgan. So they reiterated that today. Again, it's already up 100%, though. Dollar Tree's on the high. So if we could get above here, this will be the highest you've been since, like, 1230. So the last hour, this is, like, the high of the hour. Disney, new high. Hey, he's running up. It's weird, because, again, I think the... Yeah, the long term went up today, too, on all this. Very interesting day. M.O. Disney... Schwab or Sherwin Williams rebounding. SPR, Spirit. Remember, they had the news with Boeing last week. Even Boeing's trying to come up. Yeah, Staples, bro. Staples, healthcare, and oil. But even healthcare is red. And again, there's just, there's a lot of things that are, uh, there's a lot of green, a lot of red. There's a lot of rotation. It would be a normal rotation day. Just every sector, though, has a big loser. That's the, that's the easy, that's the words I was looking for. Every sector has a big loser. And that's why you, the rotation just looks kind of choppy. PayPal, no come up. Square, Visa, MasterCard, all killed. Rotations are bullish. Well, we'll see. It's uh, end of the month, too. End of the month, end of the first half rebalance. July will be bullish. We'll see. Again, June was in our favor. You know that. I believe June seasonally. I don't I don't know. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure June uh, had a seasonal, a very positive seasonal effect. I think July might be positive on the seasonal too, but we'll see. My thoughts on Rivian. I'm not a fan of Rivian. I like their delivery trucks a lot, actually. I would take a... I think that is a... It's unfortunately, I don't think they're priced of delivery truck success. I think they're pricing in massive success. Uh, but I just... I don't like... I don't like... I don't like Rivian. Uh, I, I barely... I don't even like Lucid. I just... I want the flip shares of that. Uh, I don't like any EV company except for Tesla. And I, I barely like Tesla. So I, that's it, though. But every other one is just... Uh, they They suck. I just, I don't believe in it. I just think uh, we'll find out I, at this place. I think it's just going to be Tesla, GM, Ford, and all. That's it. You're not, I don't think you're going to have uh, Lucid making mass produced cars in 20 years or a lot of these names you hear of today. But I'm just the EV hater. Again, that's why the boomers accept me. Uh, I like Tesla, but like I didn't like them at first because it's like they weren't making money. Again, I've watched Tesla for a very long time. That's why I, you know, I I, I could be humbled and I I could not I'm not going to ignore what happened in front of me. They they did good. They're the only one to confirm the fucking story, and Elon is quite the storyteller, which makes the story that much crazier. Um, but I I just don't believe in these other 
EV company. So even the first one would have been Tesla, and I heavily doubted them. Uh, but even then, they're the only ones that have like earned it and that I think can actually stand up, dominate, and stand the test of time. But everybody else, it's just uh, it's a weird game, and, and it's backed by a lot of hype. If Elon beats Hug, I still like Tesla. That's why I think if you're going to buy an EV stock, unfortunately, Tesla's ex very expensive, but I think Tesla's the best one. Everything, or just go with Ford or GM at that point. But I don't think, uh, like, I don't believe in, like, Rivian. Like, I just don't believe in the, I believe that their delivery truck, but I don't believe a consumer Rivian is going to take over the world. I still have the Lucid. They came down. No Neo. I don't like any of them. I just single hand. I mean, again, I'll trade them here and there. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll I'll be humbled again. I mean, it's not like I have not been humbled before. Uh, but for the most part. I just, I'm not sold on any of them. <laughs> ECB in three minutes. Yeah, some form of hybrid. But even then, though, it's just like, I'm not saying EV cars aren't going to exist. I'm just saying the people that are going to dominate are going to be the people that already dominated. That's it. It's over. I just don't think this there's not the space... For and then you have to realize it. Half of the company, I'd say, eighty to ninety percent of the companies that are even going on the market to publicly raise money to make a vehicle, how like I'd say eighty to ninety percent of them have ill motives and are just there to sell an idea and raise money, and and that's it. Again, you see it with a lot of different stocks. So I think GM, Ford, Tesla, anybody, the, the legacy people are going to dominate. They will control, just like the internet. Just like when you thought all of the media companies would get destroyed because of the internet, they ended up controlling how, how internet became mainstream with ad dollars. So I don't think GM, Ford, and, and now Tesla slipped through the cracks. I don't think that anybody else is going to get in there. XLE still going, so you had that little red candle, but more energy. Three minutes ECB, I think uh, Lagarde. Okay, again, a pop. DVN, more energy plays on the high. Again, 2% on energy. Mm. Over Nordstown. Nikolai. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Mm. Oh. Oh, that's not bad. I made 11. I sold out IHS. That was the, uh, what's it called? Remember on Friday, the hostile takeover company? I got like a hundred bucks.
Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. Lagarde could move some things. Mm -hmm. The headquarters for Root is close. I want to walk in and ask him if they'll accept the buyout offer. Do it. Be like, what's up, man? Yeah, Disney, but it's still, it needs to get above 90. Remember, Disney got murdered the last two days or so. It was actually even after a good day or a good week. Well, it's back up to 89 if it gets to 90, but they were just, they're literally coming off of their lows right here. And then bonds are coming down. I think that's actually kind of good here considering we just hit the high of the hour and we're coming down with it, but watch what happens here. And then I just sold out of IHS. That's the video. That oh, you guys got to add. All right, I think Lagarde should be coming on. I don't know if we're going to listen. I don't know if they're going to put it up. Kinti. All right, follow me on Instagram at the training fraternity. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Earlier that he has no plans to overthrow the Russian government or had no plans to do that when his army was marching toward Moscow on Saturday. He said it was more of a protest. Here's how prominent guests on Bloomberg Television are interpreting the developments. I think it would have been even more unstable under Prigozhin, definitely. But this is a clear case where the enemy of our enemy is our enemy. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there was anyone in NATO that was rooting for Prigozhin to take over right. in Moscow this weekend. The idea that Mr. Prigozhin is disappearing off to Belarus for a quiet and comfortable retirement growing vegetables um, is, is frankly uh, incredible. Um, so we, we, we will have to see over time what emerges as the structure of the, the deal that's obviously um, being done. Lukashenko is not a peacemaker. You know, he uh, mm -hmm. now presented as mediator in this uh, in this issue, but he was rather Putin's messenger. Uh, Lukashenko passed the message to Prigozhin, which allowed Prigozhin to stop uh, the match and save face. And for more on this, let's bring in Angela Stent, senior fellow at the Brookings Institution and author of Putin's World, Russia Against the West. And with the rest, great to have you with us, uh, Angela. You heard some of those reactions. I'll start with your own. How have you been assessing this situation? Well, first of all, I think um, this is the first act of a drama that's still playing out. There's a lot that we don't know about what really happened, and a lot of it doesn't really compute. Uh, when you had Putin in the morning on Saturday threatening to have Prigozhin and others arrested because they were traitors, and then by the evening he signs a deal, uh, a, a, an agreement to go to Belarus, everyone stands down and he's not going to be prosecuted. So I think what you've seen is um, a real challenge uh, to what was going on in the Kremlin. Even though Prigozhin didn't challenge Putin directly, he certainly uh, challenged the whole min Ministry of Defense. And he, his demand was to have both the defense minister and the chief of the general staff removed. Uh, so far, that has not happened. And they're circulating video today of the defense minister, Shoigu. Let's see whether it's really from today. So there's clearly a lot of turmoil going on there. Um, I agree that uh, Mr. Lukashenko, uh, that Mr. Prigozhin Prigozhin is not going to cultivate his garden in Belarus. Um, I just read the message that he put out. Um, we don't really know whether he's in Belarus, but he could also use this as a staging point to um, have more military incursions into Ukraine. I mean, before this happened, the Ministry of Defense wanted to disband the Wagner Group, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So has he essentially just uh, won his stay or won this 
stay, won the stay of the Wagner Group with this march and, and deal, Angela? Do we expect it to be you know, business as usual from now on um, for these mercenaries in Ukraine? Um, that I'm not sure. Wagner. Uh, honestly, it's just crazy, bro. The last, like, what, three, four weeks now, we've low-key... These have been, like, the, la the latest two updates you've gotten out of the war in Ukraine... These have been your biggest, like, updates in the last year since we were, like, freaking out in the beginning. So the dam being destroyed and now this whole little Wagner group fiasco over the weekend, this is like, I don't know if we're going to start getting back to the global tension plays, but again, just in any element of what people are talking about, it's just like you didn't get into this morning without discussing global tensions and, and, and how that's going to play out on the market. Mm. They had MSNBC at the bar this weekend and there was booze when they said he turned around. It was wild. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, it's like, well, that's what I'm saying is that the last couple of weeks, it seems like it's went up a gear, but then we're also still in that like don't respond mode you know what i'm saying that's where it's like it's kind of that's so there's still like a, a a divergence between the reaction and then what's going on and what it could lead to and that's because everyone's still asking what would this lead to because if none of these things change anything then you instantly just fall back right into the same scenario ftx's new management says they recovered seven billion of liquid assets just wait for them to announce their return, Chad. <laughs> That's crazy. If Wagner was like, yo, NATO, we're fighting Putin. Can we get weapons too? What? That's crazy. Mm. recovered or found what if they're like well we what happened was we actually created a new token okay just hear me out no 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 i under no let's oh okay never mind never i guess mm -hmm. TSN's been going up all day. All day. Even even MO back to 44. Where is crypto? Did crypto do good? Damn, MSTR is down. Remember, crypto had a... Was it Friday or Thursday? No, yeah, that was Friday crypto had that gnarly run. It's still holding up. Still holding at 30,000. You haven't really got any negative updates. Nothing out of Coinbase either. What's up, Josh and Chad? Good morning, afternoon, kind of, almost. Depends on what coast you're on. Yeah, Fox News. Name's Jesse. Jesse Waters to succeed Tucker. You got that. Frontline workers are bargaining for pandemic hero pay. Tesla leads surge in battered clean energy stocks. Uh, oh, this is, I got something for you. I have the, there's a recap on everything. So stocks, U.S. stocks put in mixed performance in choppy trade Monday. Short-lived weekend rebellion in Russia amid fears of economic and global economic slowdown. Treasury yields mostly fell. Investors mostly uh, brush aside short-lived mutiny. That raises questions about Vladimir Putin uh, and his grip on power. Currencies, the levered fund sector seems to uh, view aggressive Bank of England rate rates as positive for the sterling. But this could be ignoring uh, powerful 
negative growth consequences from further increases. MUFG Bank says oil futures edge lower on Monday as traders largely take in stride a short-lived mutiny by Russia's Wagner Group. Uh, everything is taking short-lived mutiny. Metals, gold, and silver advanced on Monday, reversing some of their losses uh, as the weekend's uh, aborted mutiny in Russia helped boost demand for safety plays like gold, treasuries, and bonds. And then natural gas prices were rising as an early start to summer in Texas has boosted demand. Yeah, but everything's just short-lived mutiny, short-lived mutiny, short-lived mutiny. <laughs> it repeated that on every single one. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It gives you, it gives you an idea of how the news is being circulated. I think it's a short-lived mutiny is what is being talked about. Short Live Mutiny, my favorite band. That does sound like something Jerome Powell listens to. Balance to VWAP, we could, but quite frankly, I just I think bonds need to do something. They don't have to, and they could easily do nothing, but let the ex equities do what they need to. But VWAP is like, oh, we're already right by it. It's just a matter of do we actually like, do we get some sort of relationship here and then do we get back to like why are, you know, the cash reaction is interesting off the open, but every single day this week is just like bonds have, le they're legitimately selling right at the open. I guess Tuesday they caught a bid, but I think bond movement is the key to us, is key to where we're going. Uh, move, get out the way. Oh no, rate hikes. Yeah, we'll see where this updates, but bond volatility dropping as opposed to Bostic short lived Muni. Oh, <laughs> that's cold, bro. That's a great joke. That's a high level joke right there. Oh, I see what you did there, Tim Whitman. Oh, that's a good one. What would be the play for when we start hearing about all time high temperatures? Clean energy, nothing burger. I mean, you could go with the uh, energy or agriculture plays low key. Again, that's uh, even gas uh, is factoring into that, it looks like. Dip buy on Lucid 43. Four. We've held this for now like an hour and a half. So remember, this was the hourly high from like 12 o'clock. It's been like another 30 or 20 minutes here. Energy's still climbing too, and that's been an all day story. Lucid, yeah, Lucid got destroyed after being up 12%. Friday night about the mutiny? No, I didn't actually. I, did, I didn't check my email until like Sunday. I was kicking it, bro. I was kicking. I didn't even do any real estate. That's it. I just, I took my girl out for dinner. Uh, I had to go travel a little bit for some work. I just, and then that's it. I went, I went to Chuck E. Cheese with my nephew. Like I was just kicking it, bro. Mm hmm. My average is 660 or 650. We were up on it or we were getting up there today. And then he went, bye. I said, no. Mm. I'd, I'm waiting for the small caps to heat up. I mean, regardless of how the last week has moved, um, it's, uh, it's, I'm still kind of, uh, I just blanked. I'm sorry. You taught, he's, someone said something about dish and then the sushi. You got Barona Saturday. They played Pump It Up. Damn. 
That's pretty hype. That's pretty hype. All the tech names are still down. I forgot what I was just saying there, too. Hold on, geez. AI will lead a tech stock rally in the second half, says Wedbush's Dan Ives. I think that's old. Oh, small caps. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Um, the small caps in the pause. Like I was saying, don't underestimate the last two, like last week of momentum was just going down, but it's still, we still have the pause in play. So obviously we have four weeks until Powell, we're going to have earnings and a lot of other things, but uh, that idea of small caps in the plays like ARC, again, even commodities, I'm going to keep an eye out for them. So I think small caps heating up is something we should be watching over the next couple of weeks here. Uh, Apple and NVIDIA, everything's kind of catching a candle here. So we'll see if it holds up. It is almost 11 o'clock, only 1045, man. Still very, very early. Why did Wagner turn? Well, we don't know. I mean, we already went over the tinfoil with it, too. There's a lot of theories related to it. The, the point is, just does this lead to more tensions in the war or not? And does this threaten things from the Black Sea grain deal all the way down to get more like physical tensions and fighting. But that was uh, one of the bigger drivers over the weekend here. Again, everything I read about every sector has some mention to the short-lived mutiny or weekend rebellion. All right, well, let's see if this could hold. If this could hold, you might get an attempt at uh, VWAP. Uh, industrials and energy are still leading the way. Some tech is bouncing. Amazon's down 1% now, which is crazy considering how much they were up for. Apparently, there's another balloon too. No. No. That's crazy. <laughs> That's another spy balloon. I forgot about those. That was this year, huh? You guys remember the spy balloons? I totally forgot about those. What? Nope, Tesla's coming down. Tech. So energy, industrials, uh, healthcare still hasn't hit a new high, and they're red. Again, staples even chilled out there. They're not going up with it. If you get more candles on tech, it'll bring you down a little bit. Dow's up 0.10. Russell's still 0.62. Spy 0.2 down, and then NASDAQ down 0.81. But let's see, you're kind of doing the dancing queen if this could hold, but that was it. That was looking good. Now he go to Gulag. Balloon three. This time it's personal. <laughs> we have another balloon. Who's is it? We got Yeah, Dad, it's somewhere. We're gonna we're gonna find a balloon and so far it's a nice embarrassing. <laughs> this time there was a vengeance. <laughs> this time there was a purpose. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, whoa, whoa, what's this? U.S. State Department has no communications with Russian government on Saturday. Both through trackers, the extent to Wagner on a successor organization. They do not take a position on Russia or their Ministry of Defense. Hmm. Oh, shit. I broke it again. I don't have any, actually. I don't have any of the black patches. I might. I think. Let me ask Lending Tips. He might have one. OLDPX. 
Disney on the high as well. That's all day. I don't even think Netflix is up. I like XOM and oil, but I I think if you're trying to make a play on oil, oil is cheaper as a commodity. Um, I like Oxy too. I'd honestly take Oxy. I think they're a little bit cheaper than even XOM. But again, I don't have any energy in my long term. So swinging energy, depending on what happens, I could get behind, but no, no long term. The buy volume. I think the volume is pretty low. I mean, right now we're at 34 million, 10 minutes till 11, two hours left. I mean, maybe we'll do 70 million in volume if we're lucky. So that'll be like the last couple of days. I think it's just wild that we're doing this, though, uh, that we're going to kind of keep this up. So this is now what? One, two, three. This was a green day. So I guess it's not in a row. Four, five. If this day wasn't green. One, two, three, four, five. This would have been the sixth down day in a row. So if we didn't have Thursday green, we would have. But now this is only this is the second day down. Mm. Holy Spirit, come down. New highs of the year are still in play. Uh, depending on what happened, I mean, you're about like 150 points off of it now. And then I think even then you're still in, you're another 100, 200 points away from the solid support level, 4,000. I think we're good. Mm -mm. Corporate default set to rise. Train derailment in Yellowstone. That's not good. People love OpenAI and Bing. Oh, uh, Catalan came down. They're getting volume right now, though. And then still, Spy is holding this Dancing Queen level we've been at for almost like two hours now. Uh, this is Sarepta. This is Energy. XLE in the top right. Bottom left is 10-year. Top left is the S&P 500. There's NVIDIA. Uh, Tesla. Is MPW still up? Yeah, certain real estate stocks. But I think real estate as a whole, how are they? Uh, no, it's VNQ. Oh, wow. No, VNQ is killing it. Uh, Lucid has been selling off since the Aston Martin guidance, believe it or not. It seems like Aston Martin even came out with good guidance. But then again, too, uh, some people were mentioning the uh, bag holders. There's just a lot of... I'm sure dead equity on that. We're in it at a much lower price, but just imagine all of the other shares purchased way higher. You get a 20% pop. You might want to take your profits. Gold futures recoup some of last week's losses. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And then headlines on the Wagner Group stuff, the U.S. Is there a press briefing? But the U.S. made comments towards Wagner saying they haven't talked to him. Mm. Nike earnings, baby. What are your thoughts? Um, I think we went over the Nike preview last week, which is good, but I think it just comes down to their inventory levels. They've dropped a lot, but remember, they did run up, I think, pretty good on their last earnings. They had a pop, and then they ended up holding, so they're kind of right there in the middle. Uh, it's kind of a decent price, low-key. Uh, hopefully, we could just get some Nike. 
at a much cheaper price. But I think the earnings, it just comes down to their uh, margin as well as uh, inventory. And then obviously China sales and then anything else overseas. But I think inventory is what's going to keep everybody uh, like going crazy about it. Let's see. Today's the twenty sixth. Is Nike on Friday or Thursday? E V B or E C B? We're not going to listen to it. I mean, I haven't got a headline from it, but I do believe Lagarde was supposed to come on. I'm seeing if I have anything else on Nike. Honestly, people have been pretty quiet about it. Let's say... Oh, Nike shows the next big risk for the market. I don't know if you want this one. So this is from Barron's. And then where are we? And then SRPT Max N on the low. Uh, stock market has surged. So it's saying how Nike's next big risk for the market. Stock market surged to an uh, expensive level, making it vulnerable to risk for the next big challenge of earnings and when they emerge. Uh, Nike is the market. No, 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 no. Where is it? Ah. So Nike is another example to set the company trying to reduce inventories. It's been working down excess inventory as consumer demand wanes, but the customers... Uh, the question is whether it could do so quickly enough to stave off further product markdowns that would pressure gross margins, ultimately denting the bottom line. Nike's quarter, which the company reported on June 29th, will have a spectacular particular focus on sales growth and gross margin recapture, wrote Telsey Advisory Group analyst Christina Fernandez, who said the company's ongoing inventory cleanout could take a few quarters in total. Maybe just a few more hiccups for this market, which is trying to dig itself out of a hole. Yeah, and then March was the last earnings. June 23rd, Deutsche Bank lowered them, their price target, but maintained them at buy. Wedbush cut their price target by $10, maintained to outperform. Nike price target cut uh, to cut the price target by Telsey, the girl you just heard, the Telsey Advisory Group, and then they're maintained to outperform. And then maintain positive by OTR Global 130 price target. And that was all in the last week. Their last, well, their earnings were good because it was the it was like it people took the inventory a certain way. So like I'm saying, uh I, I think we went over the preview uh last week, but when it's coming down to net Nike, it's it seems like it's just all about earnings. Earnings and inventory. FRHC. That's on the high. Why does that sound familiar? Freedom Holding. Sounds like a regional bank. Speaking of regional banks, uh, KRE is up 2%. JP Morgan getting volume. Hmm.
I sold a seven and a half put on FGen expiring on eight eighteen. It fell eighty five percent today. So should I cover the put right away or wait for the theta? Well, usually waiting for the theta is your best idea because you're selling the premium. But let's see, what did you sell it for? So you sold a seven and a half dollar put. Oh shit. Yeah, so you agreed to buy this. So, I mean, realistically, you could lose $280 more if it goes to zero. So if you think it's going to go to zero uh, and you're worried, I mean, your max loss until August is you're going to lose $200 more than you're up now, 280 So if you're cool with that, I would just hold it because then you probably have a better chance of making back the other $15. You see what I'm saying? Rather than not, but... You probably sold it for how much? You probably sold it for a dollar fifty. It's worth four seventy, so that means you're down two twenty, maybe. And then you could lose another two hundred. Your max loss on this will be that's uh, about five bucks, because again the stock's at two seventy. You agree to buy it at seven fifty. You're down five bucks. You only sold one of them, right? The put is so far, there's no theta. Yeah, there's really not, but at the same time, he's only going to lose a couple more. And then if it is deep in the money, what do you have to gain besides theta is dollar for dollar. So it's up to you, but pretty much, I mean, your max loss is $750 if it goes to zero. Right now, it's a $500 intrinsic loss. You should be down around two two twenty, And then it looks like, again, you'll just you'll lose another 200 to $400 if the stock goes to zero by August. But if it doesn't go to zero, stays around the price, you you should be decent. Especially if you only did one. General Dynamics gets $700 million order from U.S. Army. Oh, yeah, they 712 order for Striker DVHA vehicles. Where's LMT? I'm surprised even LMT is like low key dead. I guess it's like March high still. March of last year. WPP. What's this? This thing's kind of bouncing around. Got a little red candle and then a big green candle to the high. Looks mad of liquid though. Speaking of which, IHS, they went up. I sold out of that. They're sound. Mm. Two hours left. Kind of a slow day, though, for Monday. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just normal Monday, but... For the most part, man, this one's uh, this one's kind of been slower here. It's been kind of quiet. You really haven't had much to to even go off of. Again, even the ECB, I think that was probably your biggest stuff besides anything that happened leading into this, and then the weekend mutiny. Yes, plenty to digest, but not really much to go off of today, except your weekend mutiny. Durable goods, 8.30 tomorrow. I think we have a little bit more, too. It heats up a little bit more Wednesday, Thursday. Tomorrow, you'll get durable goods in the morning. Uh, that will be surprisingly big. Then you'll get the Red Book. Uh, then you'll get Case Shiller Home Prices. Then the House Price Index. Then you'll get CB Consumer Confidence. Uh, the Conference Board of Consumer Confidence. Then the new home sales. Then you'll get Richmond Fed, Dallas Fed Services, five-year bond auction, and then crude stockpiles, and then building permits. And then China will have stuff too. Crop report today at three. So far, a lot of them have been bad. Even though that, that one we got, the USDA was good. And then every other data set after that was awful.
why is there already so many different crude oil stock data metrics? Because oil is like very complex. There's so many pieces to it. There's different types, different geographies have such different effects. And then there's like, they give estimates and then they confirm the numbers. So there's just a lot that goes into it. Mm -hmm. Amazon, where where are they? Bro, they were up 1% and holding super solid. And now they're down one. And then bonds taking a little bit up here. We're still kind of melting from hitting that hourly high about 30 minutes ago. It's kind of crazy. It's been that long. Uh, we do not have CPI tomorrow, no. <laughs> That'd be crazy if we did, sorry. It like, it like, unless it's foreign CPI, maybe like a German CPI. I don't know, but I don't know U.S. CPI. Canada CPI. There you go. Yeah, I'm saying not in America. Yeah, literally, literally new homes. I just got a headline. New home sales, GDP revisions, personal income on tap, data week ahead. Yeah, you have Canada CPI, Tuesday, 830, durable goods, Case Schiller, new home sales, and that's it. Oh, shit. I just discovered a calendar. All right, we're good. Yalla. Uh, Powell, it's the East, like an ECB conference. So they're doing, uh, I think it's in Argentina. It's like a, it's like a conference, Lagarde and a couple of people are going to be there, but that's where Powell's supposed to be speaking. He might even speak twice. Uh, again, I see him on the schedule twice, so we're going to find out what happens, but I am pretty sure it is from, uh, this like ECB meeting thing that they're doing. And then he's speaking in Madrid on Thursday. Or yeah, Spain. It's somewhere. It's some it's some foreign conference. Yeah, sometimes they're good, but then just sometimes they're not even on the topic. So like or like he'll just be discussing something not related to it, but otherwise, you know, it, it could open up a good forum to to ask some questions that could get a reaction, but like we've kind of been saying here over the last couple of weeks, we don't really think Powell is going to shift from this whole uh, bullish attitude unless he wants to and something has changed. Mm, White House press secretary. The president's economic strategy oh, no. has powered the strongest recovery of any major economy in the world. This morning, you heard the president announce 40 million billion, pardon me, 40, 40 million, million, billion dollars motherfucker. towards ensuring every American has access to affordable, high quality, high speed internet. On Wednesday, the president will deliver a major go pee. speech in so Chicago. I'll, I'll, to I'll turn it off when I come back. I love you. Good morning. Growing the economy by growing the middle class is delivering for the American people. Throughout the week, 
throughout the week and clearly next several weeks, you'll continue to hear from leaders across the administration on how the President's economic plan is delivering results for the American people. With that, as you all know, Admiral is here to answer any foreign policy questions that you may have on the news of the day. John, the podium is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, look, I know there's still a lot of interest out there in events in uh, Russia over the weekend. So just a few words at the top for, for me. Uh, as you all just heard from the President, the United States closely monitored uh, those events, uh, with President Biden receiving literally hour-by-hour -hour updates from his national security team throughout the weekend. And those updates continue for him. On Saturday morning, the President convened a call with his top national security aides to discuss the developments and any impacts that instability in Russia could have as we, as we prepared for a range of scenarios. Uh, and the President also convened calls with many of our allies and partners throughout the weekend, and those calls continue. National Security Advisor Sullivan, Secretary Blinken, Secretary of Defense Austin also spoke with a number of their counterparts as well. Now, as the President noted, uh, it was important that both internally here inside the administration and externally uh, with our allies and partners, including with Ukraine, uh, that we all uh, shared our perspectives on what was going on and we all stayed on the same page. We also made clear uh, to all our allies and partners uh, that the United States was not involved and would not get involved in these events um, and that we view them as internal Russian matters. We delivered that same message to the Russians themselves through appropriate diplomatic channels. I'll emphasize, as the President did just a little bit ago, that it's too early to speculate on the impact these events might have or to reach any definitive conclusions, except one, of course. And that is that no matter what happens next, we're going to stay closely coordinated with those allies and partners, and we're going to continue to stand with Ukraine. As we're speaking here right now, Ukrainian forces are still fighting for their country. They're still trying to claw back captured territory. They're still taking, and they're still inflicting casualties. So whatever occurred in Russia this past weekend did not change those facts. Didn't change the facts for us, didn't change those facts for Ukraine. And they absolutely are not going to change our continued support. So with that, I'm happy to take a few questions. Um, what implications do you expect this episode to have on Wagner's um, power and ability, both inside Ukraine as a fighting force, can it continue to be a fighting force inside Ukraine, but also more broadly in Africa, where they, they have a big footprint. Where, where does Wagner, do you think, go from here? Do you have the early read on that? No, we don't. And we, we, we don't know the answer to your question. It's just too soon to know. Uh, um, we recognize that uh, Wagner still has a presence in Africa. I think you know we have uh, worked to hold Wagner uh, accountable. They are listed as a transnational criminal organization. We have sanctioned them. Uh, we will continue to take those actions that are appropriate uh, to try to limit their ability to conti continue to sow chaos and, and violence, wherever it is. Um, but it's just too soon to know, after the weekend's events, where Wagner goes as an entity um, uh, or, or where, where Mr. Prokosian goes in terms of his leadership of it. Do you know where Prokosian is? I don't. Uh, Ukraine is warning that Russia has completed preparations to potentially blow up the Zaporizhia nuclear power station. Is that your assessment as well? Uh, I'm not going to get into specific intelligence. I would tell you that we're watching this very closely, seen that reporting. Um, uh, we're, uh, we have, uh, as you know, uh, the ability near the plant to, uh, to monitor radioactivity, uh, and we just haven't seen any indication uh, that that threat is imminent, but we're watching it very, very closely. And more broadly, as Secretary Blinken said, this has exposed cracks in, in Putin's power. Uh, how concerned are you that Putin could now be more desperate, more unpredictable, to the point that he could take more extreme measures to try and maintain his grip on power? Yeah, I won't speak for Vladimir Putin or hypo hypothesize about what uh, next steps he might take or, or, or might not take. Um, I think it's important to take a step back here and remember that the Russians still have tens of thousands of troops inside Ukraine. And that, as I said in my opening statement, there's still active fighting going on. Um, uh, the Ukrainians are still trying to claw back territory. The Russians are still vigorously trying to defend uh, against those efforts by the Ukrainians. And casualties are being taken, even as you and I are talking. And I think it's important to remember that. 
So what we're going to stay focused on is making sure that Ukraine can continue to succeed on the battlefield and not speculate uh, about what this might or might not do on the political spectrum inside Russia. As President Biden said very well earlier, this is an internal uh, matter for the Russian system. Gotcha. Um, John, do you see President Putin as being weakened as a result of this event of the weekend? Again, we're focused on what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, th this is a, an internal R Russian matter. Um, and uh, I think it's important to remember that Mr. Putin still commands a very large and a very capable military. And the bulk of that military is across the border in Ukraine. And that military is defending itself against Ukrainian attacks. And we've got to stay focused on what really matters mostly in front of us, and that's helping Ukraine succeed on the battlefield. And that's what we're going to do. Whether there were U.S. Russia military to military contacts over this? I, I, all I can tell you is that we, through various diplomatic channels, conveyed, uh, uh, conveyed those messages to, to Russia uh, directly. One, that there was no U.S. involvement here, nor will, nor will there be or would there be. Um, and that we expect Russia to observe its obligations, its international obligations, for the protection of diplomatic personnel inside Moscow. Do you have any Actually, throughout the country. Just a last follow-up on that. Do you have any indication that Russia thinks that the U.S., what, the, US the West, NATO, et cetera, were involved? Well, I, I, I can't begin to speculate what Russians think uh, or what Mr. Putin I'm thinks. Emphasizing that as because, the president. Yeah, look, we saw... Uh, uh, we, we saw some social media activity by Foreign Minister Lavrov, who seemed to allude that uh, some sort of investigation was in the offing uh, at the suspicion of uh, the involvement of Western intelligence services. And I think we could all spare Mr. Lavrov the, the effort by just making it clear there was no U.S. involvement whatsoever, no Western involvement. I wanted to follow up that, that as well. Given the emphasis both you and the President have made today, um, do you think that that uh, issue of U.S. involvement or our ability to know that some of, something was going to happen in advance uh, contributes to the instability of the moment? The, we're all concerned by any potential for instability in Russia, given the stakes and given what's going on uh, in, in Ukraine. Um, and I'm not going to talk about uh, intelligence matters one way or the other here. Uh, the rift between Mr. Prigozhin and the Wagner Group and the Russian Ministry of Defense was playing, the Ministry of Defense was playing out in public for all of you to see. Uh, the, the tensions, the frustrations, the, the anger, uh, the accusations all played out publicly. Uh, that, that was no secret whatsoever. Um, now, what that tension does inside Russia, again, that's, uh, that's an internal Russian matter. What we've got to do is not get distracted by that and make sure that we're focused on supporting Ukraine. I want to follow up on, on a different subject briefly. Um, at the question and answer event with President and Prime Minister Modi, our colleague Sabrina Siddiqui of the Wall Street Journal asked a question of the Prime Minister. And since that time, she has been subjected to some intense online harassment from people inside India. Some of them are politicians. They have associations with the pro-Modi government. And in part, they've been targeting her because of her uh, Muslim faith and questioning her own heritage. Uh, because this was supposed to be about democracy and uh, in some form, wanted to find out what is the White House reaction to the fact that a journalist posing a question to a Democratic leader is getting that kind of pushback? We're aware of uh, the reports uh, of that harassment. It's unacceptable. And we absolutely condemn any harassment uh, of journalists anywhere, under any circumstances. Um, that's just uh, that's completely unacceptable. It's antithetical to uh, the very principles of democracy that, uh, that, that, that you're right uh, were on display last week uh, during the state visit. Go ahead, Richard. Thank you, uh, Kirby. Um, so do you agree that the counteroffensive, the Ukraine counteroffensive, has gone more slowly than expected? And do you feel, do you analyze that, um, considering the uh, Wagner Group will be busy doing something else, that it will help this counteroffensive? I don't know what the Wagner Group's going to be busy doing here. Again, I think it's too soon to Amr's question. It's just too soon to know how this is going to play out, whether uh, in Africa or elsewhere, certainly in Ukraine. And I am not, uh, I have said before, 
and I'll say it again today, I'm not going to do armchair quarterback into the counteroffensive from, uh, from this podium. That's up to President Zelensky to speak to. They, our focus is on making sure that they have what they need to succeed, whether it's training, tools, equipment. And you're going to see uh, another round of support announced from this administration for Ukraine in terms of weapons and capabilities this week. So we are focused on that. That's, that's what uh, – that's where our heads are. And just to make sure, Kirby, that I understand well, the NSC, how much did the NSC knew about the development, the, the development of this, of this uh, uh, Wagner movement towards Moscow before it started? Yeah, as I think I m mentioned to, to Kelly, the, the dispute and the tension between Wagner and the Russian Ministry of Defense was widely known. Uh, it was public. Rolling towards Moscow. It, it was all, all that tension was public. I'm not going to talk about intelligence matters. Thank you. Thank you. No, go ahead, Ed, and then we'll go to the back. Okay. Ed, goes first. Thank you, John. Thank you for doing this. So, what should we call what transpired over the weekend? I think, Is uh, it a mutiny? Coup? I have the answer to that. Rebellion? We're not slapping a <laughs> bumper sticker on it, Ed. Oh, come on. Come on. A weekend uh, mutiny. Short-lived mutiny. Was the objective ever really to directly threaten Putin or the Kremlin? I'm sorry, can you say that again? In the U.S.'s assessment, I'm not was a it bumper ever sticker on the it. Wagner Group's intent to oh. directly target Putin or the Kremlin? Uh, again, I would let the parties speak for themselves here in terms of what transpired and what motivations there were for these actions. That's not something that we could accurately or even appropriately speak to. What I can speak to is we made sure that we lashed up early and have stayed lashed up with our allies and partners to make sure we all have the same kind of perspective on this and we're approaching it from the same way, um, and that we made pro appropriate communications with the Russians about our, their obligations to protect our diplomats and to make sure that they knew we weren't involved. You were describing early attempts to communicate with the Russians about what happened. Did they respond in real time to any of that outreach? There were appropriate diplomatic discussions that occurred over the course of the weekend, again, to send those two messages. So is the U.S. confident the Russians would be responsive in the event of a nuclear or other real crisis, given how they were this weekend? I would just tell you, Ed. Uh, I'm glad they're showing the, the people the asking the questions, because I mean, they all kind of sound the same that we have been, today. I don't know why. Uh, monitoring as best we can. Russian I'm turning it on after him. I, I went poop their instead of pee, but now they're still talking Russia, continues. Ukraine. But and we've seen so no we'll, indication. we'll finish Kirby. Outside of the blustery rhetoric, we've seen no indication uh, that there's any intent to use nuclear weapons inside Ukraine. And I can also assure you that we've done nothing. We've seen nothing that would that would compel us to change our own strategic okay. deterrent posture. But just given how the interactions went over the weekend, you're confident they'd respond in real time if there was some other kind of we had We had good, uh, direct communications with the Russians over the course of the weekend. It's our expectation that that would be able to continue going forward. Just to button up real quick, given all that interaction this weekend, what you guys have seen, can you say right now who's in charge of the Russian military? The Russian military, uh, I mean, first of all, I, I, I wouldn't, it's not my job to speak for another military, uh, but there's absolutely no indication uh, that there's been any changes that we've seen in the chain of command for the Russian military forces. John, back. John. Oh, thanks, Corrine. Uh, John, um, the NATO summit is just a few weeks away. How have the events of this past weekend in any way changed or modified the agenda for the NATO summit? I think it's, again, too soon here. This just happened over the weekend. So uh, I think I'd be fibbing to you if I told you that there was some sort of big agenda item uh, changed because of what happened over the weekend. We'll, we'll have to see how this plays out. Uh, it's just too soon to know what the impacts are. Uh, it's going to be an important NATO summit regardless because we are now, you know, almost a year and a half into war here in Ukraine. Uh, we've got a new NATO member uh, in Finland and hopefully soon uh, a 32nd member. Uh, so there's an awful lot on the agenda to speak to, and it's a critical time for the alliance. The president's looking forward to it. The administration subscribe to the view uh, as it relates to Russian leadership, uh, who uh, essentially leads that country, that the devil you know is better than the devil that you don't know. I'm not sure I completely understand the, the, the question, but let me tack it this way. And if I'm wrong, because okay, yeah, you, you lost me there a little bit on well, the devil stuff. Well, so I could be sorry, more specific, sir. That. I was just simply saying, would you prefer to have 
Vladimir Putin leading Russia or an entity like the Wagner Group or someone uh, named from the Wagner Group leading the Russian government? We believe it's up to the Russian people to determine who their leadership is. And we would prefer uh, to see uh, uh, Russia not invade their neighboring countries. Uh, we would prefer to see Russia, since they already did that, remove all their troops from Ukraine uh, and end the war today, which they could do. That's what we prefer. Justin. Thanks. Uh, John, you said a number of times you've declined to comment on you know, Putin's grip on power in Russia by saying it's an internal Russian matter. Is that a deliberate decision by the U.S. government to avoid contributing to the notion that the U.S. was somehow behind this? Or does the White House simply not have an assessment at this moment of his grip on power? Uh, we're just not going to involve ourselves uh, in speaking to uh, an internal domestic uh, Russian issue right now. Uh, we're staying focused on supporting Ukraine. Um, and the I just want to disavow you of any idea that the reason why we're saying we weren't involved has something to do with not wanting to comment about the situation in Moscow and Mr. Putin's leadership. It, it, it was important to say it for the, on the face of it, that we weren't involved and we have no intention of being involved. What we are going to be involved in is supporting Ukraine. And then there's been uh, you know, Brent crude increase this morning. There was uh, higher uh, European natural gas prices. Uh, how closely is the administration monitoring uh, potential energy price shocks as a result of instability in Russia? Been watching it since the beginning of the war, actually before the beginning of the war, and we'll continue to do that. April. John, I want to kind of get into the weeds um, off of Jeff's question on weakness. Are you concerned about the instability in Russia because of the nuclear capability, if they have to come out stronger, they could use that. Is that the reason for your uh, concern about instability? I think you got to take a broader view of that, April. I mean, uh, the, the reason we're, we're we would You're be going a little lower, but it's been doing this for like Russia 30 minutes is, now. Uh, the war in Ukraine predominantly. Yes, Russia is a nuclear power, and yes, that's of concern, and yes, we continue to monitor that. But I mean, I just think you, if, you, if you look at, uh, at the scope of, of recent events, again, over the past year and a half, um, there's a lot of reasons to be concerned about stability in Russia and the impact that that could have on the Ukrainian people and on the European continent. And, and as you said, over the last year and a half, going back to what Jeff said, this administration acknowledged that they were shocked that it took Russia so long. They have not shown to be the power, the military might, that everyone thought they were. And then what happens this weekend, does it show cracks in Russia's military might and who they are as we perceive them? Yeah, I, again, I'm not going to... We're, we're not going to characterize uh, the, the events of the weekend or be able to contextualize it for you beyond what we've said weekend before. Mutiny. It's just too soon to know what impacts this is going to have um, on Ukraine uh, and on Russia, quite frankly, throughout Europe. It's just too soon to know. Um, but broadly speaking, I mean, we're now in 16 months of war, a, a war that was advertised by the Russian side as only going to be taken a few days. Uh, and now we're 16 months into it. Uh, clearly, you don't need me to tell you, but the, the history of this conflict has shown that the Russian military is not as, as vaunted as perhaps uh, they wanted to characterize themselves as. But, and this is a big but, and I think it's an important point to make, um, uh, as Ukraine uh, conducts offensive operations this summer to claw back some of that territory, they are running into a Russian defense, um, and uh, the Russians have invested in those defensive capabilities. Uh, and so, as I said in my opening statement, casualties are being taken on both sides. There's a lot of active fighting right now in the east and the south of the country. And again, not to sound like a broken record, but what we're trying to do is make sure that the Ukrainians have everything they need to be successful in that fight. Good job. John, is the president at all disappointed that this episode came and went and Vladimir Putin's still in power? The president is focused on supporting Ukraine. Uh, we didn't, we're not taking sides in, in this internal matter. Uh, the president is going to make sure that we're staying focused on Ukraine. He did say, though, in March 2022, for God's sake, he did this man say did not that. remain in power. Regime this change. This might have changed that. Regime change is not our policy. We've been very, very clear about that. Uh, what we're focused on is making sure Ukraine can succeed on the battlefield. What was his demeanor like when he was getting the hour to hour updates? Uh, look, I wasn't with the president when he was getting these, so I'm not sure I'm qualified to speak to his demeanor. Uh, uh, as you know, the president um, uh, very keenly tracks foreign policy developments around the world. 
his national security team was gi giving him updates literally hour by hour throughout the weekend, um, and he was absorbing all that information and making sure that in the context of absorbing it, he was also sharing our perspectives with allies and partners. And as I said, those conversations, uh, they did, it wasn't just one and done. He's had several over the course of the last couple of uh, days, and you're going to see that continue going forward. And one last one on the, on the conversations with our allies. You had said um, we were not going to get involved with these events. Um, we would okay. not at any point. But if you this didn't hit a new low, but you're moving up and bonds, second highest point of the day. How that would be addressed. I wouldn't speculate on hypotheticals, Jackie. I, I, I wouldn't get into hypotheticals. They were talking about the situation as we were seeing it unfold. They were communicating with each other, our allies and partners, about their perspectives, what they were seeing, what we were seeing, sharing as much context as we could, um, and making sure that we all had sort of the same sight picture uh, and that we were uh, basically all reacting in real time in roughly the same way. It was important for that, uh, for that to be the case. And so that's really where the focus was. Uh, on the nuclear thing, I mean, again, I'm not going to hypothesize here, but we continue to watch this very, very closely. Um, uh, we've seen a lot of reckless rhetoric coming out of the Russian side. We watch it closely. We just have seen no indication that Mr. Putin uh, has any intention of using nuclear weapons inside Ukraine or anywhere else for that matter. Um, and I can assure you we have done nothing to change our own strategic deterrent posture when it comes to that, to that potential threat. Okay, okay. Okay. John, just on the Prigozhin status, uh, does the U.S. have any uh, assessment on whether his safety was insured as part of this deal, or is there a belief that his life could be in jeopardy? We don't know the parameters of this deal. We weren't a party to it. Ford's uh, on the high. To the parties to it to, to speak to the, the details of it. We just don't have this. Yeah, ability. Ford's moving up right now. Just in terms of the war itself, uh, do you have an assessment of just how much, to what extent, the Wagner's forces have been diluted in Ukraine and what that might mean for the Ukrainian troops? Diluted with a D or diluted with a T? The team, just in terms of the the size of the force in Ukraine now, as you know, as opposed to uh, last. Oh, it means siphoned week. off. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, it's unclear uh, right now where the bulk of the Wagner forces are. I mean, we've seen some reporting, um, mostly through uh, press and social media, that uh, that many of them moved back across into Ukraine. Uh, but we're not in a position to verify or validate those reports. So it's, it's really unclear where they all are and where they all might go or what they might do in, in terms of the future. Um, un, it's in, in disputed, of, of course, undisputed, of course, that Wagner played a role, particularly in the fight for Bakhmut. Um, they were reinforced by Russian military forces, and that had a, a major factor on their ability to, to take that town. Um, but as I have said, many, many times. I mean, Wagner's approach here was just to throw bodies at the fight, largely ill-trained, ill-equipped, um, and poorly led, but just body after body after body. And they suffered a lot, tens of thousands of casualties just tra just taking back moot, uh, all for a town, which I've also said, uh, didn't have any strategic value to the Russians one way or another. Nadia, thank you. Uh, can you confirm that Mr. Kortorjian is in Belarus as no. Senator uh, Warner? seems to indicate. I cannot. Okay. Uh, can you give us your assessment of the group? Can it survive without him? Or do you think that he was a central figure, that he was able to control it, all its operation yeah. whether it's in Ukraine or in Africa? I think I'd give you the same answer I gave Amr. It's just too soon to know what the future of Wagner is going to be. We're going to stay focused on the group. Of course, we have to. Uh, they, they do operate outside uh, of Ukraine, and uh, we have levied uh, uh, lots of sanctions against them, and we'll continue to hold them accountable as, as appropriate. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, thanks John. Um, earlier today, President Biden said that he would be speaking with additional heads of state this Good year's on the high. I wonder if you can give us any And GM, remember Ford was just up who, there. The substance, the timber of those conversations about whether what he's trying to convey today is different or yeah. evolving from what he's trying to convey over the, the weekend. The call that uh, he was alluding to earlier uh, is to the Prime Minister of Italy, uh, Prime Minister Maloney, and that call should be taking place just about now. We'll give you a readout when it's over, but it'll be very much in keeping with the kinds of readouts you've seen over the last 48 hours. John, um, Prigozhin, in his first message since all this came down, went down, said that he wanted to avoid Russian bloodshed and that he marched in a demonstration of protests. 
uh, not to overturn power in the country. Okay, this is like the, the most vertical power. you've seen. We're since not 12. taking a position on Mr. Prigozhin's motivation. But it's still below VWAP. Bonds are coming down a little. Has the U.S. been able to corroborate? Still, just uh, questions the about Russia. that Prigozhin made that he says were the pretext for this uh, attempted insurrection. He said that 30 Wagner fighters died after a Russian military attack on their position on Friday. Can I confirm those reports? And then, lastly, um, do you, do you have any? I know you've said that you have no idea where Prigozhin is right now. Is that correct? That's correct. What's your What's your sense of where this goes? Do you believe that this is over now? That his attempted insurrection failed? It's not going to restart again? Or are you still monitoring for the possibility that Wagner fighters might attempt something like this again? We don't know. We don't know where this goes, uh, or whether this is really the end. Which is why we are going to continue to monitor it, and why the president is. Again, yeah, Apple's just stayed uh, pin here since the and same. Kind of looks like the market. Quickly, Apple just looks do you more have tighter. Any sense of whether Ukraine was able to take advantage of this chaos uh, over over the weekend? I'm not sure what you mean by take advantage of it. Take advantage in, from a military standpoint in terms of their offensive in the east of Ukraine. Again, I would let the Ukrainians speak to their military operations. All I would say, and I, and and it's why I wanted to put it right up top when I started here, is that there's a lot of fighting going on in the east and south of Ukraine. They are still trying to get uh, the territory back from the Russians, and they are still inflicting and taking casualties. So the fight goes on. Now, how much and to what degree it, in any given area that fighting was adjusted or changed, slowed down or sped up as a result of the weekend. I just couldn't speak to it. Certainly nothing discernible from our perspective, but again, the uh, Ukrainians would have to speak to their operations. Um, earlier today, the president said that he and allies had talked about um, planning for several different scenarios over the course of the weekend. Could you speak to some of those scenarios? No. <laughs> um, and he and President Zelensky have communicated yesterday. No. Have they spoken today? Uh, Good answer, though. Good answer. Good answer. There's not been another conversation with President Zelensky since the, the, the one that we've already read out to you that occurred yesterday. Um, but as you heard the President say, he does expect to be speaking again with President Zelensky very, very soon. And of course, we'll read that out to you when it happens, as we always do. Thanks. John, uh, the president uh, earlier today and you here and broadcast the message that was sent by the West privately to Putin. Is there a message that you would send publicly to the people of Russia? This says, it, I, I think, you know, the best thing I could do is point you back to the, the president's speech uh, when we went to Warsaw. Hey, watch if the tech stocks catch a bit here. Ago. And they've all the been pinned at the low energy. Russia. Real and estate, they're every, those are the leading industries today. And still be our today. message today. That, that they're still killing is, it, so if tech could bounce up a little bit, what this doing might give you enough to at least Ukraine try VWAP. Is with the Kremlin and the Russian military. And of course I didn't think this would go this long. I was ready to turn this dude off. It's not I didn't, I was, we were not going to listen to the press um, secretary, it, it, but it's not with they've the definitely men, asked a lot of questions on this Russia mutiny thing. And who didn't make this rash and reckless and illegal decision to invade a neighboring country in a completely unprovoked way. Thank you. Um, can we just talk about the White House's assessment of other nations' reactions to whatever we're calling this thing over the weekend, specifically Tehran's reaction, Beijing's reaction, and um, New Delhi? Did, did Washington engage with any of those three? And then also, we know that the NSC had meetings in Copenhagen this weekend with BRICS countries. Has Can you just tell us what came out of that and whether they've adjusted their posture on So on your first question, uh, as we have these uh, conversations, certainly at the president's level or at the cabinet level, they will be read out to you. So I don't have any other conversations to speak to. And I certainly would not get into the business of characterizing another country's attitudes or reflections or perspectives. They can speak for themselves. Uh, we've been very focused on how we're looking at this and um, and how we're tracking things. Um, on the uh, on the meeting in uh, Copenhagen, I think you know uh, the National Security Advisor attended virtually, and Senior Director for Europe Amanda Sloat was there in person in Copenhagen. It was a meeting. Uh, I never said uh, any of that. Rob. Called by the Ukrainians. <laughs> Hosted by but we're having some uh, issues Denmark, with it today. It was a Ukrainian meeting, uh, and it was really about uh, having a discussion uh, about the principles of peace and this idea of a just peace and where that can go and what's the right next steps to try to achieve uh, a just peace uh, in Ukraine. And it was uh, a valuable discussion. Uh, I'm told productive. Uh, and uh, hey, this is the highest you've been in a couple a hours now. Variety of, of 
countries that that were there. I don't think you're above you know, the level though. From all over the world. No, you literally we have to go 15 points. So you need to go way above VWAP to even get to the next but level. Our UPS was, on the high was, too. Uh, Again, Tesla tech, the video is all coming up. Worth having that discussion. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Admiral. What does the White House make? On, it's on the Middle East. Uh, what does the White House make of um, Prime Minister Netanyahu's call today to eradicate? the idea of establishing a Palestinian state and uh, to cut off the Palestinian aspirations regarding establishing one? I haven't seen those comments, so um, uh, I'm going to refrain from a specific reaction to them until I've had a chance to see them and, uh, and look at them and discuss that with, uh, with the rest of the team. I will only say that the, the President remains committed to uh, the value and the viability of a two-state solution. Uh, HD still going again, right up to VWAP now. Just like Poland and Lithuania, uh, neighboring Belarus, about possible movement. I didn't think they were going to ask as many questions. To Belarus. Us. You just said that you don't know crazy. where they are, but will you be able to track them? And if there is a movement of Wagner's group's soldiers to Belarus, uh, would it require strengthening? Eastern flank of NATO, just in case. And uh, on another topic, is there any movement on Sweden's uh, membership to NATO? Are there any signs that may suggest that Sweden may join NATO before Vilnius summit? The president's still optimistic that they will. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming him in the alliance. The conversations between Sweden and Turkey continue. We encourage that dialogue. Uh, and we hope that uh, it will very soon come to a, a positive conclusion. On your first question, uh, we, we just don't know what the future is here for Wagner and, and where those troops are going to go, what they're going to do. We just don't know. So this idea of tracking them, I mean, I, I, I couldn't begin to answer that question for you uh, with specificity. What we are going to track is what's going on inside Ukraine. And we're going to make sure that we're also in constant communication with the Ukrainians about what they need to be successful. That's where the focus is. Now, on your question about the eastern flank, we have already bolstered the eastern flank. President Biden ordered an additional 20,000 American troops uh, to the eastern flank of NATO, and they have stayed there. So we now have about 100,000 American troops uh, on the European continent, the most since you know, World War II. Uh, and uh, that's a significant presence, and we're going to continue to evaluate that with our allies uh, along that flank. To, you know, if we have to adjust, we'll, we'll adjust. But there's already been a significant contribution by the United States to the, to the eastern flank of NATO. concerns about security of uh, NATO summit in Vilnius if Wagner's troops uh, move to bread Belarus? Uh, again, I, that's a hypothetical I can't possibly answer in terms of where they're going to go. But we're looking forward to a productive NATO summit, and of course, uh, security for summits like that are always a prime concern for all the nations involved. Thanks. A couple questions. Um, the fact that this Wagner convoy could travel a main highway without being stopped by any kind of air power, does that reflect to you any kind of issues with Russian command and control? I, I can't speak to that. Secondly, in terms of the kind of Ukrainian counteroffensive, um, what's your assessment of the pace of how that's going? Is that going slower than it should be? President Zelensky himself, I think, spoke publicly last week, saying that uh, uh, you know that natural it's, it's gas ends at a 16-week high uh, than he would have liked. He's the commander in chief. You know, he gets to make those determinations and he gets to give those orders. Um, as I said earlier, the Russians have invested a lot in the last six, eight months in terms of defensive capabilities. Um, in some cases, their defensive lines are three deep. And by three deep, I don't mean just three feet. I mean miles and miles and miles deep, but three big lines of uh, defense. Um, they knew that the Ukrainians were going to want to take back territory in the spring and summer hey, months, tech. And, they, and they worked to prepare it. Um, I would just watch tech. Is, or you, unless energy and staples flip. You, or real estate, VNQ. Uh, and so the Ukrainians are running into Russian defenses. Um, and it... And by President Zelensky's own, in his own analysis, it, it, has, uh, it has slowed them down a little bit. Is there a possibility or even a hope on the U.S. side here that the instability that we're seeing kind of in Russia between this and Wagner, that that weakens, I guess, the Russian defense? Again, too soon to know. Just too soon to know. Just a couple more things. Just a couple. You said that when I was done pooping. Uh, so can you please expand? I hurried up my poop, and then he took 20 more questions. The 
impact of the developments in Russia on the it's war amazing. in Ukraine and whether it signals the beginning of the end for the war? Uh, again, I, I think it's, uh, not to sound like a, a broken record, but it's just too soon to know what the impact uh, to the war in Ukraine is going to be as a result of the events over the last weekend. Um, and I, I just don't know that it would be helpful to speculate that. I, I do want to keep centering you, though, and reminding you that there are tens of thousands of Russian troops and vehicles and capabilities, Robo. air and ground, in fact, and sea, uh, that they have still available to them to try to defend against Ukrainian offensive operations. And they are doing that. I mean, even as all this stuff happened over the course of the weekend, there was fighting inside Ukraine from these two forces. How concerned are you at this point that Putin could take any more extreme measures to demonstrate his control? That's going to be a decision for Vladimir Putin to make, and I wouldn't begin to speculate about what that might be. We have been watching. This is uh, like right. This is at the, the opening Russian candle. Actions and then the low of Friday since the beginning of the, actually before the beginning of the war. Um, Interesting. And one thing that we have uh, always talked about, unabashedly so is that it's in nobody's interest for this war to escalate beyond the level of violence it has already visited upon the Ukrainian people. That's not good for, certainly Ukraine, not good for uh, uh, our allies and partners in Europe. Quite frankly, it's not good for the Russian people. Dan Sebastian. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, during, this, during this whole drama, was the administration uh, happy, content, that all the nuclear weapons in Russia were like totally under control the whole time? Or was that actually something that was beginning to worry people over on this side, um, given the chaos and briefly actual complete no one having a clue who's in charge anymore. Happy and content are two words I don't normally associate with monitoring nuclear activity. Kicks, you know, in different ways, uh, you know? <laughs> not us. Uh, look, we monitor this very closely. And all I can tell you is uh, that we've seen no indication that Mr. Putin is interested in moving in that direction. Uh, and nor have we seen anything that would cause us to change our own deterrent posture. That's really as far as I can go on that. No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to question It's weird, so Friday, Putin, MPW had a price rather, target increase. Was, was a I'm wondering, because all real estate names are up, but some are more than others. Totally sure but Friday, charged. MPW increased $13 from 9 so by Truist. That period. As I said, instability in Russia is something that you know we would take seriously. And we oh, certainly had lots of questions over the and course LMT, of the LMT, all these war questions. No LMT action. the situation in Russia and the issue of stability. Um, and we did have, and were able to have uh, in real time, uh, through diplomatic channels, conversations with Russian officials um, about, uh, about our concerns. I, can't, I just have to leave it at that. Given the, the role that uh, Belarus appeared to play, at least in ending this uprising, it, does that give any new insight from your vantage point on the relationship between Putin and Lukashenko? I don't think so. I mean, Lukashenko and, and Belarus have, you know, basically been a, a surrogate for uh, Mr. Putin and for Russia uh, for quite some time, certainly before this war started. And Belarus has, even though they have not actively involved themselves in the fighting, they have certainly uh, allowed Belarusian soil to be used for staging activities, for the launching of attacks inside uh, Ukraine for the storage of of, uh, of uh, Russian capabilities. I mean, they have they have been an enabler for for Mr. Putin. So I, I don't know that there was a lot of shock or surprise. All this that, Kirby talk uh, that Mr. Lukashenko got involved. But again, I'd I'd let those parties speak to that. Okay, last question, way back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, John. Uh, do you believe this uh, instability in Russia uh, will have an impact on Beijing's relations with Moscow? Do you hope? that China's support for the Kremlin will decline as a result we, of this? I let, we'll let P, the PRC and President Xi speak for himself. Uh, we don't want to see any country at all support Mr. Putin and make it easier for him to kill more Ukrainians. We want to see every country around the okay, world hot take. sign up and actually implement the But that guy that I do the voice of, sanctions. the microwave voice, um, uh, not provide this is how he sounded when he was uh, younger. Ability, uh, for Mr. Putin to continue Hot to take. operate I know. his, his I war know. machine. And we have communicated that not just to the PRC, but to, to other countries all, all around the world. Now, what they do about this is going to be for them to speak to. All I can do is tell you what President Biden's focused on, and that's making sure, A, we're staying. Oh. That's the first time it cut out all day. 
uh, not provide any uh, ability uh, for Mr. Putin to continue to operate his, his war machine. And we have communicated that not just to the PRC, but to, to other countries all, all around the world. Now, what they do about this is going to be for them to speak to. All I can do is tell you what President Biden's focused on, and that's making sure, A, we're staying. We were doing so good. We were doing so good, Chad. We were doing so good. I think that might be it. I think that might be it. We might be out out of here. It's the last question. Just all uh, war questions. Not provide Very. any uh, ability uh, for Mr. Putin to continue to operate his, his war machine. And we have communicated that not just to the PRC, but to, to other countries all, all around the world. Now, what they do about this is going to be for them to speak to. All I can do is tell you what President Biden's focused on, and that's making sure, A, we're staying. Okay, it just it cuts out at the same spot. All right, we're going to wrap it up there. It's very interesting. A uh, lot of questions. It was only supposed to be one or two questions about it. Everybody, they, they won't even call it. At least Kirby doesn't call it the weekend mutiny, but that's how uh, all other financial media has referred to it. But it was uh, it was a lot of questions. Um, I would even argue, I don't know, I feel like they took way more questions about this issue than they did on the, uh, on the day that the uh, dam got blown up a couple weeks ago. So I think the dam was kind of a, a, a bigger issue in its own weird way. This is just the fact that it's a political mutiny or it could possibly threaten something that Putin's doing. But there's a lot of questions in the U.S. I mean, as, as compared to a lot of other things, we, we took the stance of, hey, man, we ain't getting involved. You do it. We don't know. We don't know what to say. We don't have a plan. A lot of things can happen. We ain't going to tell you about what things can happen. I cannot talk about that. And that is it. So... A lot of questions towards it. Clearly, it's a big issue. I think the next steps moving forward. I mean, I I still think whatever happens with like the grain deal and all of that will be key. And then we're probably just like the day after the the dam, we're gonna be waiting to see. Okay, what's the next step? Does this lead into anything? But you've had a lot of talk about this so far, and that's what just dominated uh, a majority of that press conference there so far. I think Corinne is gonna go on, and then they're gonna have uh, have normal questions after that. Russia was so close to falling. Um, is that? I think that's why you probably have more people talking about it. Uh, if that's the case, I, I just think it's a very, uh, it's definitely a development. Again, there's a lot of things that people are suspecting on both ends. Mm. Calling normal questions. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess <laughs> like normal, just not about Russia, I guess. Maybe that's non-Russia related. That'd be a better way to describe it. Russia close to, well, that's what people were, that's why people were excited about it yesterday or, or over the weekend. Cause people were like, oh my gosh, this Wagner group is fighting. Oh my gosh. If they, if they take over and now Putin is weak and then now that's it. And then now they're like, what happens if Putin dies? Putin is fleeing like literally over the weekend, bro. Like even my girlfriend was like, did you hear that Vladimir Putin is fleeing in his jet? And I'm like, no, he's not. <laughs> I'm like, no, shut up, girl. No, come on. Like, and then, but then you see it. Then that's what all the headlines were. It was a lot of drama over the weekend. And then ultimately now it's like, okay, so then it was nothing all of a sudden, or at least it was something, but it was nothing, but it was something, but it was nothing. Somebody went to jail. Some people will, some people won't. Now he's friends with him. So yeah. Acting like Putin would just die is kind of stupid. No, nah, not really. In a weird way. I mean, I feel like God is a humbling individual. <laughs> I feel like Putin is going like, Putin would just die on some weird shit. It ain't going to be related to the war. He's just going to like trip in the shower or some shit. And it won't even be like CIA related. That's it. Or maybe he's just like allergic to like honeybees. And then he got stung by the wrong honeybee. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying this. You, you, we've seen weirder shit, but you'd be surprised. Yeah, maybe like a bear wrestling accident. Yeah, that that seems possible too. You never know. It happens all the time in Russia. The bear didn't mean to do it. They were just wrestling, training for UFC 270. But you know, you never. Sometimes it gets it gets violent. You never know.
looking for Raul. That was loud. Sarepta, bro, energy all day. You need tech to ra rock it up here. Again, real estate, energy, go look at V&Q. Again, even MPW, I'm keeping that one up here. But they're all going up here. I think you just need Apple. You need all your big guys to move. But then there's just not enough here. It's not too bad. 0.6 on the NASDAQ, 0 0.9, 0 0.09 on the SPY. Dow is up and then Russell is up. Banks haven't really given us a problem either. You scalped a little rip. Good work. Man, what happened? What time is it? Chad just got crazy. I look over at the Twitch chat. It's like Michael Jackson was replaced with the alien. I look back over at the YouTube. It's like tin warning. I wouldn't be shocked if there's an ET base in the Bermuda Triangle. Now I'm like, what the fuck? Then they like, how did 25 soldiers almost take Russia out? And then I'm like, oh no, but then how did Ukraine even? And then I'm like, wait a and then, wait, what the fuck? So I don't know, man. I just chat is going crazy on both sides. I can't get around it right now. I'm like, look everywhere I look. And then I look at the market and it's still trippy too. I was just, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. MPW got a price upgrade on Friday. But then uh, real estate stocks are the best on the day. They're even doing better than energy today or give or take about the same. Uh, but real estate stocks are doing very well. I think it kind of has to do with interest rates because even though you're watching rates kind of sell off low key, longer end rates, even mortgage rates have been coming down here a lot or at least over the last six weeks. Mm-mm. All the AI fluff. Nah, I think it's still there, but it's just not, you know, you need the you need the next wave. But, like, just be careful what you wish for because, like, earnings is right around the corner. So, I don't know. I think the AI wave, it's, it's still there for a little bit. But, you don't, you haven't had the, uh, you need the second wind. Uh, but then again, the data we have arriving should be able to provide that. Okay, let me contribute to the Great Tin Drought. I think North Korea and South Korea are buddy-buddy under the table. North Korea acts as a nuke base for Asian countries, and if shit hits the fan, they got nukes. Hmm. Okay, I see your tin. I see it. Thank you for contributing to the, the, the tin drought. That's good. That's good. I think that was better than the Michael Jackson was an alien. I think, I think that one was definitely... I, I can see what you're saying with that one. Massimo shareholders to elect Politan two directors to the board. Uh, that's old. It was a couple minutes old. Mossy's already running up. Damn it. This wire thing is pissing me off today. Nick Timmy tweet. Yeah, so Moss, they're just electing somebody to the board. Stock's up 0.9. Trudeau saying something. My parents haven't heard of chat GPT. Once the boomers learn about it, it'll be the real pump. But do you think our parents are going to talk to the computer the way that we do? That's still, that's always a barrier. Like, I can never... I don't know, though. I told my mom she could use chat GPT to find stuff in the Bible. And she was like, oh, that's cool. But then she was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> but then I don't know. I don't know if I could see her talking to the chat GPT. Mossy's running. There's another headline hitting now. There's the Reuters headline. And then let me see. My other wire had it, too, five minutes ago. It just, again, it just didn't refresh. And then I'm going to check another one. Yeah, they had a press release on the directors 916. Wait, what? Oh, no, no, that was on June 20th. 
Uh, interesting. So it's not like too crazy. It's funny because you're getting uh, it just dropped. This is like that news effect. That actually makes a lot of sense. So like what what happened is on June 20th, there was like a bunch of press releases about the vote for the people on the board. So there's just reports coming down that, that they have the results early pretty much and that who's going to get elected. So it's weird. I think it just kind of it came across like it was bigger news than it was. But like three days, six days ago, they had the news on the nomination and who was being uh, uh, who was running for those seats. So now I think on the report that those two people are getting it uh, looks like shareholders like it. Mossy's going up. Mm. Roblo another leg up again. Mossy just got that new spies right below VWAP. And it's power hour. You got a little bit of time, baby. My mom asked me if we should sell her long term because of Fox was telling everyone Biden was ruining their retirement. I told her no. That was in October. <laughs> Just tell her to hold this. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. It's long term. Long term. That's it. Just yield curve. Long term, long term yield curve. Power hour. Uh, let's see some sectors. As of right before. No, this needs to update. But give or take, energy is number two. Real estate, number one. Telecom is doing good besides uh, the other communications like Google and Meta. And then uh, utilities, green, industrials, financials, staples, healthcare, discretionary, and tech are the only things red. How do you get out of the swing trading mindset for your long term? Make a separate account. That's why we do that. And just just remember, uh, once anything in the long term account, like you for real can't change your mind for 10 years. So once that's it, just set and forget, bro. Set and forget. If you make the decision, you better think about it a lot and then just hit it. It's all you got to do. It's all you got to do. Uh, Roof, not nah, just holding up. That Tritium murdered me. I got out of IHS with a small gain. That plays up to, that was the hostile takeover company from Friday. And Lucid just sold off all of the gains. That's it. It's holding up 3%, but that thing was up like 12, 15% earlier. VWAP test number two. We've been here a couple times, but just look today like we haven't gone above it <laughs> any other time. Uh, we've like we've we've sold it off like pretty strictly. Long term. It's good for you. It's good for you. Again, Uber, uh, the covered calls, they're still down. But, you know, if you're seeing Uber right now, you're going to love the rollover on that. Putin's speech tomorrow at 2210 Moscow time. For instance, I bought some Disney for the long term because I thought Frozen was dope. Indeed. I agree. I'm glad we got Disney. I mean, he's kind of been moving a little weird. came back up today, but that one's good. I would like to see PayPal do some more stuff, but we'll see. Do we sell by Bill? Nah, we're good. You don't need to do anything with Bill. Bill, like all of the drama, buy, sell, do this, this. No more debt ceiling issues. You got nothing to worry about. Only thing you have to worry about with Bill is if Powell cuts rates. And even then, it won't reflect on the bill for a couple of weeks or days because they already lock in their rates. You got an A790? Beautiful. I like it. Roblo going up again. But doesn't Roblo sell off at 40 every single time? I think Snap got above 11 today. That's kind of crazy. This is their earnings level, or I think they got to go to like 1140. 
MRSN, Lucidian, keeps getting clapped. Caesar's on the high. Ford as well, too. And then GM was running earlier, but yeah, Caesars is up 4%. Win is up 2 at Airbnb. Spies game volume. This will literally be the first time you went above VWAP since the morning. Again, you went above it here for a second, and then we sold off. And this was still... That was actually follow ever since the data, right when that uh, Dallas Fed came out. Uh, we started dropping on that. Mulan, big flight. Mm -mm. Wandering. Good morning. JP Morgan. JP. Thank you for putting us on bill. Great addition. I hope so. I hope I've gotten a lot less bill questions. I think uh, a lot of people have learned and learned to adopt it. So it's been good. It's been good. I started taking creatine. Oh, you feel pumped? Drink water. Drink water, my friend. There's Powell this week. Yeah, potentially we might get Powell twice. And then there's also John Williams. Uh, I even think Bullard and like three or two or other two or three other Fed speakers this week. But even then, you're going to hear Powell. You're going to hear Lagarde and a couple of other central bankers. You have Canada, CPI tomorrow, and then we even have durable goods. We actually have a lot of data tomorrow on the U.S. front. We got durable goods, house prices, new home sales, and then consumer or the conference board of consumer confidence. I think there's a couple of other things, too. The broadband funding, I don't know. That's why I was, I was actually... I don't know if we mentioned it, but it's like during Biden's like announcement, it's not like what we saw back in the beginning of Biden's administration where like all these new announcements were like tied to companies and we see things move. Surprisingly, I don't I don't think anything did good off of that. But telecoms are killing it today besides Google and Meta. So if you remove Google and Meta from the tech uh, or telecom, they're up like one percent, I believe. Mm. Here's how bad the financial advisor shortage is. That wealth management faces a talent shortened, but recent report puts hard numbers on the problem and offers guidance to advisory firms looking to recruit. The number of U.S. financial advisors grew by a net 2,500 in 2022 as the new number of entrants in the profession barely offset the number of retirements and trainee failures research from Cellurely Associates estimates on the June issue. Uh, but the figure stood at 288,000 at year end in 2021. So rookie failures, much of the problem is due to short tenures of many newcomers. Although 18,000 new trainees entered the business last year, 13,000 trainees failed, resulting in what has described as a 72% rookie advisor failure rate. Meanwhile, an estimated 2,400 advisors retired in 2022. That's crazy. Yeah, OpenAI sees ChatGPT as workplace personal assistant. The information. MO's at 44 right now. Oil calls. MO's like rocketing low key. Abivice still down. 3M trying to move up, but he hasn't done anything. Again, you got Walgreens earnings tomorrow. Yeah, it seems like the they're saying they're running out of financial advisors and a lot of people are retiring. So they're saying if 72% of people fail, the amount of new people entering the industry and staying is just as amount as, as the same amount of people retiring. The Hawaii thing, it's erupting. Didn't we see that? I think we heard that on Friday. Putin speaks. I just have a headline that says Putin speaks. <laughs> Wait, is Putin live right now? What time is it in Russia? Yeah, Putin to make important statements in three minutes. Yeah, Putin speaks. 
I have a headline saying he's he's talking live now. I don't know if I have a video. It's 2010 in Moscow. That's when he said he was scheduled to speak. Yeah, Putin is speaking live right now. Watch energy. Okay, I'm going to jail. Uh, I didn't. I just clicked on. I just thought it was the Putin live. I don't know. I just said sorry. I don't know what he said. That's it. Bro. I just got sanctioned. I just. I thought I clicked the wrong video. That's it. Now I can't even drive my cars. This is fucked. I never had a boat, but they said I can't even buy one now. Minister Abarone, Russia Federation. General Army Sergei Kujugetovich Shaigu. The fuck is this? Oh, Russian. He's meeting Давай graduates. This is a Russian military uh, academy. I think it's a. Is that it? Is that what he's speaking at? Oh, no. This is different. He's supposed to be there. Of society, a unification of society. And there has been a firm support of the constitutional order and by all the leading parties, virtually the entirety of Russian society, all of them have been united in the face of the responsibility to defend the homeland. All the necessary decisions were taken as promptly as possible in the light of this danger. The defense of the constitutional order and the lives and security of our citizens. The organizers of this rebellion this cannot but understand that they will be brought to justice. Everybody understands that. This is criminal activity, which is aimed at weakening the country, which, and this was a colossal threat. This is weird. From outside, we are threatened. So he's saying he's going to put people in jail, this, uh, but they didn't. They put Britney Griner in jail faster than a guy hosting a coup? Who no. Dragged into this organization. And this kind of suicide is precisely what the neo Nazis in Kiev and the West wanted. They wanted Russian soldiers should kill each other that servicemen and civilians be killed and in the final analysis that Russia should fail but our and they wanted our society to be fragmented is this a real person or an AI translator and they tried to take revenge for their uh, failure at the front but they slipped up they made a mistake yeah some of you are saying this isn't even live especially with regard to the so i'm not sure services i'm getting headlines though that match kind of what's being said maintained their oath to the country the courage his latest headline was he took all measure to neutralize danger organs, society is consolidated Russia. At the same time, we know that he says the mutiny organizers wanted to divide Russia. Majority of the Wagner company are also patriots of Russia. They have shown the so most of Wagner are also patriots. Defending Donbass. And yet were encouraged to fight against their, um, their compatriots and by turning back they avoided further bloodshed we have to think about same the streams on people CNN. who actually oh, yeah. decided to do this to make this step which would have had tragic and devastating consequences for the country for russia as a whole putin thanks commanders and soldiers of wagner who i should avoided like to bloodshed. thank those commanders yeah. and soldiers of the wagner private uh, company who took the right decision to stop and go back and prevent bloodshed 
And I urge everybody to make contact with the Ministry of uh, Defense or go back to their homes. This promise will be fulfilled. I repeat, it is the choice of each of you that it will be a choice of the warriors of Russia who have acknowledged their fault. I promise those of President Wagner who want to go to Belarus, I will be keep my also promise. for his uh, role in all this in order to achieve a peaceful resolution. It is the patriotic duty of everyone, the patriotic feeling of everyone which has saved us and has saved the country as a whole. Thank you. Well, that was President Vladimir Putin there speaking uh, to the nation the in uh, order to take Nah, the motherfucker, that shit was weird, bro. At the end, Maybe I'm just too American. That's as how he, he ends his the videos. Organizers of this rebellion, the rebellion. No, no, no. Ministry of Bro, that's uh, how he defense. ends his videos. Or he just stare. He don't even like smile. He don't wave. It just ends with the, with just like a, oh, like imagine if Biden, I Biden already hella weird sometimes, but like if Biden was just hella like, eh, eh, and just stared into the in my soul to the end of that. Though, I don't know how I feel about this. Of the. Yo, this is crazy, bro. It's hard to skip to the exact. That was a weird ending, though. No shout out to anything. No, that was just like he just, dude, he just stopped talking. And achieve a peaceful resolution. It is the patriotic. Okay, I can't listen to this. That was that was already intense. Well, there it was. Putin gave a update on it. A lot of things saying he's gonna pursue crimes against the people who revolted. They were trying to. We consolidated society, he said. They were trying to fragment Russia. Shout out to the people who avoided bloodshed. The fact that we are all nationalists is what kept us together. And the fact that it didn't lead to something bad. And I think that's it. I think that's all he said. Mm -mm. But no, it is. All of it's weird. I'm telling you. All of this is not... There's a lot of different theories for it, but it's just, uh, no, nah, it's just all of this is just weird because he should either, it's either, he should have either put the dude in jail by now or killed him. Uh, <laughs> I know you guys are like, he has an army or not, but all I'm just telling you is right now, as it stands in my book, is more of a crime to fly into Russia with a weed pen than try to hold a political coup, even if you have a, a little mercenary group again. Uh, but that's still kind of wild uh, with everything being said, the developments. They said he's promising the peace, all of it. Mm. You have no clue what you're talking about. Okay. So um, either way, we will see. Think bigger. Nah, I need to think slower. That's been uh, the thing I've been working on. Just, you know, I, I, there's a lot of ideas, and I, I could think a lot faster than the ship can move. So I'm going to just, you know, I got to you know, calm down for a little. You know, just calm and just vibe with it, you know. <laughs> Does this show weakness on Putin? Uh, it just depends on what really happened. <laughs> it's like it's like assuming uh, we know, like, again, imagine the last year and a half of everything that has happened in Russia. It's like assuming we actually know what happened 24 hours after something allegedly happened. So we don't know. We don't know if this is a real threat against Putin. We don't know if it's a plot of Putin. We, we don't know much. Even the U.S. is saying, hey, man, we don't know. We, go, we don't know yet either. So uh, just at this point, something happened in the last 48 to 72 hours. Something is developing and where it is, I mean, some people are saying it's, this is either the beginning of the next stage uh, or this is the beginning of the end of Putin. But unfortunately, I, I don't think uh, I think this scenario is just clouded uh, with a, with a lot of things because it's still very weird with with what just with what just happened. Uh, it's not again, it was a borderline political coup. And uh, they it's it's interesting when they do happen. I mean, I do think uh, again, 
in Turkey, we've seen this. I think it was 2018. Uh, you, do you guys remember that? It was like in Turkey, 2018, president was, fl- he was, he was actually fleeing on his jet. Uh, and then the military, they, they had fighter jets. They were about to shoot him down. It was actually crazy, uh, honestly, but then they didn't. And then nothing happened. And then they everything went back to normal in like two days. It was very weird, but, oh no, was that 2016? It was 2016, excuse me, not 2018. I think it was 2016. It was whenever they had, I think they had Erdogan, and they literally had him. They had him in the jet. They had the presidential jet being trailed behind two military fighter jets that were taken over by the military. Again, it was a military coup, and then they just, all of a sudden, they fell back. (laughs) <laughs> and then nothing, and then overnight, everything chilled out. And, I mean, to this day, now you have, you still have Erdogan. Yeah, 2016. Gulen made the move against Erdogan, uh-huh. Yeah, 2016, excuse me, I was saying 2018. No, but that one was the crazy one because, like, str- like straight up, that's, like, one of those weird instances where, one... Overnight, you have a a military coup. If you don't know it, it's pretty much the what a military coup was, or like what happened in that Turkey case. What ended up happening is that they were like, it's just the the guy who ran the military. If all of your generals are like, fuck this guy, we want to take over. If you control the military and you get the military to pretty much switch sides and follow you instead then that's it. If you control the military, you could kick out whoever runs the government. So that's what they were trying to do. That pretty much the military leaders were like, we don't support our our acting leader right now. We're going to revolt. So they all started taking control. And this is what happened in Turkey at one point. Again, this was, I guess, almost 10 years ago, maybe eight or seven years ago. And then the military started taking control, taking control of government places. They have tanks, they had planes, and then literally... The president was fleeing in his plane, and then the military that was that was defecting, they took fighter jets, followed the president in their fighter jets, and were, like, about to shoot him down. And then, again, just like this situation, just like we saw the Wagner group about to do this, about to do that, then all of a sudden they pull back. That's what happened in Turkey, and then all of a sudden nothing got shot down. And then everybody went home. And all of a sudden, by the end of the day, Erdogan was back in control. And just like today, seems like nothing has changed with uh, Putin for now. Treasury market liquidity long in decline is improving BBG. That could be old. Yeah, it was a phone call in 2016, I remember. Shucks is unclear. Throwing my support behind my co-leader to stay in power. Oh, no, is it we, we going to put in, go, or not. We need more horn action on Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Small red, a little little cheek clay. Raul coming. I think it's kind of big actually. Four two two eighty. That's like half a point in two minutes, a minute and a half. AR and AG on the high. Bond ETFs on track for a new milestone. Total global assets under management is on pace to hit two trillion according to Vetify. Turkey's inflation, well, it's not because of the coup, but to give you an idea, think about it. They wanted a coup back then. They were trying to get rid of this leader. But, like, Erdogan is just a mad, mad man. Like, half of the central bank was, like, ran by, like, his sons or his nephews, and they had no fucking clue what they were doing. (laughs) And then they were just doing just random, just crazy action. So that's why they have high inflation. Uh, I Honestly, I think it's a result of their crazy policy. Uh, but besides that, I, it wasn't a direct result of their 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 uh, coup attempt in 2016. Well, it's almost uh, 3:30 ramp. 
Not bad. Energy and real estate still leading. Amazon dropping. Even Walgreens Charter Communications are on the high. CHTR. AGIO. Yeah, no, Amazon's flipping. Back down to 1.2. Charter went from bottom to top. They're actually doing really good. Oh, forever young, baby. We said we needed horn action and cam toe, baby. Let's go. Oh, Arna. <laughs> oh, that came out good, too. That's what I'm talking about. Happy Monday, Chattadonia. I have a $1 million lira bill at home. That's pretty fly. I want one of those, uh, what was it? Is it like Zambia? Something. Tesla's still low. NVIDIA, they came up a little bit. Tesla's near the low, uh, or the low of the day more than not. Apple's still kind of pinned. Again, real estate, uh, energy, industrial plays. A lot of rotational plays are doing very good here today. Tech is down. Every sector, though, still has a big loser. So we're going to see. Mm hmm. SLG told you to buy 20. Market cap was 1.6. Selling 49% interest on one property for 2 billion. That's good. I hope it's doing good. GG. GG. That's good. Eight, nine, not bad. Not bad. Almost 50% gain. Good hit. SL Green. Uh, where is the... Juan's almost about to hit 7.25. That's the next... I don't know if it's going to immediately crack something, but that's it. We said Naira, Yuan, and that's it. Everything's up there. Oh, Chad, Peter Stevens, JL. They oh, they heard the horn call. They said what? The horn? <coughs> oh, horn! I forgot to warn you. I'm sorry. I told. I said we needed it. Now I'm getting too hyped, bro. <coughs> Happy Monday. God bless Chad Adonia. <coughs> oh, they woke up. They woke up. Good morning. It's not even morning, Chad. Honestly, you have 30 minutes till the day. It's afternoon. I hope it's not your morning. I hope you're ready to. I've been saying good morning all day. Happy Monday. It's almost Tuesday now, too. Tesla, big tech again, not really moving. Energy still in the lead. Consumer staples, they were doing very, very good earlier, but that's still another one. VNQ, real estate's up over 2%. Uh, financials are barely green, but they still actually have a long way to go. Russia media appears just as perplexed as everyone else over Wagner mutiny. Good morning. The day flew by. It felt slow in the morning, but I think first half felt really slow. Second half kind of uh, crept on us. Charter's still going. CHTR. Dollar creeping up. Still negative. Kind of looks like the bonds today here too. Ironically enough. I mean, bonds are still holding wherever they did in the seven hours. Seven hours today, pretty much same thing as uh, your first two minutes. And then 30 minutes left, 32 minutes, not bad. Verizon still going. Again, telecom. Telecom or communications besides Google Meta and Netflix are doing very good. Uh, Tessie, watch if Tessie gives up. Again, 240 is still a pretty big price for them. Chad is still going. Mm. Nike, yeah, they have earnings again. It's going to come down to inventory. I think they're pricing in around 6%, 7%. And then they've already moved uh, a ton in the last couple of weeks. So Nike is going to be an interest. The price of it is what I think makes it quite fascinating. Because that was the last earnings in December. They were actually lower than where they're at now. It just sucks they moved up 2% today. So we'll see. I think earnings are on Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday for Nike. Coin. Mm. 
you waiting for Lucy to hit zero to reload? Yes, exactly. Thank you. Perfect. What was the other one? Like I still got the root and tritium. No, I didn't sell root. The sixth one day. Where is the VIX one day? That thing kind of break, you know? I don't think he's the same. Uh, what was it? We already looked at the move, but let me look at it one more time. Because it updates at like the end of the day or the next day. Yeah, it hasn't updated. VIX 1D. Still very, it's, uh, it says it's down today. Daily looks up. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Then the VIX is actually in the green, but we are down. NASDAQ more than anything. MO is going crazy. Yeah, that that's a nice, they have the ex-dividend sell-off, like 3%, and then they're just right back up. Actually, no, they still got a longer, they got another $2 to go. I thought they were a little higher, but they're doing good for now. Hogs pair gains after fast start. If any of you trading lean hog, that's an update for you. Let's sell some Wagner merch. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, some of the comments today are just like wild. They're great, but wild. Wild. Uh, Redfin is popping. So take a look at anything else. Uh, that's 1232 now. We got a little bit of time. Uh, Redfin is getting juiced up a little here. Mm. The hustle is real. Uh, Uber's actually going down with those candles. Amazon, a little bit of green. I really think you need big tech to play along, or you need at least one of the names that are clobbered to at least get a bid. Intel is starting to run up here. Again, well, Pfizer was destroyed today. They're still up. Redfin's still going. More candles, 11.03. Root, root, root. What does this mean? I don't even think it's moving, moving, moving. Root, root, root. Uh, what was that other one? BTC. The one I keep forgetting today. BNTC. I think that's it. BNTC. Yeah, Benetech. There you go. That was the other one. They actually held up their 100%, and they were off the news of their uh, multiple sclerosis drug. They got that approval. Home Depot, Nike shares contribute to the Dow's 88-point jump. HD. HD's up 2.7. My goodness. BBY new high. Yeah, Pfizer came up a little bit, but they're still down three off of the news. Again, they got rid of one version of the Ozempic stuff, but over, I'm I'm kind of pissed on it. I wanted them to go full Ozempic. How dare they? Actually, where's NVO? Did NVO go up on that? No, nah, NVO, they gapped in the morning, but then they came down. Uh, Redfin's still going. 3M running up. Yeah, even Snap's going. Intel was just rocketing up there. We had that up there. Again, Snap and Redfin both 11 bucks into the high. Spy still below VWAP. Communications are still running here. Real estate's also holding up, but your tech is not playing along right now. Again, Amazon, Apple, the chips. They could be doing so much more right here. Pfizer for the long term, maybe if it goes a little bit lower. I mean, that gap down was pretty big for them. But I think at the low 30s is where we get it for the long term. It's close, though, but that's still like 20%. Uh, 
Inshallah, baby. God bless you. The badge. Amen. Forever young. All the chairs holding it there. Good afternoon. I was going to say good morning. And then Spy still at VWAP. We have about 25 minutes remaining. NASDAQ red. Spy is red. Dow is green. Russell is green. You have more industries green than red. Josh breaking my heart buying into big pharma. So would this be, be would it be awful if I told you they might have a drug for that? I'm sorry. I'm just saying. You say if your heart is broke. I'm just saying there might be something. Ask your doctor about Abby Vise. No, never. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, that's not, I should have read the room. My bad. I just didn't. I I was just. Mm -hmm. That's I. It makes sense though. I'm just saying. How much of a broken heart do you have? Is it if it's ask your doctor today about Ozempic? What the fuck? That's not even that's a weight loss. That's not. I'm saying it'll matter. You might be I, what? No, uh, Pfizer. Somebody. Well, of course, Pfizer did come out with a hair drug today. You know how I knew because you guys send it to me. <laughs> that's it. I, I, I'm glad that I've, I've now trained a lot of you to associate hair loss with Josh. Which is great if you think from a marketing perspective, I did very good because that means the older you age, you will always remember about me because now I've just you've linked I've linked myself to something that affects most men and women as they grow older. So I'm glad. But uh, yeah, I got I, I, Pfizer did have that news, but that wasn't the big news today. The big news was them uh, stopping the trial and study on one of their uh, uh, one of their like Ozempic diabetes weight loss competitors. Does Botox present, prevent Ozempic face? I think it does, but it's still pretty, like... Ozempic's face is, like, bad, dude. It's, like... It's, just, oh, it's a lot of skin, bro. It's a lot of skin. Mm, the lawnmower? What's a lawnmower tattoo? Justin is sell his soul for his success, just his hairline. Amen. That's why I told y'all, if y'all gonna make a deal, you better make a good deal. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all sold your some of y'all sold your soul for a history filled with like 20 million negative chat comments on the internet. You know what I'm saying? So you better get something for it. That's it. The devil says, sell my soul. I said, nah, I ain't with that. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, What about your hairline? I said, that is negotiable. I said, free me from this hair. I don't care. I said, make me look like a lizard. Well, pow, I got three wishes. I wish for Amazon, Meta. And, oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what I said. I always said, make a good deal, though. Make a good deal if you're going to do it. That's crazy. You know? Like, Matt, you sold your soul to be bitter? That'd be fucked up. But, like, I see people who've done it. That's that's real. You could laugh a little bit, but, like, you know that's facts. Like, that's deeper than it than it sounds. The biotin really, really works for me, bro. Really works for me. It's crazy. Iron, too. It's not even just biotin. It's like some, like your hair low key. Some of y'all just malnourished. That's what I realized. Like, I live in a modern country, but like, I need vitamins, dog. You know, like, you need vitamins. Like, you need certain, like, nutrition, especially if you don't eat a balanced meal. So, some of you may be balding just because you don't have good nutrition. And that makes sense because I eat like shit. So I like for me that's like that the vitamins did a lot. Mm hmm. My vitamin cow I do too, but I don't take them all. <laughs> like I got an insane like cabinet with vitamins, but it's like it's like anybody who have a bookshelf in their house. I don't read any of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the thing that sucks. So we got to, I got to get, make sure. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to take in. And then make sure if you take vitamins, don't take them on an empty stomach or you will throw up or get nauseous. I had to learn that the hard way because I don't eat a lot in the mornings. And then I try to take a, vi a vitamin. I'll just be throwing up. I'm like, whoa, whoa. It's not worth it, bro.
Not the Flintstones. I take the Costco ones. The daily Costco ones. What's the worst and best things you ate this weekend? That's a good one. Uh, I don't know. The best thing I ate? Uh, What was it? I had something yesterday I really liked. Shit, what did I eat yesterday? Hold on, I'm going to remember. It was like a burger or something. Then the worst thing I ate? Oh, no, that mushroom thing was actually the best taste. That was actually fire. So, yeah, but then the worst thing uh, was the... Uh, the worst thing was that crab. Did you see the crab? I ate Japanese fighting crab. They put it on top of a of a sushi thing, and it was it it was it was all fancy and shit, and it was like supposed to be on. It was disgusting. It was disgusting. It, it felt like I was eating a seashell, and I like I almost vomited at the table, and I would have had no shame too. Yeah, you just eat it. You take that whole thing I posted. You take it all and you eat it in one bite. It was disgusting. It's terrible, terrible. I felt so bad because they were like so hyped to give it to me. <laughs> you know, they like talked to me about it for like five minutes. I was like, okay, I'll take a picture. I'll post it. I got you. Okay, let me let me see. Okay, and then it was just awful. Awful. But the mushroom was very good. Hmm. Well, no, like normally those crabs, they like fight them apparently, but this time they just boiled them to eat them. I was like, oh, okay. You're my guy, bro. I love you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Shout out to Colt. Shout out, shout out everybody saving 10%. And shout out the people who want to save 10% and have heard it so many times and have yet to do it. One day, I have an altar call ready for you. Is anybody ready today to commit to saving 10% for the rest of their life and attributing it towards a long-term portfolio that they will use to own assets and equity for the rest of their life or until they need it? Is any is anybody out there? Is anybody out Not if you're doing it. Has anybody out there been on the fence for it? Has anybody been on the fence? And maybe you were thinking about it. If maybe this is your sign today, right here, right now, we could I could have an altar call for you. I'm just saying, baby. You know, because I'm always shouting out the guys who did it. I'm shouting out the people who bought the property. I'm shouting out the people who got the long term. You know what? Fuck them. Oh, I know. I love them, but fuck them. This ain't about them. They already did it. I'm saying for the person there who's been contemplating back and forth, like, should I do it? Should I not do it? I don't have enough to do it. It's stupid. Or maybe I should do it. Oh, no. Maybe. No, do it. Do it. This is your moment. You could commit today. I promise you, if you do it today, June 26, 20, your life will change forever. That's it. If you want to change your life forever, it'll never look the same. It'll be slow, but it'll never look the same. I promise you. Ask anybody who saved 10%. Your life never looked the same from the moment you actually did the 10% and threw the stone every day. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You tell me. You tell me. Mm-hmm. It's not a Nike ad, but they got the idea down. They got the idea down. Uh, we are flushing a little bit. Chicle has returned. Remember, like 10 minutes ago, actually 20 minutes ago, since we only have 17 minutes remaining. Uh, but that's where the first couple of Chicles. Oh, Tesla with the flush. First one. That's it. Watch out the other ones. Because, again, you got like NVIDIA. They were dying earlier. They're not dropping the same. Apple's not dropping the same. It's just Tesla and Microsoft, it looks like. And then Amazon's still kind of holding up. But watch out there because it's tech. If tech keeps going down here, it's added a lot more pressure. Uh, NASDAQ's down 0 0.8, 0 0.79. Again, Microsoft and Tesla, first ones to go. Watch out for any... Oh, energy's dropping now, too. So that's the new part of this. If tech doesn't catch a bid, now you're going to have energy going down with tech. We have not had that happen all day today. Uh, Meta, I forgot about. Meta's down three? Yo, that's like low-key big. Oh, I guess they ran up three, though, on Friday or whatever, 2%. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, WTI, but I'm trying to see here. I'm seeing if any other industry is kind of like moving out of this, but you know, some are still holding. Staples gave up a little bit, but I think energy and financials are the key. That's it now, because now you have Tesla and tech selling off energy. This is the first time today that we've gone down with energy, except for the morning on the data. That's the only other time energy and the spy went down together. And then financials now, they were kind of weaker earlier, but see if they keep giving it up. NVIDIA is going down. There's Apple one more time. Roblox going up. Again, there was a couple of winners today, which are ironic. And like I was saying, there's a lot of rotation, but like every every industry either had a really big winner or a really big loser. Like even the Dow is being held up a lot by Nike and uh, uh, what's it called? Nike and HD and then Goldman. They were bad in the morning. I thought Goldman was down more, though. It's only 0.4. Aramac on the high, ARMK. Isn't Aramac related to the commodity stuff too? Baba Flush, yeah. They were holding up earlier. Target's up. Treasury yields declined ahead of housing data. And then office REITs lead financial gainers. Walgreens, Disney dumping. Disney was doing good in the morning, actually. Yeah, all day, actually. Airmarks like restaurant stuff. And then Spy, that's it, bro. You're about to hit a new low. Airlines are on the low. Hawaiian Airlines, HA. I don't know. That could be individual, but they've already been down 10%. They're selling off. Snowflake on the low. Team, these are 4%, 2% plays down. Yeah, BNTC has been holding up. They're killing it. But again, you're about to hit a new low right now. So you got three minutes till 10 minute rigged. And now we are going into another low. VIX one day is taking off. We had that up. You're one point away from new low of the day. 433.62. The low is 433 or 433.32.88. Yeah, six straight up. Dude, it's actually crazy. It was six straight days up. Technically, this would be six straight days down, but Thursday we were green. So this is only two days in a row of red, believe it or not. But realistically, it was six days down after six days up. And then we'll see if we get back to the 4,300 or not. Mm-hmm. Big Raul. Tesla, we'll get ready. 10-minute rig coming in in about a minute, minute 20. New low, it looks like. So Tesla is still running. There it is, 430.31 or 4.331. I start messing up how to say it after 4.33. So be on the lookout here now. 4.225 and then 4.2 or 4.325 and then 4.321. And then, like, maybe, like, 4307, 4310, and then back to 4300, and then 4297. Putin holds meeting with heads of Russian security service, including Minister of Def Defense. What in the world? We're just getting back to the... Remember, the 4300 was insane. You broke 4300 and then proceeded to go up 150 points after for another five days in a row or whatever it was but this is all just it's just taking you back to two mondays ago you're just literally right back to where we opened up almost or closed on the last monday or two mondays ago and then now you're getting a bounce off the bottom two seconds 10 minute rigged and get ready let's see if we get some fireworks so you just hit a new low two minutes ago. You just wicked into the bottom. 10-minute rigged right now. Tesla still dumping. My goodness. Mm. 
Okay, four, three, three, two. Let me see. Apple hit a low. Tesla's just dying. I don't think this dump was because of the Putin announcement. I think just in general, that kind of factored into today. You also had bad data. And then we started dying. I mean, I don't think we're reacting as much to the global stuff. If we were, oil would be higher than 70 bucks. Uh, but it looks like we're reacting more towards the uh, manufacturing data we got in the morning. However, I would argue it didn't move bonds. Uh, but it kept the bonds up. And then now equities moved a lot more. This could help close that divergence. So we'll see. 3 billion to the sell side or 36 billion? 3.6 billion. Okay. We'll take that one. FRCB. Putin held a phone talks with UAE Amir. IFX cites Kremlin. All right, nine more minutes. Yeah, you're getting a lot of these headlines on the Russia phone talk thing. A dollar bully in Asia. It's But then um, just take a look at the yen. That's the thing. The dollar is, it's it's the yen, the yuan, and the dollar, but we still need a little bit more craziness. And then you also have the pound and the euro. But in a weird way, it's like the dollar is, is just as stable as bonds. So it's not like we're getting, we need more of the dollar volatility more so than not. But the Chinese yuan is getting to that danger zone. Heavy J and J. Uh, where's Procter Gamble? Again, a couple of consumer plays were doing very good. Again, XLP is like fighting break even, but it recovered a lot throughout the day. But there's a lot of those plays that moved, some more so than others. Again, like McDonald's is down, Home Depot is up like two percent. Spy. Well, watch out. Again, you have market on close like three point six to the sell side. Dow is even about to go negative here. No shit. That's the crazy part. Dow was actually green for the second half of the day. Mm. Oh, GIS, they have earnings. Keep that. I think that's tomorrow morning or tomorrow after hours. Tesla, a little bit, but Tesla, dude, Tesla's murdered. Bro, Tesla's down 6% right now. It's actually even break even or green at one point in the morning. So they got that big Goldman downgrade. I think even Goldman raised their price target on them, believe it or not. Mm. No, HD did very good. Again, HD is one of the reasons uh, lifting the Dow, but even then, Dow is green most of the day. It's about to go red. Uh, you only got like five, six minutes here, Chad. So we're still going a little bit lower, have yet to uh, hit anything below or even touch the 43.25. That's like the real lower end of all this. So let's see here. 43.31.26 is your low. That's five minutes or five minutes, 10 seconds. Apple, 5-Minute Raul, coin on the low, NVIDIA. Again, Tesla might even do round two. Even wait for the SPY. Again, if you flush this 43.31, very good chance you're going to end up at 43.25 real quick. It's like five, six points. So get ready, final five.
Boeing is still in the green. Uh, energy came up a little bit. Surprisingly, final 10-minute rigged was bigger than final five for now. So 433 GBSD or GSBD on the high. Tyson Chicken still going. HII. I'm not in TLT. I'm in the two-year bond. And then I have old 10-year options on some of the futures still from the debt ceiling. So I'd be covered in the event of an immediate collapse. But uh, if anything, I'll have to make a real position in like six months. Uh, Apple's still dropping. I'm surprised Tesla, but Tesla led the way. There's the market now. Apple with a new low. Microsoft. Not much time left in Chattadonia. It's time, baby. All my softies out there, you're going to need to put on the earmuffs. We got to land. The day is over. We're turning up here. So I don't know how crazy you want to get, but if you got sensitive ears, you need to mute your speakers right now. We are coming home. So is the market. Another new low right now as well. Oh, my goodness. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're making our final approach as we make our final approach. You guys are holding on to any bags. Uh, please throw them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through the aisles with the trash bag if you like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal in the description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Then we're going to be taking our promptly around around 6 a.m. out of sunny San Diego, California. As we make this final approach into San Diego International Airport, it's about 69 degrees and sunny, looking like a good day unless you thought the market only goes green because apparently it is now going red for the last six days. But fortunately, we are no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required. But we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out. As always, we appreciate you guys' business. If you're interested in your Cold Rapid Awards program card, Please, flag down your flight attendant, and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the coat, and hopefully have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Chattadonia. Chattadonia. You got to bring it home. A very wild day. It's the second down day in a row, but realistically, it's been like six. After six days of up, we're starting the week. They all ask, did you go higher? Did you hedge? What is going to happen? We still got Powell. You got a lot more, and you still got a little bit of time left, Chattadonia. So we wicked into another low right there, kind of bouncing off of it. It is time to bring it home, though, Chattadonia. What is the volume? I don't even think it's that high. Nah, the volume sucks. It's 57 million. As I said, we'll maybe get 70 million if we're lucky here. And that's including all of that. Oh, AEL, AEL, AEL. That looks like a buyout. Yo, AEL, America, something. Oh, shit. How much time we have? One minute! Uh, Brookfield said to buy or near deal to buy American Insider Equity. Can you trade it? Oh, is it halted or not? AEL. Oh, um, Brookfield said to near deal to buy them. I think it's halted now. It says it at 4509. Yeah, you're done, man. That's it. You got 30 seconds left, though. But, Chad, bring it home. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you got to wrap it up. You got to bring it home. We still have a lot of data on the table. A lot in the morning. The market is touching low. 1% down on the NASDAQ. A buyout at close. And 10 seconds remaining. Wrap it up. Seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ding, 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 
We did it, we made it, baby. You made it to the bell. Happy Monday. I need that GG. Let's go. Let's go. We did it, we made it. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you learned something. I need that GG in the chat. Good game, baby. All about that good sportsmanship. You made it to the end. All the members, all the non members, all the stream alerts. It don't matter who you are. Good game. A GG cleans all the sins. That's what I'm talking about, baby. You made it. Everybody that contributed, all the positive people. That's what I'm talking about. Good game, baby. GG. Oh, I see you too, Twitch. I see you too, baby. God bless you, all the members, all the non members, all the donors, everybody in the game. Everybody that contributed, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody still in the game, everybody with the launch card. Good game, GG. Let's go, don't stop. All the baby back B boys out there, good game. You made it to the bell. I better get that GG. I better get that GG. Let's go. Wow. Wow, you made it through another day. Another war headline. Good game. Wow. I need me to rock. You won't see me a lot. Monday through Friday, you need me. Let's talk. Huh. Yo, what's going on? Apple and Tesla after the bell, too? Oh. Oh. All right, no, no, no. Chad, Chad, Adonia. Ah, Chad Adonia. Chad Adonia. How do you feel? That's the day. Yelling, playing July trip. Man, we're getting a lot after. I feel like we got more after hours than all day. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the day. We made it to the end. God bless all of you. Thank you once again for being here. If you got to head out, you got to head out. It, but we have made it seven hours, 1.5 on the horn. So listen, man. <laughs> I was going to thank you. I was just going to thank you in general. Then I saw the likes, too. Thank you for supporting the channel, for real. If any of you got to get going, do your thing. But if you clicked on the video today, you came into this cult, you came into the chat, and you contributed, even if you didn't contribute. Maybe you were just a little asshole, too. It's okay. But you gave us an opportunity. I am so grateful for it. And it means even more if you came in here and contributed, participated, and were really a part about what we were doing. And you did so with good vibes. And you did so with hopefully an open mind and an open mind that led you to getting a long term and saving 10%. Nah, but for real, every single one of you, if you came out today and just gave me the opportunity, I hope you know how grateful I am for it. I hope I made the most of your time. I hope we see you tomorrow, and I hope you're ready for everything that we're going to have to deal with in the year. But God bless all of you, all the members, all the non members, the stream alerts. It don't matter who you are. It's for real if you came in here and gave your contribution, and we're really a part of it. So God bless you, and thank all of you, and thank you for being a part of this every day. It has always been an exciting journey, but it looks like we're going to be getting a lot more, Chad. So let's keep going. But that is your Monday. Thank you for Monday. God bless Monday. And that's all. That's all. Check out the links. Go ahead. Check out everything. You know what it is. First link for the Scream Alerts Boot Camp and Real Estate Course. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. Don't miss it. Maybe you miss it. Maybe you miss it. Maybe you don't. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. 4 p.m. Third link for the membership badge, baby. <laughs> Shout out to the members. They look pretty. They look pretty. They some of the OGs. Some of you got gifted a membership. So thank whoever gifted you. And God bless all of you showing love and giving gifts to the members or, or to the non-members. But for real, thank you for being a member. Thank you for holding it down. God bless all of you. And God bless the chat, baby. So thank you as well for anybody else there who doesn't have a membership badge and is an honorary member. And thank you as well to all my positive people. It's everybody is one. But if you took it upon yourself to support, especially when nobody asked, and you see it, not everybody does support. So for the fact that you took it upon yourself, God bless you and thank you. I appreciate you. At least I can tell. I, I think I have the right to tell you I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? Because you see it and you can see. It. So God bless you. I'm sorry. It's the end of the day Friday. You know I go crazy. They're like, why are you screaming? Why are you making so much noise? Because it's, it's not even Friday. It's Monday. Why did I say Friday? Because Monday makes me feel like Friday. Ah! So let's go, baby. God bless you. But third link for the membership badge. Fourth link for the merch. God bless you. If you're not in a recession, you get yourself some merch, baby. Shout out to anybody else rocking the ball. What's up, Fahad? God bless you, my friend. Check out the other channels. Call Real Estate on Wednesday, baby. Free 99. You got some other ones, too. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I am the private account. Do not fall for anything uh, asking you to, like, get WhatsApp or anything like that. No, nah, no, nah, we don't do that. Nah. How option pricing works. Great tutorial, especially if you're still out there trading 
and options trying to find big gainers, you might want to watch this video, how to set up the long term. Let's just save 10%, baby. That's all you got to do. You know what I'm saying? That's it. We had to. Uh -huh, we had we had to get the, the law. This is just 10% is where it starts. The long term is how it grows. And then you put both of those two together. That's a that's a beautiful life, dog. That's a beautiful life, you know? So God bless you, but get the long term. You could take a look at it. And then finally the prayer request wall. Me and my mom, we pray for all of y'all. Okay, and I know the chat does it with me. You even have people ask today. They needed some prayer, so it goes. So I hope you pray for Sonny out there. You know, you see people requested in the chat. I know we do things a little different here, but it's very simple. If it can't flow through you, it can't flow to you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And we have a lot of people that we spend a lot of time with. I mean, some people are here today, gone tomorrow, in and out. But there's also a lot of people who spend a lot of time in here day in and day out. And the people that we're around mean a lot to us and the people. So we're rooting for you, okay? And I hope you know that. And if you ever want to do anything for me or the Chad, just pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. Pray for me. Show some love. You ever want to give back, send me a prayer. And that's about it. But just know we rooting for you, man. And I'm not going to tell your friends. It's okay. It's not It's not. It's not that deep. But just somebody's rooting for you out there, okay? So you can't say nobody was praying for you, all right? Because we are, baby. Even my mama, too. Even my own mama praying for you, bro. I hope they feel me. I hope they feel me. Thank you, JP Colt member. God bless you for another day. Let's go. You made it. I'm glad you were here, baby. God bless you. Hey, man. Happy Monday, Friday. What? It's because it feels... I'm hyped. I don't know why. I got, like, really hyped here. I told you the after hours stuff, but even in general, like, I had a good week. You know, I'm telling you. You want to know how good my weekend was? Every side-eye comment I got, I responded with, okay. I said, yeah. You know, that's... I'm just saying. I've been... But they're fucking with me on the bonds. But it's okay. I'm just saying. It's a vibe. But anyways, Chad, I love all of you. So God bless you. What do I think for tomorrow? I think uh, we're either going to get data that's going to give us a, a big surpriser domestically. Otherwise, we will be a victim to whatever happens in China or in Europe until Powell opens up his mouth. That's my take. That's my take on it. But Chad, don't let me bore you. That is the day. We made it to the bell. God bless all of you. Thank you all for being here once again. I hope you know you are a blessing. I hope you know that you have a lot ahead of you. And I hope you know I'm about to get even crazier. And I'm glad I I, I, I want the positivity to spread. And I want you to feel blessed. Uh, but, but even beyond the positivity, I hope to fight. Because this is our time now. Because this is the second half, baby. And the second half of the year is about to begin. Okay? That's your philo. It's game time is your philo. So let's go, Chad. But I love you, so let's make it through it all. I hope this first half was exciting and you got to learn a little bit more. But now we got a lot more work to do, baby. So let's stay in the game. Should be an exciting week, but that is everything. Pray for me. Go read the books. Richest Man of Babylon, Proverbs, New Living Translation, and The Strangest Secret in the World. And what song? What song do we give him? What song do you want? I don't know what song to give you, bro. It's, nice. it's recommending me weird uncle songs. You know what I'm saying? Um... Mm -mm. Which one do we get? Oh, I can vibe with that. I can vibe with that. We we let's go. We could get that one. Mm, actually, I could do some beast mode. I could do some beast mode. I could do some legacy. I could also do some Uncle Hero. That's why I like. Ooh, I could also do some viral. Ooh, oof, oof, oof. Okay, I'm gonna go with viral. I think we need viral. You know, make them think a little. Please. <laughs> Allow me to show you something. Nah. It's me, man. It's a cop. <laughs> 2020, baby. Straight up, man. I just hope you're in the game. Nah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't seen this in a minute. I ain't seen this in a while. Seeing like this a little different. No minutes of the word on viral. Thinking that the Chinese did it. Or maybe we started the virus. Maybe they want you divided. Maybe they profit on fire. I ain't seen this in a minute. I ain't seen this in a while. Seeing like this a little different. No meaning to the word on viral. Thinking that the Chinese did it. Or maybe we started the virus. Maybe they want you divided. Maybe
be the yeah, profit of fine. Yeah. Yeah. This one different, you should listen. Take a minute, cause in seconds, people tripping, fed decisions, reminiscing. Other time we saw this last, not in a crash, but in collapse. Not contained across the map, first the strain and then the grab. Damn, <laughs> this is the system deflating. We're just coming off as inflation. That's why the dollar's to strengthen. The money ain't moving the dollar, but you made your mind up real quick. Cause when the three month on the fall, <laughs> that's when you don't buy the dip. Ayy, so what I'm on though? Break it in two, feast in the famine, the cycle ain't no That's just a view, it could be your way, yeah, it could be your two It could be a plot and it could be a coup Either way, I know I'm gonna get through I got some armor and I got the tools I'm playing patience then yeah. I make a move I ain't been a bear in a minute I ain't been a bull in a while I ain't feel them in a minute How let these bitches got bias Yo, why the two do your prices? Chill when you what, but I feel when you negative Millions of dollars won't make you a better man Should be a way hey. to the way that I'm I ain't seen this in a minute <laughs> I ain't seen this in a while Seen like this a little different No minutes to work on viral Thinking that the Chinese did it Or maybe we started the virus Maybe they want you divided Maybe they profit off fire I ain't seen this in a minute I ain't seen this in a while Seen like this a little different No minutes to work on viral Thinking that the Chinese did it Or maybe we started the virus Maybe they want you divided Maybe they profit off fire I was gonna play you this one I'm the new scribe to my YouTube. I gotta hit you. Oh, wait, where'd it go? I earn it. Need to, hey. I'm the new tech like ETH. <laughs> you don't want smoke like the EP. Hey, you can see I done it like proof of stake. Made a million <laughs> crypto came mistake off, bro. in school. Now the game on mine like a GPU. Blockchain like Kendrick. I swim in pools. Dividends gas me up. I ain't talking fuel. Nah. <laughs> I'm so cold like a legend. Right, I'm always let, let number one. First, first. You would think I'm tether. Feel like Chuck E. Cheese. Love my coins and my cheddar. On the way to the moon, there might, might be, be some bad, bad weather. weather. Yeah, Ooh. and stop acting like you know me. It throws a, a bunch of zero, zero shit. Look, look like, like a Satoshi. The they holding all the bags like the winner gets a trophy. But all of y'all delayed like the SEC voting. Pay me an ether, you can keep your check. Your girl go down like Big Connect. You try to buy Ripple, but got almond milk. And all you ICOs, cause it's all the shit. Yeah. Hey me and ah. Ethan, you can keep you. Okay, I'm sorry. That was, that wasn't supposed to happen. That just came up. It just got me got me a little hype, bro. That's an old school for you. Pay me and Ethan, you could keep the check. Oh man, amen. Wow. But Chatadonia, God bless all of you. I hope you had a good day. Okay? I hope you enjoyed your day. I hope you enjoyed life, and I hope you're ready for more. And uh, that's that's as uh, that's as much as I I, I think I'm gonna just start saying less because we just we got a vibe. Put up the sales, baby. Maybe we gonna talk about boats and sales, and don't forget about opportunity and wind, my friend. Oh, Uncle will remind you if you. <laughs> but Chad, welcome to the second half of the year, or at least we're I'm I'm, I'm early on it, but either way. We got a lot. It was a good day here for Monday. I got a lot of hype. I guess I'm going to have to save it for the watch list. But, Chad, that is everything. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you again for your time. I already gave you the box. And don't ever forget why we're here and why we keep going and why that faith, hope, love ain't ever going out of style and why we got to keep running the race, baby. And, and, and some, something out there don't want us to get tired, baby. So let's go, baby. Why? Finger to the sky. <laughs> Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory and through the grace of God alone. Amen. Amen. That was weird. I said, I said finger to the sky and I didn't say baby. And then it just, and then I paused for a second and I said, something's missing. Something's missing. Did you hear it? Oh, but either finger to the sky, no matter what, baby. See, I finger to the sky. I won't say at the end of, yeah, anyway, you did good, Josh. Don't worry, I'll try. We're, we're, I have nothing to say about the Putin, but the, the Wagner, the Wagner, Wagner, Wagner. My dog wags his tail. Yeah, any, okay, I'm I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Okay, okay.